Good afternoon. Today we are meeting the 33rd meeting of the 24th Council, and I will call this meeting to order. I'm Councillor Borrego, um, Council President, and I would like to take roll call to begin with. Looks like all councillors are present. We might have a couple of councillors that might be running just a few minutes late, but they will join us and we do have a quorum. So I would like to start this meeting with a moment of silence. And I would like to dedicate this moment of silence to people who are suffering with disabilities. Um, Councillor Gibson, would you like to lead us in the pledge of, in the moment of silence? Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. We appreciate you. Uh, Councillor Senna, would you like to lead us in Spanish in the pledge? Uh, yes, Madam President. Puro fidelidad a la bandera de los Estados Unidos de América y a la República que representa una nación bajo Dios indivisible con libertad y justicia para todos. Councillor Sana, we appreciate you as well. Um, I would like to read some information into the record as we begin our council meeting this afternoon. As noted in the press release from our office on Friday, posted on our website and noted on our published council agenda. This meeting has special procedures and is being held via Zoom video conference. Members of the public city staff and the media have the ability to view this meeting through four different platforms. GOVTV on Comcast channel 16, the GovTV website, YouTube and Zoom webinar. These live streams can be assessed from most smartphones, tablets or computers. Also, this meeting is closed captioned, and you may enable the closed captioning services on your television or device at this time. For those watching on the live stream, thank you for joining us this afternoon. The video recording of this and all past city council meetings will also remain available for viewing at any time on the city council's website. Council staff is available via telephone if members of the public need assistance finding the videos online. Please call 768-3100 for assistance during business hours, which are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The council is also accepting live general public comment today, as well as written comments. Written comments received prior to 1 p.m. were distributed to all counselors in advance of today's meeting. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. This afternoon, we have a, we're going to begin our meeting with a special presentation. Um, our director of council services is um, leaving for another opportunity. And I would like to ask her to join me. Um, uh, are you here, Ms. Yara? Stephanie Yara. Stephanie Yara's last day with the city of Albuquerque is this Friday. And um, we're sad to see her. Well, we're sad to see her. You were also happy with looking to some new opportunities in her life. Ms. Yara worked or has been with the city since January of 2007. She previously worked in the accounting office with the Department of Finance and Administrative Services before coming to the council as a policy analyst to in October 2011. She became council finance officer in December 2013. And then direct in November 2018. The council has come together and we would like to um, ask any counselors to speak that would like to speak. I have we have to give a gift um, for her and for her hard work and dedication to 
the public and to our council office. And with that, I would like to take the opportunity to present Ms. Yara with the gift, which I have right here. And Ms. Yara, would you care to say anything? I'd also like to open it up to our counselor. Would you like to say something, Ms. Yara? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam President. I, um, I just really wanna thank the counselors for the opportunity that I've been granted these last almost 10 years with the council office in different capacities. Um, but most importantly, all the friends I've made here in the council office, and as well as in, throughout the other departments, um, I'm really going to miss everybody, and I, I thank you again. I, uh, I especially want to thank two people who have been really instrumental in making sure the council uh, continues its business while we've been in this health emergency. So I just want to give a shout out to Crystal Ortega, our clerk of council, and Julian Moya, our public information officer. Um, they acted very quickly to make sure we could um, transition to this format, this virtual format. And, it, and they provided a seamless transition for us. I just want to thank them so much. And also for risking their health to come in and handle these meetings along with Councilors Davis and Borrego. So just a shout out to them. I love all of council staff. I'm going to miss you so much. Thank you. Sarah, um, any counselors like to say anything? I see, um, I see Councilor Senna's hand up. Councilor Senna. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I've been very fortunate to work with Ms. Yada um, and only know her um, as Director of Council Services being brought on um, and especially being brought on through the pandemic. Councilor Gibson. Thank you, Madam President. So I have uh, uh, two questions. Uh, the uh, uh, I'm glad you gave that example um, about the for the DMD to to, to illustrate uh, the, those sister positions uh, because when I was going through the budget book, I did notice that there were and I believe I'm not certain about these numbers. Seems like there were 20 st street sweepers on the west side of the river and 20 positions on the east side of the river, but. Uh, I counted them and there was, uh, I believe, uh, exactly half were uh, not filled. So uh, do, you, do you think that that could have been because of uh, the sister position um, uh, uh, reason that you, you just uh, talked about? Maybe person. one person could be at the A level and another person could be at the B level? And in those cases, the opposites would be unfilled. Madam President and Councillor Gibson, you're probably exactly right. It depends how you pull the information out of the system, but that you're probably exactly right. It's, that's the way that information was pulled out of the system. You're recognizing the sister positions. Okay. Yeah, this came right out of the um, right out of the budget books that we all received. So, okay. So that that was really helpful. The other question that I have is going back to APD. Uh, uh, and I don't know if anybody there in the budget conference room would know this, but um, I, I'm presuming that uh, 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 officers, cadets, and, and uh, second class officers have to be, uh, you know, the city buys them a, a weapon, uh, uniforms, cuffs, you know, all of the hardware that they wear all around them. Uh, when they go out, probably, and then probably a, a laptop or, or a, a notebook of some, some sort. So um, I, I did a real quick uh, back of the envelope math here. And just for one year, the savings, assuming an $8 an hour savings, comes up to about $16,000. And that's just for one year. That I didn't, and I didn't go back to the cadets, you know, I just, I started with the, uh, second class and counted that for a year. So is $16,000 in keeping roughly uh, 
with the expenditures that uh, the city has in bringing brand new officers uh, on board and getting them fully outfitted. And Madam President, Councillor Gibson, um, Aubrey Thompson, probably the fiscal manager over APD is best suited to answer this question. But what I do know is uh, Mr. Thompson works his magic and he does make it work for, <laughs> they purchase the handcuffs, the firearms, the, the tasers, and they have enough to get by, by uh, for that fiscal year uh, from the differential. Okay, I really don't know. I have, I, I don't know how much guns cost. I don't have any idea about hand, uh, handcuffs or tasers or anything. So, you know, maybe that's within the keeping. It, se it seems high, but again, I have nothing to compare it to. So, okay, thank you. That was it. Appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Um, do I have someone else in the queue at, waiting to ask questions? I don't see anyone else, Councillors. Um, so with that, thank you, Mr. Davis. Um, I think we will move on at this point. And thank you, Councillor Basson, for raising this question because it, in reviewing the budget, there were questions in my mind about those vacant positions. So that was very helpful. Okay, so with that, we will move on to the next presentation. We have a presentation from Environmental Health regarding climate, act, the climate action plan and Ryan Mast and Kelsey Rader will be presenting this. Thank you, uh, Madam President and members of the council. Uh, really grateful for the opportunity this afternoon to do a follow-up meeting to one that we presented last fall. Um, now that we have completed and officially released the city's updated climate action plan, the first climate action plan that we've released in over a decade. Um, the plan that we're presenting to you today really builds upon all the successes that the city has had thus far. And, and we believe lays a roadmap for a healthier future in Albuquerque. Um, we brought together the, the definitely the best local experts and advocates to identify the most relevant and important uh, action items for the community uh, that we serve. And we used a process throughout this that we think will serve as a model to cities across the country and really across the world on how to ensure that the voices of those who were most impacted by climate change are those that are leading the discussion on how to best combat it. Um, our sustainability officer, Kelsey Rader, will present a little bit on the, on the climate action plan that we released. But before she gets to that, I do just want to thank the council for their leadership and in, in, in really declaring the climate emergency a couple years ago and continuing to um, engage with us on the critical nature of this issue. Um, also want to thank the support and guidance from the administration on ensuring that we we're able to be successful throughout the planning process. Uh, a, a big thank you to all the thousands of participants in the community that provided feedback through our surveys and hundreds of folks who provided comments. Uh, and then most importantly to the task force members, the 19 member task force, climate action task force that really put a lot of effort into this, a lot of hours and the nights and weekends to ensure that we brought forward the most relevant and important um, action items for the city to move forward with. Uh, they really represented their communities in a bold way. And we have two of those uh, task force members today to also provide some brief comments, Ms. Genesis Iris Mendy, as well as Mr. Alex Montano. So with that, uh, I will turn it over to Ms. Kelsey Rader, our sustainability officer. Thank you, Ms. Rader. Good afternoon, counselors. Thank you so much for having us. I'm just gonna briefly recap the process and highlights of developing the climate action plan for you all before we hear from our task force members. So. Uh, last summer, we started the process by launching a climate action survey, first asking for resident feedback on a number of sustainability topics that would be then highlighted for the task force deliberations. Uh, we also then went to the community and asked for folks to submit applications to serve on this task force um, and ensure that those folks were people that had connections to frontline communities. So those communities that would be hurt uh, the first and worst by climate action. So right from the get-go, wanted to ensure that this climate action plan was really a community-driven process. Um, last fall, just to recap again, where, where we went is uh, we had deliberations on the sustainability subjects that were identified both in the 2009 Climate Action Plan and the priorities that came out of the Climate Action Survey. Uh, this past February, we had a draft of recommendations that was developed by the task force that underwent public comment. Uh, we offered that both through a survey tool and into public comment meetings. 
And just in this last March, the task force reviewed and incorporated that public comment and developed a final set of 50 strategies. Uh, so we're excited now to be able to share this plan with you all, uh, this completed plan that was released, released on April 22nd of uh, this last month. And uh, this summer, we're going to be working on developing some tools for tracking and driving implementation. So just a couple quick highlights real quick. Again, I mentioned this plan was very community driven. So I wanted to um, just flag for you all a couple great outcomes that came out of the public engagement for this plan. Uh, first, we had over 3,000 responses to the climate survey that was launched uh, last summer. And we had participation from 36 zip codes out of 42 in Albuquerque. Uh, we ha also had, as Brian mentioned, a 19 member task force who worked over 15 meetings in five months, a very accelerated process to develop the climate action plan. And then during our public comment process, we had 600 public comments, both from the both from surveys, a survey tool, and then we had two virtual public comment meetings. Um, you can find details on the outcomes of public comments, what those comments focused on, and also what the survey outcomes were on the sustainability website at www.cabq.gov backslash sustainability. So very exciting. We had an extremely comprehensive climate action plan. Um, some of the final outcomes of the strategies um, are, again, 50 different strategies. They cover seven different topics. Uh, the strategies really range from anything from policy actions, such as creating a tree preservation ordinance to supporting greening of the city, um, to also new programs such as promoting EV ride share programs for low income communities as well. Um, we're really excited about this climate action plan because it is so incredibly comprehensive. Um, everything from calling to action and in increased education around climate change and how individuals can make a difference to looking at some of the bigger policy issues that are at play, such as um, plastics in our community and also ensuring that we're reducing organic waste. So um, we're very excited to be able to um, dive into this for years to come. And the task force really did a wonderful job in ensuring that they were pairing all these strategies with actionable metrics so that we understood on what degree, to what degree these actions should be implemented over time. And then also what were going to be the co-benefits that we were going to receive from implementing these various actions. And oftentimes we see um, a myriad of co-benefits, not just um, climate, or climate change mitigation or reduction of air pollution, but also economic development activity um, or supporting critical health and services. So now that we've had this uh, climate action plan developed and it is in front of you all to consider for adoption, uh, we are going to be working, excuse me, we, the sustainability office, will be working on leading a developing uh, a tracking and implementation process, both for city government and for community organizations in the private sector. So really ensuring that we're the scorekeepers of all the different types of activities that are being taken, that are taking place across the city to implement this plan. Staff's also gonna be working on designing the community, community implementation meetings to begin in late summer uh, to early fall so that city government still has the opportunity to check in with community to make sure that we are staying on track in terms of our implementation process, but we're also ensuring that um, how we're going about implementation at, on city government is reflective of how community would like to see that done. Uh, finally, I'm it's pleased to say that all of this work will be leading towards a yearly implementation report for a climate action plan that will begin to release in summer 2022. So with that, um, I'd like to quickly share the mic with uh, two of our task force members. Uh, first, we'll have Genesis Arizmendi. Thank you, Kelsey. Hi, everybody. My name is Genesis Arizmendi. I'm a postdoctoral fellow and adjunct professor at the University of New Mexico. In preparation of the Climate Action Plan, task force members had the opportunity to listen to presentations from community organizations about key issues on sustainability and those that arise because of the impacts of climate. As Kelsey mentioned, the issues range from recycling to renewable energy to transit to thinking about how we consider reframing new buildings and practices in the community, such as tree planting and tradi traditional ecolog ecological knowledge, to name a few. Listening to the people in the community that are directly involved in the line of work, which is tied to these issues, was critical in shaping the climate action plan and the feasibility of what we can do with what's already on the ground running. That can be extended to broader segments of the city or in considering how we, how we might improve them. Following the presentations, the team would break out and discuss at the end of each to discuss the issues raised, ask questions about 
who led uh, who, to who led those presentations, and as a group came to a consensus on what we agreed we wanted to adopt, expand, or improve upon for the city of Albuquerque. It's important to highlight that an important feature of our plan is that it has been community driven with a priority in addressing and mitigating the impact impacts that climate change will have on marginalized and vulnerable populations in our community. In order to ensure greater equity and representation, we also welcome Burqueños to contribute to the plan and valued their input in creating a plan that reflects the needs and concerns of the city of Albuquerque. Thus, it has been a plan that has been based on subject, subject matter community expert contributions, as well as com the community at large in rounding out the needs that the city has for reaching our sustainability goals. We hope that council moves to adopt the climate action plan that the community has developed as it would allow Albuquerque to take a step in the right direction in taking care of the people, wildlife, beauty, and future of the city of Albuquerque. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. And I, I don't want to mispronounce your name, Arzamendi? Arizmendi. Arzamendi. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I see Councillor Benton. If you are, are you all done with your presentation then? Um, Councillor, excuse me, we have one more, uh, some thoughts from one more task member, Alex Montano. Okay, Councillor Benton, if you just hang on a sec. I'd rather hear uh, okay. yeah, before Thank I you. ask. Go Thank ahead. You. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alex Montano. I am the Executive Vice President of Year Out Energy. In addition to being a member of the uh, Climate Action Task Force, I also have the privilege of serving as the chair of the Albuquerque Energy Council. So there was it's all a real um, benefit to being able to participate at both of these levels, just given that they're so intertwined with one another. Um, when I saw the announcement uh, to potentially join as a task force member, I saw a direct opportunity to both leverage my professional experience as well as my personal commitments to further aid the city of Albuquerque towards uh, battling climate change and how it disproportionately affects frontline communities. Um, this plan was carefully developed over many, many months with constant feedback from the community, as well as a handful of um, excellent presentations from subject matter experts that all led to shaping what this plan is today. Um, the members of the task force themselves, uh, they brought such a depth and breadth of, of knowledge and enthusiasm that led to you know, several meaningful discussions as well as careful planning. Um, you know, the, cl the climate crisis is not a isolated or distant issue uh, that is going to improve or dissipate over time. This is an issue that will continue to fester uh, until it reaches a point of no return. That is, of course, unless we act with immediate corrective action to, um, to, to get things back on track and, and address the failures of the past. Um, what you have in front of you right now is a plan authored by and for the members of this community. And so I wholeheartedly recommend that council adopt this plan to reaffirm our uncompromising commitment towards combating climate change and protecting uh, both current and future generations uh, of all walks of life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Montagna. We appreciate your comments. Um, I have several questions from counselors. I have Councillor Benton who's been waiting for a while and then we have Councillor Gibson and I don't see any other hands up. So I will start with Councillor Benton. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, members of the task force and Ms. Rader and Director Mast for your efforts on this. Um, you know, uh, as a co-sponsor of the Climate Action, Action De Declaration and, and, and of, of being a small part of, of pushing this ball forward, um, and also as a college freshman in 1970, <laughs> when the first Earth Day was, was uh, declared. Um, it's gratifying to see this work done. Um, and, and I really appreciate everyone's effort uh, and, and the support of, of, the, of the mayor who understands how important this is as well. 
um, and who who took up the the uh, the torch, as you will, after we passed the the declaration and so forth. But um, I wanted to give a shout out to as a uh, as a counselor who was here when Mayor Chavez did the first climate action plan that that you know kind of sat on a shelf for quite a while after it was passed. But it was a good foundation, and and I know that you built on that foundation. I want to give Marty a, a shout out there, but um, you know, so all the folks who have been working on this in those ten years since then as well, um, I appreciate them, and uh, also appreciate this administration's focus on equity, and and the the needs of the most impacted communities, as we know. Um, it, it, it's it's tougher for areas that have not had great development, that don't have much of a tree cover, that live near industrial areas. We thank you for the council to pass the cumulative impact uh, policy within our planning framework and uh, understanding those highly impacted communities. Um, so, um, you know, it's great to see this work uh, come out. And uh, we look forward to passing it as, as our city policy. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Benton. Councillor Gibson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I also would like to thank everybody who participated in this. Uh, Director Mast, uh, Mr. Montano, uh, Ms. Rader, uh, and, and everybody who, who uh, contributed. Um, because I also think it's a very important thing to have a plan and then to work that plan. But my question is actually for the administration. Um, I was wondering if there's somebody uh, with us in this meeting from the administration who can tell us what, um, you know, if, if the mayor's office has moved to lift the plastic bag, um, um, not ban, but, uh, you know, the, the practice that we were using during the pandemic. And uh, if not, when we might expect that to happen. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. I had a similar question. Is there anyone from the administration that would like to answer this question regarding the plastic bag restriction? Uh, Council President Borrego and uh, Council Members, Marita. Uh, to have it made a firm decision, of course, we'd want to do that in conjunction with you, but our, our, our preliminary thoughts were to give notice uh, in June about um, having the, the uh, ordinance go back into effect in August, uh, because there are a number of supply chain issues that are associated with going back to the ban being in force, like people have to get those alternative material bags, et cetera. And so um, the next emergency order, which is where the stay lives, um, would be uh, issued in early June. And that was when uh, we wanted to consider, uh, again, putting the, the provision, it's, it's like a lot of double negatives in there, but we wanna end the stay so that the plastic bag ordinance, plastic bag ordinance is back in effect. And, but we wanna give um, stores and restaurants and everybody enough time to, to get the supply chain and the protocols in place uh, so that they're not caught flat-footed. So thank you for that, uh, Ms. Meyer. Uh, but I think we should have seen this coming. And uh, so we're just going to have several more months of more and more plastic being produced. We're not eliminating the, the uh, or, or decreasing rather the uh, demand, market demand for, for plastic bags, which I really think is you know, a really important part of, of the ban anyway. Uh, so, uh, but I'm glad you have a plan or at least you do right now. And uh, I, I, I would encourage you to, uh, to speed that up if at all possible. Uh, our vendors should have seen this coming, you know. Anyway, so I'm getting questions about, it. frankly, the two grocery stores I go to the most they don't care. I can bring in any bags that I want to bring in. And it's been that way for several months. So um, um, anyway, I just encourage you to, uh, to see that that happens sooner rather than later. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. It appears that um, Kelsey Rader's hand is up. Uh, yes. Ms. Rader, did you have a comment? 
Uh, yes, Councilor, I just wanted to uh, thank, again, thank the Council again for allowing me to present. I do have to uh, support Mayor in a meeting, um, so I'm going to have to log off, but Ryan O'Mast will be here to take any more questions. Thank you. I, I just had a, a quick question. Um, as I was recycling my trash yesterday, I had my little trash bin that was separating cans and plastic. And I just wonder, um, you had that in your slide show regarding uh, recycling. And I just wondered, um, what does that exactly entail? I also had my trash cleanup day in District 5 this weekend. So it's kind of weighing on my mind right now. And I just wondered what that was referring to. Yeah, thank you, Madam President, for that question. Yeah, it was one of the items that we broke out. So we broke out the, the, the task force broke out the, the recommendations in several different sort of bulk categories and, and waste reduction and recycling is certainly one that we want to work towards. And so um, there's several different action items and policies that are actually listed in the plan that the task force brought forward as opposed to sort of focus on. And so we as a city now will begin as we enter into implementation phase to, to look into those recommendations and determine how we can best move those forward. Of course, just like any policy recommendation in a, in a plan such as this, we really take the approach, a whole community approach to implementation. So it, you know, a lot of these responsibilities will lie with the city or a city department themselves. And so we'll work closely with departments that would be engaged in this, but it also could involve working with community partners or for-profit institutions or a, a, a myriad of other uh, partners within the, within the city of Albuquerque that either work here or live here to help us execute on these. So as, uh, as Ms. Rader mentioned, we'll be really working towards uh, dissecting what that implementation is going to look like per action item and launching that over the summer. Thank you, Mr. Mast. As I was recycling my trash this weekend and I was looking at the number of um, you know, little tin cans that, and plastic bottles. I was wondering about the tin cans. Does the, and this is just for the consumer. Um, you know, I, I was separating the two into different bags. And I was just wondering, because I know that some people take their cans to um, be, um, uh, I guess they, they deposit them. And I just wondered, you know, if the city does that also. Thank you, Madam President, for that question. I saw that uh, Director Whelan just uh, popped on from Solid Waste, and maybe that's a question that he could best respond to. Uh, Councilor President, uh, thanks for that question. So we partner with Friedman Recycling, and we deliver all of our recyclables to them, and they sort it out, and then they take it to market. Um, and that's uh, how that works for us. <laughs> Unfortunately, less than 1% of what we get is aluminum cans, because there is a great market for that. People tend to go through our recycle bins or they tend to save them themselves and then go sell them. I think the current rate is between 40 and 50 cents a pound. So I wish we had a lot more aluminum cans because that, that is a recyclable that is profitable and has always been profitable. Unfortunately, it's one that consumers just tend to keep for themselves. Or as you can you notice, maybe you see people walking around picking up cans all the time. That's what they do. So um, yes, we do take it to market, but we have such little of it, uh, there isn't a lot of revenue in it. Just a thought as people are purchasing their um, goods in the grocery store that tin cans are probably better in like little iced teas or things like that that are not in plastic bottles because plastic bottles cannot be recycled like that. Is that correct? I can't hear you, Mr. Council President. Yes, plastic bottles are recyclable. It is one of the recyclables that we do. We take recyclables one through seven, and it is depending on the make of the bottle, it is recyclable. However, it's not as um, profitable as metal, tin, or aluminum. So it is helpful for the average person to separate out the plastic and the and the tin and so on. It it, it appears. Um, Madam President, we do what's called si single stream recycling. So whatever you put into your bin, when it gets to Friedman, they, they sort it out. One thing we have been asking, and we've been, this is part of our messaging of our Recycle Right campaign, is that you don't tie all your recyclables into a bag because when they get delivered to Friedman, those conveyor belts move very quickly and there are um, 100 employees. 
And so if you bundle your recyclables and you tie your bag as it's coming through the conveyor belt, it just gets pulled off because they don't have time as they're plucking off the contaminated materials. They don't have time to open up that bag and dump it out. So by doing that, they would let a lot more contaminants go through. So um, that's one big part of our Recycle Right campaign is just teaching people the top 10 items that go in your cart, as well as not to bag your items. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Whalen. Could you tell us where we can find this information on your website? All of this information is at the Solid Waste website, cabq.gov, backslash solid waste. There's a recycling tab. Uh, you can click there. It'll give you all that information. You can also download, we have what's called the Recycle Coach app, and you can get that at the iStore or on Android. And you just go to the Recycle Coach. It's a free app. You put in your, your zip code and you can ask it questions. You can type stuff in there like, is a potato chip bag recyclable? It'll tell you no. It has all the information for us. So we really push our Recycle Right app, um, all of our messaging through our website, plus through Keep Albuquerque Beautiful, which is an affiliate of Keep America Beautiful. We push out literature all the time and we're constantly going out with messaging. Um, now that the schools are back, we send some of our interns into a, the elementary schools to begin to teach people at a very young age, how to recycle right. And then we're always doing initiatives throughout the year, billboards, advertising. Um, they're doing something called Talking Trash Tuesdays. And um, we're doing something called the Recycling Ferry that those are all less than one minute um, videos that we're putting out on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. And I'm probably missing one of those websites, but uh, that's what our marketing team works on. Thank you, Mr. Whalen. And I just wanna, I see your deputy, Ms. Holbert has her hand up, but I just want to give a shout out to your folks that were in the Northwest Mesa at Mariposa Park collecting trash uh, in District 5 this weekend. And um, I was really, from my understanding, there was quite a bit of trash that was deposited. And just a shout out to your employees. And with that, I will go to Ms. Holbert. I think she has a comment. Oh yes, just very quickly. Um, right now, the kind of plastic bottle that you might find soda or water in actually is paying better than aluminum. So I don't want people to feel discouraged about recycling their plastics um, with us because um, many of the types of plastics are paying very well right now, including milk jugs and water bottles and soda bottles. Thank you, Ms. Holbert. I know you do a great job. Also, so thank you. Thank you. you. On. I want to go back to um, Mr. Mast, unless there are other questions for solid waste. If not, um, Mr. Mast, would you like to have some closing comments? Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just want to again just reiterate uh, how much I appreciate the collaborative effort of everybody coming together, both from our political leaders, our elected leadership, the, the directors and the departments that came together, the community members, you know, really, this really was an effort that we did not in spite of the pandemic, but really because the pandemic really forced us to ensure that we had a solid game plan coming out of it um, and that we didn't miss a step or miss a beat in this. And so we just really look forward with working with the council over the coming months and years to implement the policies and recommendations um, you know, identified in this climate action plan and marking that progress and, and, and communicating that, really telling the story um, to both the community and the entire nation, how much we um, are leaders um, on, this, on this particular issue. So thank with you, that, Mr. I urge your support for thank the office. volunteers on behalf of the council for their work as well. Um, I would just also mention to you that the council passed a memorial this year, this past year, and I don't have the number in front of me. I, I apologize to you, but it was encouraging the state to look at the climate um, action plan or a climate action plan that is similar to what the city is working on. Um, and I, you can contact my assistant since I sponsored that memorial um, to get a copy of it. Any other questions, counselors? If not, we will move on. Thank you to environmental health. Um, we will move on to our next order of business. Um, we do not have any economic development discussions tonight, so we will move on to general public comments, uh, counselors. We have 16 people who are signed in the queue. Uh, I'm not sure all 16 are in uh, the waiting room, but um, uh, Julian will be giving them. 
one and a half minutes before we start with public comment. I just need to read some information to the public. Um, hello to those joining us to provide live public comment. We also received written comments that were distributed to all of the counselors in advance of today's meeting. Members of the public will be able to address the council if they have signed up for live public comment per the instructions published on the agenda and on our website on Friday. Speakers will be moved into the meeting room two at a time. They will re remain muted with their camera off until they are called upon to speak, at which point they can turn on their camera and unmute themselves. We will have, they will be provided one and a half minutes um, for comments to the council. After that, they will again be muted and return to be an attendee of the Zoom webinar. Here are the public ground rules. Each participant has one and a half minutes to present. Comments are to be addressed to the counselors through the council president. Any disruptive conduct will result in removal from the Zoom. There will be a one and a half minute time limit. The timer will start once you begin speaking. Then the Zoom moderate, moderator, Mr. Julian Moya, will let you know when your time is up. Mr. Moya, will you please call the name of the, our first speaker? Thank you, Madam President. Our first speaker is Robert Nelson. Please feel free to turn your video on, unmute yourself, and your one and a half minutes will begin when you start speaking. Thank you, Mr. Mora, and good afternoon, Council President Borrego and City Council. My name is Robert Blanquetta Nelson. I am uh, contacting you today with concerns regarding the city budget. Mayor Keller's proposed budget for fiscal year 22 includes a $223 million for APD a big increase from uh, the previous fiscal year. Um, this huge increase is uh, a big concern because APD is one of the highest rates of police killings in our country. Uh, the police department has not shown it is willing or capable of the radical change it needs to undergo to stop state violence and murder against our community. And even our police union has spent 70,000 in public campaign to resist the DOJ consent decree, which requires mandatory reforms. Uh, we do not need to give more money and more power to police. We need more money for housing mental health, for substance use, uh, and for decades of reform efforts, more funding to police have failed to stop state murder and violence. What we need instead is more investment in housing, healthcare, mental health, restorative and transformative justice, community gardens, access to food, childcare, arts and culture, and community-based organizations. I urge you to pass a city budget that cuts the police budget by 50% and shifts those funds to the priorities listed here. Enough is enough. We need a budget that invests in true community safety and well-being. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Our next speaker is Francesca Bluer. Please feel free to turn your video back on. Unmute yourself and your one and a half minutes will begin when you start speaking. You can uh, unmute yourself, ma'am. Hi, my name is Francesca Bluer and I'm a lifelong resident in this community. I want to express my deep concerns with the proposed uses of the American Rescue Plan Act money that are being presented to the City Council today. Over 56 million of federal money, rescue money, is set to come to our community to help with pandemic response, pandemic recovery, investment, and support for our vulnerable populations. My greatest concern is that the largest chunk of the rescue money almost $10 million will be going to a Albuquerque Public uh, Police Department. This money going to APD is being spent on gunshot detection, $3 million, APD vehicles, $1 million, police recruitment, $450,000, and APD main station renovations, technology and energy upgrades, $5 million. I ask you, how do the millions spent on gunshot detection, <clears throat> on, on gunshot detection, APD vehicles, APD technology, and recruitment of more police is in any way addressing the pandemic response recovery or a support for our vulnerable communities? As the federal legislation states, further, the $10 million APD is set to get far surpasses what is being considered for those excluded from other stimulus programs. And- Thank you, Ms. Bluer, your, your time is up. Thank you. 
Thank you. Our next speaker is Rob Nash. Mr. Nash, please feel free to interview. I'm sorry, uh, Madam President, I think Councillor Benton has his hand raised. Thank you, Madam President. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Ms. Bloor, for your comments. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I support portions of what you're objecting to. I certainly uh, do not support all of them. Um, you know, some of these capital expenses are completely undefined. Um, and, and, you know, I'm sure there probably are some needs at the old uh, police station downtown. I emphasize the, the word old. But, but these, these needs have not been defined to the council. So, uh, you know, Councillor Davis and I do have a, a, uh, an amendment calling for the, those funds to be put into supportive housing and, um, and case management for people who need it. Uh, along with their supportive housing. So just to make that clear, since you brought it up, I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Benton. We will move on to our next speaker. Thank you, Madam President. Our next speaker is Rob Nash. Please feel free to turn your video on, unmute yourself, and your one and a half minutes will begin when you start speaking. Hello, my name is Rob Nash. Uh, hello, Madam President, members of the council. Uh, if I could voice my frustration with uh, the Animal Welfare Department and their enforcement of the noise ordinance, specifically uh, barking dogs. My neighbor's dogs have been barking around the clock for three and a half years. I filed 300 reports with the 311 system, <clears throat> Mayor's Office, Councillor Gibson, and uh, the director of that department, Director Ortega. And uh, pretty much just met with, uh, you know, flippant contempt. Now, there is a, a case progressing. Uh, however, it's, it's progressing in an unusual fashion in which uh, a common city employee functions as the prosecutor, which is, I can't believe that the judge allows that or that the, the city thinks that that is appropriate. I, you know, in a functional city where I came from, if a citizen has a problem with a barking dog, they call the city, a city employee runs out, issues a citation, and they get fined. So let's go for functional and let's leave this travesty of a farce behind. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Move on to our next speaker. Our next speaker is Tabitha Bennett. Ms. Bennett, please feel free to turn your video on. Unmute yourself in one and a half minutes will begin when you start speaking. Thank you. Do you remember what it was like to learn to ride a bike? The sense of joy and freedom that came with it. Some of you may be lucky enough to watch your children or your grandchildren experience this freedom. I've had the privilege of watching my five-year-old learn this past week, but this celebration was clouded with some unwarranted anxiety because on our quiet street, we were followed by a police surveillance drone who took pictures of our family without consent. And as this happened, we thought, why are the police doing this to us? And the simple answer is because they can. They can intimidate our community for simply being who we are and where we are. Not only can they intimidate, but they can also inflict violence. APD has one of the highest rates of police killings in the country. Our police forces are allowed to operate with little to no accountability and continually be rewarded with funding increases. The FY22 budget proposes an increase of 23%. APD is set to receive $223 million or 31% of the entire budget on top of the 10 million of American Rescue Money, which includes about a million dollars for vehicles. So maybe we'll see another really cool APD branded lowrider soon. Is that really the best way to invest in our community? I urge you today to reallocate funding to departments that provide public services, including civilian police oversight, senior affairs, and family and community services, which include housing, childcare, and mental health services. Combined, these three make up less than 10% of the proposed budget. We need you to revise and approve a budget that actually invests in true community safety and well being. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Our next speaker, and please pardon me for mispronunciation, but Su Han Ho, please uh, feel free to turn your video on. Unmute yourself 
And your one and a half minutes will begin when you start speaking. Madam President and council members, um, I'm an artist, I'm an organizer and an Albuquerque resident in District 2. I'm also a faculty member in the Department of Art at UNM, as well as a grad director in the department. And I have serious concerns uh, about the budget that is being voted on today, echoing what others have spoken about today. Um, this budget gives $223 million to APD on top of $10 million in funds that are supposed to go to economic recovery from the pandemic. Uh, we know that APD has a long history of violence and murder. It ranks 10th highest in the nation for police killings. Um, I've been informed that additional funding to APD this year is going to oversight. However, reform and oversight have failed for decades. So what makes us think that giving APD more funding will fix the problem now? Since 1996, when city council completed an investigation of APD, there have been numerous attempts at reform and oversight. In the seven years following this previous, previously mentioned period of reform, APD actually increased its rate of police murder. And now with the DOJ consent decree, the police union is pushing back again with a racist campaign called hashtag crime matters more. Um, I ask, what does it matter more than? Is it matter more than black lives? What our community needs is affordable housing, transformative justice, mental health resources, support for our unsheltered community, substance abuse counseling, access to healthy food, clean air, water, all of the basic necessities. Um, let's meet those necessities instead of funding state violence and murder through APD. I strongly implore you, you to Andy, reject Andy, this Andy, proposed Andy, budget. Thank you. Our next speaker is Karen Bentrup. Ms. Bentrup, please feel free to turn your video on, unmute yourself, and your one and a half minutes will begin when you start speaking. Good afternoon, Council President Borrego and counselors and other community members here. I too join the voices that you are hearing that are aghast that we're going to spend $223 million plus another $10 million from the American Rescue Plan on APD. When you've been hearing the stats and you know the data that the police here keep killing people doing surveillance as the one um, community member described. In the United States, we spend $100 billion on policing nationwide and $200 billion on incarceration. If policing and imprisonment would actually make me safe, the United States would be the safest country in the world. And we are not. We have mass shootings. We have police killing people. We have robberies. We have break-ins. Police do not make me safe at all. That is not a part of what actually creates community safety. As the other community members have stated, we need childcare and housing and education and access to healthcare and mental health care. We need food, we need transformative justice that we can have a community created just and humane approach to community safety and addressing harm. Police do not keep me safe. Thank you, counselors. Thank you. Our next speaker is Victoria Gomez. Ms. Gomez, please feel free to turn your video on, unmute yourself, and your one and a half minutes will begin when you start speaking. Thank you, counselors. My name is Victoria, and I have lived in Albuquerque for generations. I want to thank Counselor Borrego for starting this meeting with a moment of silence for folks living with disabilities. Uh, because people living with disabilities have continued to be harmed and killed by the Albuquerque Police Department. And we can reflect on the murder of James Boyd and so many others and know this to be true. This pandemic has harmed, killed, and disabled so many of us. And while the council has a responsibility to protect and serve our communities, using the largest federal relief funding we have ever received to add funds to the police department that already holds the majority of our city's budget is irresponsible. The council's proposed dismal allocation of funds to mental health, housing services, family and domestic violence services concern all of us. And all of those services, total funding combined is 43.2 million, where the police funding is $223.4 million. What is one department going to do with 180 million more dollars 
um, when we have at least nine other departments whose funding is not even close to 10 million. Can you imagine how much better our community would be if the council distributed funds equitably? I'm asking you to stop all new funding to the Albuquerque Police Department and reallocate the current funds of the police department to other family, health, and housing services for our community. Again, it's irresponsible for the city council to add funding to the most violent police force in the country when unemployment, poverty, and trauma have not been addressed in our city. APD's gain is our loss. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Shelby Cohen. Please feel free to turn your video back on, unmute yourself, and your one and a half minutes will begin when you start speaking. Hi, my name is Shelby Cohen. Um, I'm a recent UNM grad and a lifetime resident of Albuquerque. Um, I just wanted to reiterate reiterate what Victoria was saying. I think this is a massive misuse of city funding. Um, a year ago, Mayor Tim Keller said that he would start cutting funding for APD, and he has not done that. He has not followed on, up on his promises. And over the last year, we've seen incredible violence against unsheltered people in our community. You had a moment of silence at the beginning of the meeting but the majority of homeless people have disabilities. And if you actually cared about them, you would put funding towards their needs and actually make our community safe in that regard. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sarah Fitzgerald. Please feel free to turn your video on, unmute yourself, and your time will begin when you start speaking. Good afternoon, Madam President, Councilors. I'm Sarah Fitzgerald speaking on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Greater Albuquerque Chamber of Commerce. My comments pertain to Amendment 12 to 02160. Is that item on today's agenda? I'm not sure if my comment will be allowed if it's not on the agenda. What, what item that is again? Uh, that one would restrict the Gateway Center's shelter beds. I don't believe that that's on our agenda this afternoon, madam. Okay, I will I will hold off for till next time. Madam, Thank you. Thank madam you. President. Uh, Councillor Davis. Uh, madam President, I believe Ms. Fitzgerald, uh, that matter is before the council currently, although it's not on today's agenda. If Ms. Fitzgerald here and she signed up, would it be okay to allow her to go ahead and have her comments since we'll be considering that at a future meeting? Councillor Davis and uh, Madam, absolutely. If you'd like to have your one and a half minutes, uh, you may go ahead. Um, you know, I, I appreciate that, Madam uh, President and Councillor Davis. I think we'll wait until um, it's before the councillor in, in a more kind of cohesive way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kevin Bean. Mr. Bean, please feel free to turn your video on, unmute yourself, and your time will begin when you start speaking. Good afternoon, President Borrego, members of the council. My name is Kevin Bean. I live in Fernwell. I was a member of the Climate Action Plan Task Force. I was happy to be a part of that effort. Really glad to see it moving ahead. Um, my, and I appreciate your interest in it. My primary comment is the council has a critical role to play in implementation of a climate action plan. One reviewer I heard uh, characterized the plan as more of a vision statement that, than as an action plan. And so it's really up to the administration and to the council to put this plan into action. The council's role is, is a critical one. Education and advocacy is, I think, are the two major um, uh, tasks that the council needs to address in implementation of this plan. Um, I haven't seen a single news story so far that uh, the plan has been developed or presented to the council. You know, that we see things in the news all the time about the climate. Not many people know what we're doing here in Albuquerque. And if you go back to R-187, the 
climate declaration of a climate emergency that was adopted by this council in 2019, you'll see that there are a couple of things that declaration calls for. One is for the climate action plan that was presented today. But another is mobilization of this community uh, to get behind this climate action plan and to play, and I appreciate that. You have a difficult job, but the climate emergency is not something that can wait. We are in the middle of Thank a mega you, drought. Um, Thank you, Mr. Bain. Thank um, you for your time. We, we appreciate your volunteerism, and I believe that that plan is going to be coming to the council. Uh, Councilor Benton, did you have something you'd like to share? Yeah, just quickly, I want to appreciate Mr. Bean. He, he not only volunteered this time, but 10 years ago, and has been a, a steadfast advocate. And um, I really wanna just reemphasize one thing that he, that he said, I think if I could paraphrase it, and that's the word action. And so uh, as a city, this can't just be something that's well, we, we check that box, we're, you know, we're on the right team. We, we do truly wanna be a leader. So, and Kevin Bean is a leader and I wanna thank him for his participation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam President, we had a few others sign up to speak, but their names nor phone numbers provided uh, showed up in the meeting today. So that will conclude public comments. All right, well, thank you to the public for your comments. Uh, we will move on then, counselors, to administration question and answer period. Um, counselors, any questions for the administrations? And, and I know that um, Councillor Davis, myself, and Councillor Benton had questions for Chief Medina regarding APD's strategy for managing Central Avenue weekend activities. And I don't know if the Chief is available or not. Madam President, uh, Councillor Benton, Councillor Davis, uh, this is Chief Medina. Uh, we do have a plan that we're going to be implementing over the summer uh, for Central Avenue. We have adjusted our tactical section and they will be working to assist us in safeguarding Central both in the uh, Knob Hill area and downtown area. Uh, Commander Brown, uh, the Valley Area Commander, has discovered that uh, we have large amounts of individuals parking uh, in parking lots along Central, vacant parking lots, and he's already working to address that. Uh, we do have some street closures. We're trying to ensure that uh, those street closures are done in coordinate with data, uh, especially from our shot spotter system that's saying when shots are being fired and when we have uh, uh, potential violence occurring. Uh, so they're uh, also working on some traffic plans. Uh, if we need more details, we could uh, get more details. But uh, one of the biggest things that's going to be happening in downtown is the operation we started uh, 60 days ago in the Northeast, uh, where we put up a temporary command post and had a heavy police presence on Montgomery, which uh, had had, I believe it was right around five homicides up until that point, which hasn't, hasn't had one in the past 60 days. Uh, we're moving that operation uh, Thursday through Sundays to the downtown area. So we'll have an increased visibility and, and uh, number of officers in the area, along with uh, some educational opportunities for the public that will be occurring. Thank you, Chief. I see that Councillor Davis may have a question. Well, uh, yeah, thank you, Madam President. Yeah, I did have a, a couple of things. If it's time for Q&A, I wanted to be able to follow up with the Chief or Commander Brown. I know uh, Councillor Benton did as well, so I don't want to get too far into the downtown issues or questions. But Chief, mm -hmm. you and I had a chance to message earlier today about it, but I want to follow up and say, if you could tell us a little more, I, I, I know the department has been working to address uh, concerns, especially what's happening on Sunday evenings downtown. Um, it's for a long time been a really positive place for, for community activity, but lately we've had a lot of issues, including um, you know what, what was once like fun, popular family cruising has become like drag racing, motorcycle racing. APD's actions a few weeks ago to increase enforcement seem to have moved the motorcycle problem to Knob Hill last night. They were, there were more than 30 bikes in Knob Hill doing tricks in the ART lanes um, all night. I could hear them from my house while APD was dealing with whatever was happening downtown. We just seem to be moving this issue without addressing it. I know we've raised it 
And then, of course, there was the, um, the very, as you and I talked about, the very concerning shooting last night um, in a parking lot there between some apparently rival motorcycle groups. Um, and then another uh, sexual assault concern that I know was reported and was being investigated and taken seriously. Um, but in other words, I know APD said they had a presence, I know the department had a presence there and they're working on it, um, but it doesn't seem to be having the desired impact. And so I wonder what APD's post-incident evaluation and response will be to address that next week. And I know Council Ben has had some uh, conversations with downtown merchants. And so maybe Council, Madam President, if Council Ben will to piggyback on that, we could let the Chief or, or Commander Brown respond to both. I think I'm just concerned that we do have some answers and I know we're working on it, but it, it has gotten worse, not better. And it seems to be moving the problem to other parts of the city as well, where we don't have those extra resources. So uh, perhaps Councilor Benton can add and we can just leave it all with the, the police department. Councilor Benton. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first of all, you know, in the wake of discussions about how APD is no good and so forth, you know, I just want to say that the Chief Medina and Commander Brown from the Valley and the Downtown Public Safety District have my highest regard. And they're doing some very, very difficult work. And, and to, to volunteer to work downtown is a, is a unique decision on the part of an officer. And I, comm I, I commend every single one of them who, who choose to, to deal with the, the, the challenges of downtown. Um, and, and I appreciate the chief, the chief, uh, Deputy Chief Olvera, Commander Brown, the downtown public safety district officers have, have been meeting with me on a weekly basis in the venue of the Alvarado Transit Transportation <laughs> Task Force and for the lack of any other venue to talk about what, what's going on. And uh, full disclosure, I live a block from Central. So I have very, I'm, I'm very tuned in to, uh, and I guess uh, tuned in from a, a auditory standpoint to what's going on in Central Avenue near me. And that's not even near downtown, that's near Old Town. I have neighbors who are, who wanna move away from our lovely neighborhood because of the abuse that is going on. And this is just on Central Avenue. I realize it's all over the city, but downtown is unique. And downtown, I think has the attention of APD. I know that, that things devolved on Sunday night. I know that, that, that the chief and, and everyone who I spoke to had a commitment to not allow some of the things that were going on on Friday, Saturday night. And apparently Sunday, it got out of control. Listen, as much as we want to celebrate car culture in our city, we need to step back for a second from car culture and talk about the basic safety of our citizens, whether it's a pedestrian, whether it's a bicyclist, whether people who are living downtown and that put up with insanity every weekend. It's got to stop and it's going to take some serious effort. And, and, and I'm asking for the commitment of other counselors who, who don't represent this immediate area. And, you know, Councilor Davis talked about Knob Hill and I've seen what goes on there. I mean, I, I went shopping at Lowe's at 12th and I-40 one, one time not long ago, and I could hear it coming down the freeway. Hundreds of motorcyclists, I mean, over a hundred, let's just put it that way, maybe not hundreds, but, but over a hundred motor motorcyclists doing tricks on I-40 in broad daylight. It's insanity. It is so disrespectful of every other citizen and it's got to stop. And, and it's not car culture. This is abuse, car abuse in our city. And it's got to stop. And I know they're trying their hardest downtown and it devolved on Sunday night. I understand that. And I'm not, I'm not blaming APD because I think they understand it and they're, they're reacting to a a constantly changing dynamic. By the way, this dynamic amongst these groups, and there's several of them, it's, it's the hot rods, it's the big trucks, it's the, it's the motorcycle crotch rocket crowd, um, um, and, and just old fashioned hot rods who wanna make a lot of noise and, and 
show off how cute they are. It's got to, it, it, we've got to crack down on it w without tolerance. Um, and so, so here I am, you know, the liberal counselor from district two who does not support overly strong police presence, but there's got to be one now or else, you know, this city is going to devolve. By the way, a lot of these, these lawbreakers are also packing heat. They also they also carry guns. They shoot out of their windows. They shoot out of their motorcycle. I don't I don't deny at all how dangerous potentially it is to police officers as well. And so we've got to put our heads together. I've met just recently this week with the parking lot owners downtown. Um, they recognize that they have a part to play too. This can't just all be APD becoming a, a towing company for some private property owners. Those private property owners need to take responsibility for their parking lots and their property on which huge nuisances are occurring. And I made that very clear to the, the, the gentleman I met with. And I did not AP, uh, invite APD along in those meetings. I wanted to just talk to them directly as the representative you know, of this immediate area. But um, this is serious business. This is not fun and games. This is not kids. A lot of these people are middle-aged, primarily men, but maybe women as well. Uh, this is not just kids. It's nothing about targeting anybody or any particular <clears throat> ethnic group. It's about people who do not care about the safety <clears throat> and the peace and quiet of others. And um, we've got to all pulled together on this. I, I'm sorry to make a speech, Madam President, but but uh, this really does raise something. And, and, and I am very sympathetic to the attempts of APD. I know they're gonna continue to evolve with what they're trying to do, but I think we need major closures downtown. I'm just gonna put that out right now of it uh, beyond just Central Avenue, some major closure of downtown Friday, Saturday and Sunday nights, maybe beyond that, I don't know. You know, the more we try to react to it, the more these outlaws are responding. And, and like I said, they're all on social media and coordinating each other. We better, we better be doing that too. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Benton. I think you expressed a lot of the councillor's feelings um, and probably support toward downtown and other areas of the city. Uh, Councillor Pena's had her hand up for quite a long time. And then we have Councillor Gibson. Thank you, Madam President. Um, actually, you know, this goes right into what we've been discussing. Um, and thank you, Councillor Benton, for being part of the speeding task force. Um, you know, speeding has really become an issue. Um, I know you feel it. It's concentrated, but you know, we have it. I have constituent calls that are calling over here. Um, and I, I'm part of Central as well. So, you know, it comes up this way and as as does it through all our city council districts. So, um, you know, and when we're talking about the car culture and, you know, there, maybe there's something that we should do in terms of creating the task force. I actually, um, talking to some of the lowrider community and being at the event this weekend celebrating car culture, what I think, which is, I think is important. And, you know, uh, lowriders don't tend to uh, drive really fast or <laughs> they have to protect their, their investment. But anyway, um, you know, they had said that it would be good for us to develop another um, task force, you know, with some of the speeding community to really do what we've done with um, the lowrider community and bringing everybody together and to really understanding how, you know, we're one part of, we're part of the entire city and how we work together and maybe providing opportunities for some of the speeding community. They were advocates actually this weekend saying that, you know, they would love to to work to you know get something like a like a hot rod APD vehicle and 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 that they would love to see not just what happened with with um, their community in terms of working with APD and working with city council. Um, I actually mentioned your name this weekend about being part of this whole um, 
this whole redo. And so they made a suggestion about creating a speeding task force. I think it would be a great idea. I think that, you know, this would really tie in the speeding has a name and for people to bring awareness, as you know, I think just as we unveiled the speeding has a name, just a young um, man just graduated from high school and he was speeding, not in your area, but just speeding and lost his life just after his graduation ceremony. Last night on the news, there was somebody who, um, this morning actually in the news, uh, Alameda was closed down because of speeding, you know, so it's just really, really prevalent. And we just really have to educate these young kids, you know, lots of young kids, like you said, I mean, I don't know, men, women, you know, old, young, but it seems as though it's a lot of young kids and they don't realize the implications of what they're doing as you've stated before. And I think we've all stated it's Sometimes we do some really dumb things when we're when we're young and, you know, maybe getting everybody together to to really figure this out, because the cruisers basically said, you know, we don't want it to be viewed as that we're doing this downtown. So we're coming to you saying that, hey, how do we work together as a community to to address this and we want to be part of that solution. So I was like, you know, I'm going to take this to council. I told them we're going to be having another speeding has a name campaign and we can talk about it. So I'm, I'm glad you talked about it um, this evening. As a matter of fact, um, I've gotten some constituent calls about all the revving that's happening at the uh, Trisco Plaza. And it's really, it's, you know, it's just not good. It's just not a it's just not good. So I think, again, just like the low riders perceptions people have, I think they just want a place and maybe we can come together and really find somewhere where people can can really, you know, do what they love to do, but not on our public streets. So sorry for my speech, Madam President, but just wanted to say that I really appreciate the low rider community and their concern for what even they're trying to do. Um, so thank you. If I could just respond, Madam President, since since yes, I was mentioned a few times and I appreciate uh, Councilor Pena mentioning because we, yeah, we did work together and, you know, I hate it when, um, well, whatever, I try to correct it when people blame this on so-called cruisers. I mean, cruisers, as I know them, is the lowrider community and, the, and these beautiful works of art that people cruise central and maybe they've got to divert around down down or something we've got to figure that out but but it's certainly not to fault them in any way and that that terminology that we lump everybody together as cruisers well there's cruisers and that's low and slow in my book but whatever <laughs> but 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 um but there's also just people who seem to have no sense of personal responsibility and that's giving cruisers a bad name and it's giving downtown a bad name. It's giving other parts of town, you name it. I'm not, I'm not claiming to say that this is only down here and this is all around town, this dynamic. And, and I, uh, that, you know, I look in the windows and I see the people driving and it is not just young people. You know, it's a lot of people who ought to know better. So I just want to say that, but I, I, I agree. With Councilor Pena, we work together on this. I think we can work maybe and try to figure out something, get together with with the lowrider community, and you know find great places for them to 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 destinations that may not include downtown. Because when it's downtown, then they get lumped in with all the bad stuff that's going on. But you know, I'm just putting that out there. But but uh, I just wanted to respond to that. So thank you. Uh, Madam President and Councilor Pena. And Madam President, if you don't mind, just to respond to that too before you before you go on to Councilor Gibson. Sorry, Councilor Gibson. But um, yeah, so you know they they asked to reestablish well to not to reestablish but to set another meeting for the cruising task force to talk about a speeding task force. And they really wanted to come up with solutions. I I, I should have added that a minute ago when I spoke, but they were saying that. Um, some of the congestion downtown is because the lights aren't timed correctly. You know, there were some concerns with the roundabout and how that's, you know, move, moving the flow of traffic. So, you know, we talked, they actually said it would be nice to actually take the lowrider car down there and have the police department down there so that they can really kind of understand how the flow is going so that maybe we can do some, some, um, traffic measures in, in terms of keeping the traffic moving. So just wanted to add that. So thank you, Madam President. Thank you, 
Councillor Pena and Councillor Benton. Councillor Gibson, you've been waiting quite a while. Thank you. Um, so I don't think there's any question. I can't imagine anybody, but I say things like that and I always, always find the exception. But, I, you know, this isn't, these aren't low riders. These aren't cruisers. Uh, these are, these, and I agree, they're not just kids. You know, they're, these are grown adults. Um, I live probably closer, <laughs> not, that, not that we're having a competition here, but I live very close to I-40 and I hear uh, racing up and down I-40 at uh, Louisiana and I don't know how far away they get before I can't hear them anymore um, on a daily basis. Um, and, and more more so at night. So, you know, while I appreciate, you know, education is always a good thing. It's never, it's never a bad thing. Um, but I think we have to look at the effectiveness of that. And, and for, for example, the young man that was referenced, very, very sad story. Yeah, may, maybe, maybe that would have helped him. Maybe that young man would still be with us. But these 30, 40, 50 year old guys who are tearing up the streets. Uh, I don't think so. They need to be held accountable for their actions. Uh, so a couple of things come to my mind is that I never see the state police pulling over anybody on any of our freeways. So, uh, and I don't believe, although I, I don't know this for sure, that, um, APD can pull over cars on, on the freeway. Maybe, maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But in any case, I very rarely see anything like that happen. I only see APD stopped when they're, when they're accidents, really. And, um, and, and I, I, I know they've got enough to do. There's a, about a, thousands of miles probably of, of streets in Albuquerque that they're having trouble just keeping up with. Um, but that's how we're going to stop this, is holding people accountable, writing tickets, lots of tickets, making people go to court, and maybe spending a little bit of time behind bars. Tough love. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Um, yeah, I mean, just listening to all of this, I mean, last night I heard speeding in my backyard um, is adjacent to golf course and I could hear the speeding on golf course you know so it's like we move it from downtown and it goes to Knob Hill and then it goes to Tramway and it moves over to Unser and the freeway and it just keeps moving around it seems like and and I, I kind of feel for APD because they're trying it's you know they're trying to chase that that um sort of that tail and that tail keeps moving, you know, and um, I think that this dialogue is really important and it's, it's an issue that, you know, I know the speeding task force is trying to address, but I agree with Councilor Pena. I think we, we need to really look at some more um, opportunity for education, um, enforcement, and how do we support APD regarding this issue? Because it, it's a tough issue. And I don't know if, you know, I, I saw the commercials the other day on, on TV, Councilor Pena, uh, for speeding has a name. And, you know, it really, uh, for people that are paying attention, I think it's, um, it's a good start, but I think we have a lot more to do and, and enforcement, you know, definitely supporting our police department regarding that. And I mean, I, I appreciate the counselors that are putting their heads together. I know there's only four of you, but, uh, you know, I think we're all behind you. So let us know if you need more money or if you, what, what it is that, um, or do we start another group? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think any of us really have the answer right now, but we're definitely, it sounds to me like something the council wants to move forward on. Uh, Councilor Benton. Councilor Benton, you're muted. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of turn it back to the chief and the folks there from APD. And 
uh, uh, see what their thinking are, are is as to going forward um, with regard to downtown think, specifically. So it's that well. Or, um, Madam, Madam President, Madam President, Councilor Benton, uh, you know, we're going to continue uh, to work and devote resources to downtown. Uh, this actually went into motion about two, three weeks ago. We started planning this. We saw things were going to reopen. We knew things were going to change. Uh, we have crowds outside in parking lots now. And maybe in two weeks, we'll have crowds inside of liquor establishments along Central, uh, no longer parked in parking lots. Uh, it's really hard to predict what the future is going to bring us with how our crowds are. Uh, we definitely are devoting resources to traffic enforcement. I think council, uh, every councilor had a key point there that this is a balancing act for the Albuquerque Police Department. This is ensuring that we allow individuals to freely uh, cruise central if they're not breaking any laws uh, and ensure that uh, they're allowed to participate in, in something that's part of their culture, uh, especially when they're following the rules but ensuring that those that are breaking the law, that we're enforcing those laws to, to make sure that they're held accountable for their behavior. And we will continue to do this uh, to respect the rights of those that are, aren't doing anything wrong, but to hold those accountable. Uh, we know that we do move it. I have emails from this past weekend, and there's probably some counselors on here who are smiling and giggling because I got emails about how uh, citizens feel that the problem in the foothills, uh, they haven't seen the drag racing and the cruising problems from this past uh, couple of weeks and they feel that there's a level of success. Now we'll address it and devote more resources to downtown and we'll always have to be chasing uh, these individuals and hopefully we can continue to work. Uh, we are working with some of our uh, local drag strips to see if we can't uh, develop a closer relationship and utilize them. Uh, to maybe get people somewhere where uh, they could legally drive the way that they're driving. So we will continue to address the issue. We've given as many resources as we can to this uh, problem, but I'll just remind respectfully everybody that it's all, that also is a balancing act for the police department. Uh, you know, we really publicized how we've increased the number of homicide detectives. We've talked about how we've given uh, force investigation, the number of, of personnel. And we are, we just tested for more traffic personnel that we're actually going to force to work uh, weekends, the, the key times. So we'll continue to make adjustments as needed. And uh, like I said, uh, Foothills, uh, we had good positive messaging from the residents of how they saw the reduction over the past few weeks. And uh, Obviously, it's moved to downtown and we'll continue to address it downtown. And I'm sure after that, it may move and we may be right back into the Northeast uh, addressing the issue there. But we're, we'll continually address it all we can. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Councilor Penny, you had a, a closing remark? At closing, I just had a, another question for the administration um, if we're done with this topic. Um, I don't see anyone on there. Let me see if they're on. Um, anyone from the administration? There we go. We're here. We're here, ma'am. Just waiting for the question. Councilor Pena. Thank you. Actually, I said administration. I should have said APD and the, or the chief. I just, um, as you were talking about the cruising downtown and what shot spotter detected, um, I was wondering if you could tell um, me and the counselors, because I'm a tremendous advocate for shot spotter. I think it works. I know you put in place three or four um, random, you know, high crime areas. You, you, you located the initial shot spotter so that you can identify whether it's something that you want to use moving forward or or not. And from what I've learned is that it's pretty successful. It's working. I happen to live in one of those high crime areas that you actually located one. I think it's fantastic. I was actually uh, shared uh, a video from my nest of some gunshots that went out right near my home and within 15, 20 minutes there were, were um, an officer dispatched to the area, which I just think that, you know, in area, high crime areas, um, 
you know, that's something that residents do want to see and they want to know that people are coming out. I know maybe they're not apprehending anybody, but just knowing that, you know, if something had happened, officers would be on the way. Um, I know um, you, you talk about the casings that you, you find and how, how they um, assist you. So if someone from APD can talk a little bit about shot spotter, I would appreciate it. Madam President, uh, Councilor Pena, before I turn it over to Deputy Chief Diego to talk about some specifics, I'm just going to really emphasize the importance of shot spotter and us being able to deploy resources at the right times and make the right choices for the community to ensure that, for example, road closures. Uh, today, we started looking to see what time are we going to close the roads uh, central ground. Typically, we'd always done it 9, 10 o'clock. But by being able to have spot, uh, shot spotter technology in the city, we looked and we actually discovered that uh, our peak time for shot spotter activations downtown are Friday through Sunday, and it's generally on Friday and Saturday starts right around 8 o'clock. So when you talk about deploying resources, about being able to understand when we want to close a roadway uh, to prevent violence, shot spotter gave us the exact data that we needed. Uh, plus, it also helps us devote resources to the places that need the resources the most. I'm a firm believer in, in the shot spotter technology and how it's going to be assisting us going forward based off of the, not just catching criminals, but Deputy Chief Greg will give some examples of when we've made cases and, and had stronger uh, ability to prosecute a case, but just the deployment of resources and making sure that we put officers in the right places at the right times uh, is key. And part of our deployment and adjusting the hours of our tactical section went right along with what we were seeing downtown. And over the past three weekends, I believe uh, our, our units have uh, recovered right around six or seven firearms during traffic stops in the downtown area which goes back to what Councillor Benton was talking about. A lot of these individuals are armed, but it's that data of those shots that's telling us where to put our resources that enabled us to recover those firearms. And I'll turn it over to Deputy Chief Gregor with some specifics now. Good evening, Madam President and Councillor uh, Pena. Um, I'm Deputy Chief J.J. Griego. When we talk about the shot spotter system, um, it has been tremendously successful, not just for AP, but for the community uh, as well. Um, the program essentially has enabled us to um, discern not just um, where the gunshots are being fired, but precisely where they're being fired. Um, we have a number of cases where we have made significant arrests based on shot spotter alerts. Uh, we have confiscated a number of firearms uh, from shot spotter alerts. Uh, it has been used in two homicide um, investigations so far. Uh, and as well as uh, we were able to discover someone who was shot and was intoxicated to the point where um, they didn't even know they were shot. So, you know, the, the, the system itself has the potential not just to arrest bad guys, uh, but it also uh, will enable us to save lives when it comes to it because we get the notification before any 911 call has been made. Um, the other aspect of Shot Spotter is it works synergistically with the Nipen system. Um, that is the system that we use to collect casings. So far, we've collected uh, roughly uh, 600 casings from the Shot Spotter system. And out of those 600 casings, we've developed 68 Nipen leads. Uh, which means that those firearms were used in either other crimes or other shot spotter activations. The program itself has been tremendously helpful. Madam President, Councilor Pena, just to close, uh, every area command has an area that we consider as a higher crime area. Uh, they kind of uh, go in line with the Bloomberg study from years ago. And in the near future, we hope to have sh shot spotter available to benefit every single area command, which in turn benefits every single part of the city. Uh, and it will help us get resources out there quicker and hopefully help us uh, start taking individuals into custody and building stronger pieces. 
Thank you. Thank Chief. you, Madam President. If I could just follow up on that real quick is just to say thank you for, for that, Chief, because I was going to respond to that. I, I said it because I know when they install shot spotter, they called it high crime areas, but I feel very safe in my neighborhood. <laughs> so I was just, but that, you know, I know that's how APD, for whatever reason, certain data or whatever placed it in certain areas, but <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pena. I know that you were one of the key counselors bringing shot spotter to our attention. So thank you for that. Um, Councillor Gibson. Thank you, Madam President. I do have uh, one other question. This is regarding the APD budget. So maybe somebody from the administration can, can uh, uh, answer this for me. We, we've been, uh, well, I have been getting a lot of email and I, I assume that probably other counselors have as well. Uh, regarding the APD budget. In fact, we had several public speakers here talk about that this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, so, so two questions, uh, very brief questions. Um, first of all, why does it appear that the operating budget for APD has increased somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% uh, year over year from comparing, comparing it uh, from last year to this year. And uh, second of all, why could we not have transferred more or funding uh, from APD's uh, traditional funding over to the new community safety department? Just those two questions. Thank you. Council President Borrego and Councilor Gibson. Uh, this is Sarita Nair, and I also have Sanjay here with me, but let me try to give these answers succinctly. Uh, APD's general fund budget actually only went up 5% from FY21 to FY22's mayor's proposed budget. Um, the, the confusion came, I think, for people who were looking at the budget numbers uh, that, that factored in the CARES money. So as you may recall, the Coronavirus uh, Relief Act, the federal funds that came in, for the city in 2020 were applied to, uh, in some cases, the salaries of employees who met the federal definition of being uh, first responders for the pandemic. And so um, you would see uh, that as a reduction in the budgets of APD, AFR, planning, um, environmental health, all of these departments that were involved in the response but that just meant that the money was coming from CARES instead of where it normally comes from, which is the general fund. So um, there was $31.8 million um, of CARES funding. Um, it was basically a reimbursement for um, APD personnel expense expenditures in 2020. So I think um, some folks in the public, uh, despite our best efforts, and even though we do have a, a clear comparison chart in the budget, they, they misread that and thought that that was new money into the APD budget. But again, to reiterate, um, there was only a 5% increase in the general fund um, budget. Um, and we can, we can talk more about that if you'd like. Um, you asked second why we didn't take money out of APD and put it into the community safety department. You know, from our perspective, um, we've always been clear that we need both. Uh, that the community safety department over time will um, hopefully lead to a call decrease for a, a decrease in call volume and the need to respond um, from APD. But we are still rebuilding that department. And uh, as you know, um, our recruiting efforts, we've been able to hire the 100 per year, but we have, um, of course, people separating service in the natural course. And so we're not netting 100 a year and we need to continue to rebuild that department so that we can do things like respond to speeding and homicide and so that we can have that presence of proactive officers building relationships with the community in addition to responding to calls so we can have adequately staffed detectives um, for crime but also for internal affairs force and um, misconduct which are key parts of getting into compliance with the settlement agreement so I think the administration at least has been clear from the beginning that we want to find other sources um, within the general fund and have been able to do so to fund the community safety department, including looking in the future at federal grants and so forth. Um, but it is not an either or proposition from our perspective. And if you have more detailed questions on the budget side, um, the CFO is here to respond. 
Okay, thank you very much for that, Ms. Nair. Uh, so just a couple of clarification here, uh, items here. Um, getting back to the first question I had asked about the, uh, um, the, the high delta, and, and you did a great job of explaining that, so thank you for that. But um, so we used CARES Act back then, or last year, and now we have American Recovery or Rescue, uh, Rescue Act money. But as I understand it, so let me know if I, I, my understanding is correct, that that money is not reflected in this budget in operations. Is that correct? Um, for, for Council, Pres Council President Borrego and Councilor Gibson, that is correct. Okay. And then a second thing is, um, so, so clarify for us, please, that in creating the new department, Community Safety Department, uh, have we moved tasks and obligations from APD over into this new department? Uh, Council President Borrego and Councillor Gibson. Uh, so the, of course, we're still, as you know, from the presentation a couple of weeks ago, we're still in the process of hiring up and training and so forth um, in the new department. And, and part of that was some of the slowdown um, in the 20 budget, um, but the, or in the 21 budget. Um, the concept is that early on the department will identify a few call types uh, that would be appropriate for um, response by the, the new two types of responders. And so um, over the summer or um, early fall, you'll be seeing uh, those types of calls be diverted to ACS in some cases on a solo basis and in some cases on a co-response. Um, of course, ACS um, mobile crisis clinicians are already doing co-response with APD, but that does not reduce APD call volume. It just makes those interactions um, better and safer and hopefully more proactive. And um, ACS will also be taking those thousands of uh, down and out calls that we've already moved out of APD and AFR um, and, and freeing up DMD security personnel to go back to doing their more traditional functions um, in that very first phase as well. So um, I think the short answer to your question is yes, in FY22, we will see um, the transfer of some call volume from the police department to the community safety department. Thank you for that. Uh, and. I, uh, um, I believe that the, the intent of many of the people we're hearing from, and including myself, is that uh, uh, many, uh, many of the things that we ask of our officers to do now uh, should be, they should be relieved of that, and it should go to the community safety department, which is clearly removal of tasks and obligations. And, and so the, the other part of that, the, other, the last half of that is that uh, in doing that, we will at least in theory and hopefully very soon in practice, be able to uh, lower the, uh, the funding that is needed to, um, need, that is needed by Albuquerque uh, police department. So that's all. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Councilor Gibson, uh, we will probably get more into that as we move on to our budget bills. And that's a, a really great clarification on a lot of those questions that were raised by some of our public speakers as well. So uh, with that, I think I'm going to move on to our um, I want to thank the mayor's office, uh, Ms. Nair, also for cl the clarification and um, our chief as well. Um, so we're gonna move on to our agenda because we have a very long agenda, counselors, and we have a lot of items uh, related to budget that are related to the questions that we're asking at this point. So uh, with that, uh, Councilor Gibson, I need an approval for the journal. Thank you, Madam. Um, President, I move the the journal. Uh, I can't find it. Hold on one second. I'm almost there. I move the approval of the May 3rd journal. Thank you, Councilor Gibson. I need a second. I see a, can a second from Councilor Senna. Are there any questions from any of the counselors? 
If not, um, we will move on to our vote. Uh, Ms. Ortega? Councilor Bassan? Yes. Councilor Benton? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Councilor Gibson? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? Yes. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Nine zero. Thank you, councilors. The journal passes on a nine zero vote. So we will move on to communications and introductions. Are there any changes to the letter of introdu introduction? Councilor Gibson and Davis regarding R162. Thank you, Madam uh, President. I move that the rules be suspended for the purpose of introducing R162 and placing it on the June 7th council agenda for a action. Uh, one six, R162 is establishing complete street pedestrian and street streetscape improvements on San Pedro Drive from Central Avenue to Haynes Avenue as a priority for the city of Albuquerque. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Um, do I have a, I have a second from Councillor Davis. Um, Councillors, are there any questions? If not, I would just advise the council that we need two thirds of the council to vote on this. And that's what is required to move this forward. So with that, Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero. Thank you, councilors. R162 passes on a 9-0 vote. Um, the next item is sponsored by myself and Councilor Gibson. This is 0-64. Uh, Councilor Gibson, would you like to introduce this? Sure, thank you, Madam President. I move the rules be suspended for the purpose of introducing 0-64 and placing it on the June 7th council agenda for action. 064 is amending the traffic code to clarify the placard or license plate requirements for use of disabled parking spaces. Thank you, Councilor Gibson. I offer a second on that. And I would also mention uh, councilors before we, well, is there any discussion, first of all? Any questions? Apparently not. So, councilors, I would mention, I would uh, advise that we need. Two thirds of the councilors uh, vote on this in order for it to be placed on the agenda. Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero. Thank you, Councillors. 064 passes on a 9-0 vote. And thank you, Councillor Gibson. Um, I would like to move on to our next order of business, which is 065. Councillor Benton. Thank you, Madam President. I move the rules be suspended for the purpose of introducing 065 and placing it on the June 7th Council agenda for action. 065 is authorizing the issuance and sale of City of Albuquerque industrial revenue bonds for El Encanto Incorporated in the maximum principal amount of 10 million to provide funds to finance equipping of a manufacturing facility authorizing the execution and delivery of an indenture and lease agreement bond or other documents in connection with the issuance of the bond and the project. Thank you, Councillor Benton. I have a second from Councillor Davis. Are there any questions, councilors? No, any questions? So, so that, that, I'm um, sorry. Um, was okay. there a question? Okay, okay. Uh, councilors, I'll just advise us that we need two thirds of the councilors present to vote on this in order for it to pass. So well, I will move on to Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero. Thank you, Councilors. 065 passes on a nine zero vote. We will move on to the next order of business, which is R163. Councilor Pena. 
Thank you, Madam President. I move that the rules be suspended for the purpose of introducing R-163, referring it to the Finance and Government Operations Committee. R-163 is declaring the City Council's support of the Route 66 Centennial Celebration in 2026, directing the Arts and Cultural Services Department to begin the planning process for a Centennial Celebration event in the City of Albuquerque. Thank you, Councillor Pena. I have a second from Councillor Senna. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions, Councillor. This, uh, I would also advise the Council that we need two thirds of the Council to vote on this for, in order for it to pass. So I would go to Ms. Ortega. Councillor Bassan. Yes. Councillor Benton. Yes. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Pena. Yes. Councillor Senna. Yes. Councillor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero. Thank you, councillors. That passes on a nine zero vote, and that is R163. Councillor Gibson, I need a motion for approval of the letter of introduction. Thank you, Madam President. I move approval of the letter of introduction. I have a second from Councillor Senna. And um, so we will move on to Ms. Ortega. Councillor Bassan. Yes. Councillor Benton. Yes. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Pena. Yes. Councillor Senna. Yes. Councillor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero. Thank you, councillors. The letter of introduction has been moved on a nine zero vote. Uh, we will move on to reports of committees, councillors. Councillor Bassan. Thank you, Madam President. The Finance and Government Operations Committee met on Monday, May 10th and reports out the following items. In the matter of EC 323, that it be approved. In the matter of EC 320, EC 321, and EC 332, that receipt be noted. In the matter of EC 322, that it be approved and be acted on at the meeting at which it is reported. In the matter of O59, R151, R155, R156, R158, and R159, that they do pass. In the matter of O61, that it do pass and be acted on at the meeting at which it was reported. In the matter of R152, R153, and R154, that they be without recommendation. I make a motion to accept the committee reports. Thank you, Councillor Bisson. I have a second from Councillor Senna. Um, I need a motion to accept the committee reports. Thank you, Madam President. I made that motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, we will move on to the vote. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bassan and Councillors. That passes on a 9 0 vote. We will move on to our Public Safety Committee. And I defer to uh, Councillor Senna. Thank you, Madam President. The Public Safety Committee met on Tuesday, May 11th, and reports out the following items. In the matter of EC 330, EC 331, and EC 335, that they be approved. I make a motion to accept the committee reports. Thank you, Councillor Senna. You have a second from Councillor Bassan. Uh, I will move to Ms. Ortega for the vote. Councillor Bassan. Yes. Councillor Benton. Yes. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Pena. Yes. Councillor Senna. Yes. Councillor Borrell. Yes. Nine zero. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, the Public Safety Committee report passes on a 9-0 vote. Councilor Jones. Thank you, Madam Chair, Madam President. Uh, the Land Use Planning and Zoning Committee met on Wednesday, May 12th, and reports out the following item. In the matter of 060, that it do pass as amended. I make a motion to accept the committee report. Thank you, Councilor Jones. We have a second from Councilor Benton. So I will move on to Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Pena. 
Yes. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Yes. 9 0. Thank you, Councilors. The Land Use Planning and Zoning Committee report passes on a 9 0 vote. I will move on to Councilor Pena. Thank you, Madam President. The Committee of the Whole met on Thursday, May 13th and reports out the following items. In the matter of O50 and R157, that they be without recommendation and be acted on at the meeting at which they reported. In the matter of R147, that it be without recommendation as substituted, as amended, and would be acted on at the meeting which is, it is reported. In the matter of R148, that it be without recommendation as amended and acted on at the meeting at which it is reported. I make a motion to accept the committee reports. Councillor Pena and I have a second from Councillor Senna. Um, we will move on to the vote. Ms. Ortega. Councillor Bassan. Yes. Councillor Benton. Yes. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Pena. Yes. Councillor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero. Thank you, Councilors. The committee that committee report passes on a nine zero vote. So with that, we will move on to our next order of business, which is deferrals and withdrawals. Councilors, do we have any deferrals or withdrawals at this time? I have an item from Councilor Pena and Councilor Benton for 061. I don't know if Councilor Benton wants to do it, but oh Councilor Benton, did you want to take this? No, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, 061 is amending the City of Albuquerque Charter, Article 13, repealing voter ID requirements for municipal elections. I move deferral until June 7th. Thank you, Councillor Pena. Do I have a second? Councillor Benton offers a second. So on this item, we will need to vote. Ms. Ortega. Councillor Bassan. Yes. Councillor Benton. Yes. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Pena. Yes. Councillor Senna. Yes. Councillor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero on the deferral. Thank you, Councillors. 061 has been deferred until June 7th. That vote was nine to zero. We will move on to our consent agenda. Are there any changes to the consent agenda? And I would just mention for individuals on tonight's consent agenda, who are being appointed to serve on boards or commissions and who may be watching from home, we thank you for your willingness to serve the public. Uh, Councilor Gibson. Madam Chair, I move approval of the consent agenda. Thank you, Councilor Gibson. And I see that there's a second from Councilor Bassan. So I would need a vote on this item, uh, Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero. Councilors, the consent agenda passes on a nine zero vote and we will move on to announcements. And uh, I will make the first announcement. There will be a city council study session on Monday, May 24th at 10 a.m via Zoom video conference. And Councilor Bassan. Thank you, Madam President. There will be an Albuquerque Bernalillo County Government Commission meeting on Thursday, May, 20, uh, May 27th at 5 p.m. via Zoom video conference. Thank you, Councilor Bassan. Um, there are no public hearings scheduled this evening, Councilor, so we will move on to approvals. And our... Um, our only our first and only uh, approval is 032 was which is the selection of our city auditor and i am going to call on miss yara to give an overview and some instructions thank you Mad madam president uh we received three names from the accountability and government oversight committee uh for um recommendations to fill our city auditor position, which has been vacant for over a year now. Um, we got three names sent down in the order of preference from the AGO committee. They are Miss Nicole Kelly. She is currently the acting city auditor and acting inspector general. Uh, Mr. John Cashman and Mr. Rory Galter. Um, 
their a summary of their qualifications and their resumes are included in the, the OC and the information um, in back of the legislation. Um, normally, when we're in in-person meetings, we, we allow the counselors to vote on their preferences in a, using a ballot method. Each counselor has to provide their top three or in order ranked in their preference. Because we are doing this virtually, we are asking that the counselors send an email to Ms. Ortega with their, their uh, ranked votes. Um, once we're done here, we're actually going to table this so Ms. Ortega can tally those votes. Um, if the counselors have any questions for the candidates, um, Ms. Kelly and I believe Mr. Cashman are on with us. However, Mr. Galter was not able to join us. Um, if you do have a, a question that would um, maybe delay your decision on this, we can get him here at the next meeting um, if, if you need to defer it. So um, if you have any questions, uh, I can answer them. Thank you, counselors. Uh, all of that information should have been provided in your on your iPads regarding their resumes, et cetera. I saw Councillor Gibson had a question and then Councillor Harris. Uh, I was going to ask if uh, we could give each of the uh, present candidates just a couple of minutes to uh, introduce themselves and uh, or Absolutely, Councillor Gibson. I, I agree with you. We could maybe give them about two minutes um, each. Uh, Councillor Harris, did you have a question also? Uh, yes, just one. Um, I was wondering, did Mr. Galter uh, indicate why he could not attend even a virtual meeting? Yes, he actually had a, a, a scheduled audit engagement that he couldn't get out of today. So, okay. yeah. Thank you, counselors. Um, so we will um, ask uh, Julian to let each of these individuals into our uh, waiting room. Are they already there? Thank you, Mr. Uh, Moya. So um, I have, um, I'm not going in any particular order. I have Nicole Kelly, John Cushman, and Rory Gelter on my script. So I'm just going to follow that order. Nicole Kelly, are you in? Uh, you have yes. two, Madam. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Madam President and Counselors. Um, my name is Nicole Kelly. Um, I'm currently the acting city auditor and acting inspector general, in addition to um, the audit manager. I have a BS in accounting and an MBA in finance and started my career um, with KPMG in San Francisco, working primarily in the banking and venture capital sector. Um, until one day, um, I got a call that the San Francisco uh, Municipal Transit Agency needed help on their single audit, and that kind of sparked my interest in the public sector. So eventually that led to my leap um, to the uh, City of San Francisco's Internal Audit Department. Uh, I was hired as a, an audit supervisor, quickly was promoted to uh, a manager, lead manager, and then ultimately uh, a deputy, deputy director. Um, as deputy director there, I oversaw a team of over 30, um, led dozens of audits and reviews. Um, three of those audits were nationally recognized by the Association of Local Government um, Auditors um, and received a Knighton Award for Distinguished Audit. Um, just like Albuquerque, San Francisco has a very engaged constituency. And as de uh, deputy director, I was tasked with communicating with members of the public vendors, city staff, administration, and elected and appointed officials. Um, and after our, our second daughter actually turned one, we began really considering moving to Albuquerque to be closer to family, um, because in the Bay Area, we, we actually had none relatively close. Um, and now, coincidentally, we live on the same block as my in-laws. So we're, we're rooted, we're embedded here, um, and our kids are going to school here, and we, we've loved it. Um, so when I accepted the position with the city of Albuquerque as the audit manager, almost the entire team had left. So I was tasked with rebuilding, rebuilding the, the almost the entire team. So within six months of my arrival, um, we became fully staffed uh, 
with the exception, of course, the, of the city auditor. Um, and I'm, in, I'm really proud to say that the entire team is still here and that we've made it through a, a pretty um, difficult period, which I'll get to. So as you may know, Ken Bramlett, um, the former inspector general and acting city auditor unexpectedly passed away in December. Um, and I was asked by the AGO committee to assume the acting city auditor and acting inspector position along with my current you role. You have to wrap it up. Your two minutes are almost up. Um, yeah, so basically it's given me a unique lens to see both, both offices, um, to see how they work, to, how they can better work together. You know, audits lend themselves to investigations and vice versa. Um, I, in San Francisco, the CIA or CPA exam was not a requirement for the, for the city auditor. It is here, and I knew that. So when I, when I came here, I started um, uh, the CIA and CPA process. I passed two of the three CIA exams. I was scheduled to take the third, um, but I, you know, I had to prioritize my, my, three, my three current positions. So it took a, a bit of a back burner, but I um, plan to take the third in June. I'm currently also enrolled in UNM's CPA exam course and um, completed the regulation section with uh, NA. So um, trying to get back on track here, I'm looking forward to the inspector general position being filled to free up some of my, my study time. So thank, thank you. you. If there's any questions, Holly, um, we appreciate your being with us. And I would just mention uh, we will move on to our next um, candidate is John Cashman. Mr. Cashman, I'm going to give you three minutes because I extended Ms. Kelly's time to three minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm John Cashman. Sir, you're uh, going to need to turn your volume up a bit. And I think you just muted yourself. There you go. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, uh, great. Um, I've applied for the city auditor's position. I am a governmental auditor. I've been a governmental auditor for approximately 30 years. I've held, every, I've held uh, all different levels of positions from a staff auditor through director of internal audit I've actually established three different uh, internal audit units and, uh, re and resurrected a, a fourth one uh, during my career. Um, I've had, uh, I've worked with all uh, different levels of staffing uh, from uh, a 10 person shop down to uh, myself. So uh, I've got a, a wide variety of experiences. I've done financial compliance information systems, um, some contracting audits. Uh, I've worked in, in uh, very large local governments. I've worked for the, uh, the government of the District of Columbia, which is Washington, DC. I've also worked for the city of Boston. Uh, my last position was as the director of internal audit for San Diego Unified School District, which was the second largest school district in California. Uh, I've had a, uh, I hold a uh, two bachelor's degrees, one in economics, the other in business administration. I have a master's in uh, an MBA in finance. I am a certified uh, internal auditor, a certified government financial manager, uh, a certified inspector general auditor. I have passed the CPA exam, um, although the, in Massachusetts, they are very strict about the experience requirement. So I'm looking for some place where I can uh, become certified. Um, and, and, you know, meet their experience requirements. Uh, other than that, uh, in my, uh, in setting up audit, audit departments and working with my staff, I've, I've told them that there probably isn't an audit that I will ask them to do that I haven't, uh, in some manner or fashion, I haven't done in two or three, uh, at least two or three different times. I enjoy doing performance auditing. That's why I like governmental auditing. Um, I've had experience with the single audit. Uh, I'm one of the old gray hairs. Uh, I uh, was with the city of Boston when they first implemented the single audit back in 1986. So I've had a long career with single audit. Uh, I've also had a long career doing uh, governmental auditing work. I've worked with, uh, I've run um, administrative investigations uh, and uh, eff effectively become an inspector general for a couple of different agencies. 
I've also had the experience of working with both the FBI and other federal agencies when I was with DC, um, because a lot of the federal inspectors general would also come in and, and look at uh, look over our shoulder at, at uh, certain points. Um, in DC, the thank U.S. You, Attorney's I think Office. That your three minutes are up, but thank okay. you so much. We appreciate thank you. you. Um, so we will um, we will move these individuals probably back into our waiting room. And then I would like some discussion from counselors on how would you, how you would like to proceed. Can we move them back? Madam I'll Chair, watch the meeting. Madam President. Councilor Gibson. Um, I, I think that uh, our clerk did a really good job in um, giving us some direction on this to just send emails and, or I'm sorry, uh, it was our director, sorry. Uh, Yara, yeah, I, let me just repeat that we would each counselor would uh, rank your first choice, second choice and third choice and send an email to Miss Ortega if we decide to move forward tonight or we can table this until our next meeting, whatever the council's um, counselor Senna. I'm sorry, Councilor Gibson, you didn't finish. Yeah, let, let me just I, I would really. Uh, I, I, I think these candidates really kind of need to know. This has been a very long process for them. And uh, I, I prefer that we, we do the vote and um, uh, tonight and make the decision to let them know. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Harris and then Councillor Senna. Yeah, I agree. I think we should go forward. This uh, position has been vacant. Um, we seem to have, now this time it was a death, we seem to have some turnover in the IGs and. And I'd like, uh, I think we need to be fully staffed and I'd like to mop away. Councilor Senna. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Well, I was going to, you know, really emphasize in fairness um, that the other individual who could not attend today's meeting, um, but it sounds like the uh, sentiment of council wishes to proceed forward uh, but I do want to note that, you know, I certainly looked over um, each individual's resumes before this vote um, just to ensure fairness um, as part of that process. So thank you, Matt. Okay, hey, counselors, um, I'm going to ask that each of you send a, oh, I'm sorry, I see Councillor Davis had a comment. Uh I was agreeing with you, Madam uh, President. If you didn't have a motion, I was going to make a motion that we table this matter till later in the meeting until we can receive our votes. So, however you need it. Thank you, Councillor Davis. I will accept that motion, and I will ask each councillor to send an email to Miss um, Ortega of their rank choice, and then we will. Uh, I will ask for a second on Councillor Davis's motion. I see a second from Councillor Harris. And um, Ms. Ortega, would you take the uh, vote? Yes, Councillor Basson. Yes. Councillor Benton. Councillor Benton. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Pena? Yes. Councillor Senna? Yes. Councillor Borrego? Yes. Eight yes. Councillor oh, Benton. Thank you. Thank That's 9 0 to table. Thank you, Councillor Benton, for joining us. And um, that passes on a 9 0 vote. So, Councillors, once you have voted and the staff has tallied your votes, we will uh, bring this item back onto the table. So uh, with that, we will move on to final actions. And uh, I will go to Councillor Benton on 018. Thank you, Madam President. I will uh, move a due pass on 018. This is imposing a municipal gasoline tax of two cents per gallon, conditional upon voter approval dedicating the revenue generated by the gasoline tax to rehabilitate public streets and roadway systems for the benefit of the city. I'll second that motion. And Councillor Benton, um, 
before I accept that second, um, this is amended from November 20th, 2020. Correct. Uh, so I just want the council to be clear on that vote. And Councilor um, Jones, I accept that second. So with that, are there any questions? I see Councilor Davis may have a question. Thanks, Madam President. I just want to uh, make a quick question, maybe to the sponsor, I guess. Um, and I know you and I had a chance to talk about this earlier today. Um, I'm, I'm fully in support of this. I, uh, I'll actively help our voters, uh, encourage our voters to support it. Uh, and I think it's so important that we include all of these other provisions. But I also wonder if between here and there, we ought not consider to include things like electric vehicles and others um, that are becoming increasingly popular, including our city buses and other things. Um, I'm totally down for not including them in the tax because I think they're providing an environmental impact. But I think in the future, our city ought to take a look at how we can uh, raise revenue for roadways that doesn't rely on fossil fuels, because I think we're seeing that uh, declining uh, revenue source. That said, uh, I think our fossil fuel vehicles ought to pay a little more uh, to cover the cost of that unless they're willing and able to switch over when that time comes. So thanks for bringing this and I support that. I'm sorry, Councillor Davis. Um, did you, were you closing on that? That's all. I just wanted to make a comment that I want us to think about in the future for future revenues, but this is important for now and I support it. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Gibson and then Councillor Benton. Or Councillor Benton, did you want to? No, it, please, uh, Councillor Gibson, go for it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam um, President. Uh, so my question is, um, for, well, first of all, let me say this, that I, I am also in support of this, uh, although I nobody likes to raise any kind of tax at all. However, um, you know, when was it? About a year ago, or a year and a half ago, our um, Mr. Tom Menacucci did a, a really a very excellent um, analysis of, of where we were, or a, a report of um, an analysis of what where we were in our um, road projects, street and road projects, and it was a it was a wake up call to me. We, uh, it, it, the way we're doing it is not going to work. We're not going to be able to uh, to maintain our roads or build new ones the way we're doing it. So, uh, given that, uh, I my question is to the counselor: if there is any plan to um, inform to, to to inform voters about about the necessity for this and how important it is for us to maintain safe and, and uh, uh, good roads in the city. Madam, Madam President, if I can respond and that was addressed to me. Yes, Councillor. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the needs of the roads in the city, as you point out, uh, via Tom Manacucci, who, who we we're fortunate to have on our city council staff. Um, you know, th this is a, a citywide, these are citywide needs, of course. And um, this is a small bite of the apple of the backlog of road rehabilitation projects that the city has before it, which has been estimated the last time I looked it was in the $20 million range. So we're not going to make much of a bite out of that apple that rotten apple uh unless we identify all the reasonable revenue sources now it, just to answer Councilor davis absolutely we that's something that has to be changed in the future this is something that is before us now it's authorized by state law we have the capacity to to do these two cents and um Excuse with you. that it's estimated that we would bond, I mean, in the current economy, probably between, I'm just going to be conservative and say between 12 and $17 million, somewhere in that facility, vicinity with it, with this predictable revenue source. I would say, I'd say it's a declining revenue source, but, but it's least predictable in the near future. So. Well, uh, Councilor, if I may, Madam President, just to follow up. But, but the question is, you want, you want you to be on screen. Oh. 
is this, um, in, in cities where they have been able to pass such uh, an, an increase uh, by, um, uh, by a voter approval, yeah. it's been preceded by, uh, you know, pretty well thought out, intense campaigns, informational campaigns. So do we have any, do you, I mean, we don't have a whole lot of time, obviously. This is the fifth month and we vote in the, what, six months from now. So is there any plan or any uh, revenue source or any um, uh, uh, money source, funding source to fund such a, um, uh, an informational campaign? Well, uh, if I may, Madam President. Go ahead, Councillor. I, I was thank waiting for you to respond. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm just asking for recognition, but thank you. Uh, but Councillor Gibson, uh, you know, I will uh, pitch in towards, I've got a little bit of a discretionary informational uh, campaign type of money to where I could at least put out information about it. As far as some advocacy campaign, uh, I don't know that there is one. I think the advocacy campaign, I would hope, would be on the part of these counselors present that we say, hey, we're trying to improve the infrastructure of this city. It's, you know, we've got a multi-million, you know, uh, 15 million or more backlog of projects. So um, this is a revenue source that, let's face it, the daily swings in the cost of gas are two cents. This is like nothing within the spectrum of what we pay for gas, literally nothing. I don't think there's any reason why, why we should be concerned about it, especially since the voters will decide. The voters will decide this. We don't have to get involved and say whether we like it or not. Let the voters decide whether this is worthwhile to maintain our roadways in the city. Um, furthermore, I just wanna clarify before we go on with the discussion, this, I would propose, would not be on this ballot this year. This will be on the general election ballot, is my proposal. We have to pass that as a separate uh, resolution if we, if we approve this. So, thank you. Um, Councillor Jones and then Councillor Bassan. But I, before I go on to Councillor Jones, so you said this would not be on this ballot. This would be on next year's ballot? Matter. Madam President, that's the decision of this council. I, I'm prepared to put forth the resolution, a ballot resolution for the general election ballot in 22. Okay, thank you, Councillor thank Benton. You. Councillor Jones and Councillor Basson. Thank you, Madam President. And thank you, Councillor Benton, for clarifying that this would go to the voters. That's essential. I think, um, as you all might imagine, I'm not a great advocate of raising any kind of taxes, but this is one of the most fair that I've been speaking about publicly for five years at least. Uh, as our expenses go up in the city, the, the cost to maintain and add new roads to our city is astronomical. Uh, it's only fair because I believe there is a fair in some taxing. And uh, sometimes we don't look at fair. We just look at the greatest number of people who will pay it. But those of us who use our vehicles, those of us who choose not to use public transportation, this is also one of the greatest ways to get people to use public transportation, which is, as I get older, will become far more appealing. But <laughs> this, is, this is a fair tax. It's not a huge tax. No one, as Councillor Benton said, no one will never ever know that it came out of their pocket. And as I've watched the prices at the pump go up, I mean, from time I fill up till I fill up the next time it's gone up five or 10 cents, I still fill up. It is who we are. I still drive my car. This is very fair and equitable. And Councilor Benton, thank you for bringing it forward. And of course, I will support it. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor Jones, Councilor Basson. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor Benton, for making sure to come up with some kind of proposed solution that ultimately will go to the voters because I think that that is the key point there is we're here to represent all of them and they are the ones that need to decide. So I am in support of this being that the voters will be the ultimate decision makers. Thank you. And then we'll take a break. Councilor Masson, um, are you through? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay, Councilor Pena. Thank you, Madam President. Can I ask, I don't know whether the staff or what, but the way the legislation is currently written, it's written to, um, it could potentially go on, on this next election. Is that correct? I'm not in president and counselors. So the guidance that we received from the city clerk um, basically says that the council can decide uh, to which election it should go the next local or to the general election. So if this passes tonight is the, the decision of the council as to which uh, next election it will go to. So Madam President, um, Ms. Yara, so potentially it could still go on this next upcoming election. Is that correct? Uh, Madam President and Councilor Pena, yes, if the council uh, would so move that in a future bill, uh, directing it to go to that that local okay. election. Yeah. I just wanted clarification. Thank you. Councillor Benton and then Councillor Senna. Just quickly to respond to, to Councillor Pena. Yeah, I I, I I will support another councillor if they want to put it to the general election in 22. I think that's the right place for it to be. I think that's the most turnout election. And so the largest representation would be seen from that vote. Uh, and and um, yeah, we can, I mean, I don't know that it would, it's not gonna be amended for electric, electric vehicles. That's a larger issue that needs to be dealt with. But, but in terms of this, we could go ahead and, and get forward with it and at least be able to mine some of our railways. Let's face it, you know, I mean, the vast majority of the vehicles are going to still be internal combustion vehicles. So um, uh, in the short term, obviously we, we have to, to charge for roadway use in the long term. Thank you. Councillor Senna. Thank you, Madam President. You know, I think that there's, we've, we've raised this issue a few times now uh, for the clarification as to when uh, it would go onto the ballot. And I think that um, I would like to ask the sponsor to just amend section three now to state that um, it would go on to um, the general election um, rather than stating, um, you know, we have the ability to, to draft that resolution or not. Um, that's a, a friendly amendment I would like to. Uh, uh, Madam, Madam President, if the staff agrees that we can do it this way, then I certainly support that. Ms. Yara, Mr. Melendres, would you like to weigh in? Yes, Madam President, uh, that would be acceptable if the council were to make an amendment to that section. Uh, Ms. Ortega is pulling up the bill right now. Can we put the bill on the, that portion on the screen so we would know what, what it is we're amending? Madam Thank President, you. yes, we're getting that done now. And Madam wow. President, yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I fought myself that I didn't really, you know, even think my think this through in terms of, well, it can be either of the two elections. Let's, you know, everybody get used to it for a year and a half, and then we'll have a very informed electorate, and it'll be the largest electorate because it'll be the general. Okay, Madam President, we're getting that up on the screen for you all right now. Just give us one second. If I may, Madam President, uh, uh, Ms. Yara, would this, uh, so we would just amend section three and just amend this language that the city council calls for an election in the general election in 22. Yes, Madam President, Councillor Benton, I would uh, suggest that, um, let's see, we would uh, amend maybe line six and seven here to say that the council shall pass an election resolution submitting the question of levering the tax to the next, uh, is it municipal? General election in 2022. So we're telling ourselves we have to do that at the next meeting or whatever. Yeah. Is that yes. okay? Okay. Thank you. 
for that. Okay, we would consider that um, amendment number one. And um, so Councillor Benton, I guess that would be a motion to amend this bill. Madam President, um, if it's acceptable to the councillors, I think we can just uh, enroll that language that, that, that we just stated. Mr. Melendres. Madam President, councillors, uh, that would be a change from the introduce, introduced language in the bill. And so it's not something that the staff would be able to just okay. add. If that's the intent that you would like that added and changed, then it should be in the form of, an, of a motion. Okay, thank you. Okay, Councilor Benson. Uh, I, 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 would, I, would I would move the amendment as stated by Ms. Yara. Okay, there's a motion to amend the bill and that would be considered amendment number one. Do I have a second? Madam President, may I first ask that to be read back so the people watching us understand? We've talked about several things here. Let's read it back what the amendment is. Um, Ms. Yara, would you like to read that back? Yes, Madam President, uh, just give us one more minute. I, I failed to write that down as I was, right, I was speaking. Uh, so on, on line six and seven here in the page you're looking at, that's page two. Uh, we are going to amend the language to say instead, council shall pass an election resolution submitting the question of levying the tax to the qualified electors at the uh, next local election, <laughs> general election, sorry, at the next general election in 2022. And we have a motion and I believe Councillor Jones, was that a second? Councillor sure. Jones, did you get that? I'm sorry for them. No, that was fine. I just wanted to make it really clear. Thank you, Ms. Yara. Yes, that was the second, Madam President. Okay, we have amendment number one, um, and that is amending the language to read um, to the general election in 2022. And um, it looks like we have several questions, uh, Councillor Pena and Councillor Senna. I'd just like to ask the staff, Ms. Yara, uh, Mr. Melendres, um, so the <coughs> legislation identifying the projects that would come um, before, after, um, and when do we do that? Because that's where my concern comes in about, you know, where the projects are gonna be allocated. Madam President, Councilor, so I assume this would be treated a lot like our trans tax uh, revenues where uh, the council has to make an annual appropriation of the use of those monies. I would assume this would follow the same uh, procedure. And um, in that resolution that's drafted, can we add in this bill that it's with the equity tool to be used? Um, Madam President and Councilor Pena, I, I'm not sure this is the appropriate place to place that land language. I think that would be more appropriate in those annual resolutions or a standalone resolution for the tax itself once it's approved and uh, by the voters if, if that happens. Thank you, Ms. Yara. Uh, Councillor Senna. Thank you, Madam President. Looks like I'm having a little bit of internet issues. So if I do disconnect, um, I will have to reconnect. Um, but my, you know, emphasis on getting this onto the general um, election is really to include communities of color, um, which will be most likely, you know, having the older vehicles um, and bigger gas guzzlers. Um, and I guess, you know, I know that staff's still working on this and I may have to restart my internet while they do this. But if we can actually get the amended language um, up, because I know section three kind of indicates another resolution and kind of six and seven, I know that we're making those adjustments. So just so I can see it, um, I'm more of a visual person. Thank you. Uh, Madam President and Councilor Senna, I'm so sorry, but Ms. Ortega won't be able to get that done for you just right now. We're in the middle of this meeting. Um, I, if maybe you want a table that we can work on that uh, during the break, if you make that motion. 
if, if you do need to see that visual. Councilor Sen, if you'd like to make a motion to table that they can uh, draft it and, and then have it on the screen, then we can go back to our auditor. Um, our auditor. Um, Madam President, it's really up to, um, I mean, I'm, I'm having technical issues right now anyways, um, but it's really the decision uh, of the rest of the counselors. Um, even if it was email, that would be fine too. Um, or if it's pinpointing which sections were changing, um, would be appreciated, thank you. Um, Councilor Benton, if it's okay with you, I would like to make a motion to table this until- uh, uh, after Point of order, could I understand what the rationale for the tabling is? Um, I think Councilor Senna would like to see it in writing, the amendment. What amendment? The amendment to um, the language, the the the, the, language the, the, the one have. line, the one line of language. Before can we, we just complete. have that? Can we? Do we really have to table in order to do this? I would ask staff to propose that line of language and let us accept or reject that. Councilor Senna. Looks like Councilor Senna froze. Yeah, I, I don't understand the request, Madam uh, President. Uh, Councilor Benton, Councilor Senna was asking to see it in writing. She wanted to see the language of a written uh, amendment. To be clear, she wants to see in writing the one line of language. Can we do that, Ms. Yara, please? Councilor, uh, Madam President and Councilor Benton, yes, we are working on that right now. I just... We, trying to get the language so I can uh, get that to you. If you I, just I mean, give me a few I'm, minutes. I'm happy to everybody chat for 30 seconds while they figure out the language, if, if that's okay with everyone. Uh, if I may, Madam President. Councilor uh, Harris and then Councilor Gibson. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I don't think it's necessary to you know, to, to have it in writing, but it doesn't hurt anything either. So, I mean, we're just going to table it for a few minutes, do the IG vote or the auditor vote and come back. Um, I think it's a, um, you know, a privilege for... The staff is working on it, counselors. So if we can give them just a minute, they're working on the amendment. So, Madam President, Councilor I may, what, what might be the most expedient and, and um, more most accommodating for Councillor Senna is if maybe they just sent out an email with that. They're, that they're working on it, Councillor Gibson. Yeah, so if they might consider sending it out as an email, then we, we can all read it. And then I understand that Councillor Senna's uh, having a little bit of um, uh, technical problems, so she would be able to get it that way. Is and she not able to see it on the screen, in other words? Is that the problem? I think Councillor Senna is having some technical difficulties. I'm sure, yeah. Again. Yeah. So, well, Councilor, if, uh, she's, if she's frozen, then I'm sorry. You know, let's, yeah, sure, fine. Let's go ahead and table it. How are you guys doing? Okay, she, we're almost there, Councillor. So, give us just one more minute. And Councillor Senna is back on. Councillor Senna. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. It's one of the reasons why I'm asking it for it to be emailed um, because I'm only hearing every other word um, that is being stated because of my internet instability. Um, so it would be great for it to be um, emailed if possible. Councilors, um, we're going to do a screen share right now. Councilor, yeah. can you get? Can you hear us? Can you hear a screen share? We're going to do a screen share now. Councilor Bassan. Thank you, Madam President. Is there an urgency that we need to pass this, this immediately if it's so problematic and we all are going to agree on it, but we can just get it all situated and review it properly and then vote on it? With, um, I, I Madam President. Madam President, I just want to interject here. This bill has been out for a while, so after tonight it will die on expiration unless a motion is made to keep it going. And that, uh, I think, 
there, there's a deadline there if the council weren't to pass an extension. Okay, I mean, Madam President, Ms. Yara, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there that if it's this complicated to add in this small amendment, we can either work on it or pass an extension or what we need to do, but it looks like it's on its way. So maybe we'll be on our way too. Okay, councilors, we see the amendment, what we call amendment one. And um, on page two, line seven, after the word electors insert the council shall pass an election resolution submitting the question of levying the tax to the qualified electors at the general election in 2022. And there was so a motion and a so second moved. on the floor. I'll second it. There was already a motion and a second, Councillor. You already seconded it. So, Councillor Senna, you had asked that it be <clears throat> on the screen. Thank you, Madam President. That is much more clarifying uh, to see rather than hear every other word um, because of my uh, internet instability. So I appreciate the accommodations of council. Any other questions? If not, counselors, then we will, I don't see anyone asking any questions on the queue. Then we will go to Ms. Ortega on the vote for- uh, Ma Madam, Madam Chair, may I have a close, please? Yes, well, we're, not, we're not back on the bill yet, counselor. We're on the- Oh, amendment. we're still on the amendment. Oh my God, sorry, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, so we will vote on the amendment. Amendment Madam number one, Ms. Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Councilor Davis. Yes. Thank you. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. No. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. No. Amendment passes seven to two. Thank you, counselors. That amendment passes on a seven to two vote. So we will go back to the original bill, which is 018, Councilor Benson. I'll just close, Madam President, unless anybody else has anything else to say. Uh, Madam, Madam President, uh, I trust the voters. I think Albuquerque voters have always been pretty smart in their decisions when we put important decisions before them. So uh, I urge your support. Thank you, Councillor Benson. Um, so we will go back. Um, okay, we have a motion and a second on the original bill. And if there, unless there's any other discussion regarding this uh, bill, Councillors? There does not seem to be any other discussion, so we will go to the vote. Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Councilor Harris. No. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. No. Councilor Senna. Council Borrego. No. Motion passes on a 5-4 vote as amended. Thank you, counselors. So that motion passes on a 5-4 vote. So we, with that, we will move on, counselors. And we will move back to our uh, bill that was tabled regarding the auditor. We have the results of that um, OC32. Um, I make a motion that we accept Nicole Kelly as the, um, oh, I need a motion first to take it off the table. Councilors. Councilor yeah. um, Davis, motion to take it off the table. Do I have a second? Second. Councilor Harris, thank you. That second. All right, we will take a vote to take it off the table. Councilor Bassan. Yes. 
Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Councilor Harris. Councilor right. Harris. Yes. Thank, thank you, Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Barrego. Yes. Nine zero to take it off the table. Thank you, Councilors. I will move that we accept Nicole Kelly as the um, auditor selection uh, based on the results received uh, in ranked order. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Councilor Harris. Um, any questions? And the only one that saw those results was uh, Miss Ortega. And it is a public record at this point in time. So um, I have a motion and a second, unless there's any other discussion, we will accept um, that vote, Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councilors. And we will move on to our approvals at this point in time. Um, I'm sorry, where am I? Final actions? Okay, Councilors, um, we're going to take about a half hour break. So we will be back in about um, six um, six fifty. We will reconvene. <clears throat>
Good evening, everyone. This is the 33rd uh, meeting of the 24th Council, and we are coming back uh, from our break. Uh, we are under item number 14, which is final actions. And I'm just going to move the agenda just a little bit around only because we have our budget bills on tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, move E, F, and G to the front of the agenda in case any counselors have to leave uh, early. I would like to hear these items first. And with that, um, <clears throat> we will start with item E. Councilor Pena, CSR 147. Councilor Pena, are you back with us? There you yeah. are. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so I guess we're starting with E, Madam President, um, committee, committee sub R147 appropriating funds for operating the government of the city of Albuquerque for fiscal year 2022, beginning July 1, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2022 adjusting fiscal year 2021 appropriations and appropriating capital funds i move a due pass and we have several if there's a second we have several amendments um councillor senna seconded i think councilor i apologize madam President. thank you yes so um we have um if you don't have a packet we have items a through f of amendments and i'm going to start with um these will be numbered accordingly, one through whatever number that ending is. So do you want me to go through the amendments, Madam President? Councilor Pena, uh, yes, Your, yours is the first, second, and then we have Councilor Harris, Councilor Gibson, Councilor Davis, and Councilor Benton. So if you'd like to go through your amendments, Councilor Pena, then we will proceed. And that the first one would be numbered uh, amendment number one. Councillor Pena, you're muted. I think you're talking, but you're muted. Thank I you. apologize for that. My this on floor amendment number one. This amendment was introduced at the count at the committee level, and so um, for the sake of time, I think we're all familiar with it, and we do have it on on the uh, screen. So um, I will just read the explanation. And this amendment is needed. Councilor Pena, I'm I'm so sorry to interrupt. This is actually a new amendment to the operating budget bill. I I you might have gotten confused with the amendment for. The ARPA bill. Oh, okay. Sorry yeah, about this that. Is, yes, I yes. just want to explain this. This is actually a technical amendment that was submitted by the Office of Management and Budget to just correct some of our um, technical issues with our floor sub. Um, this does not make any changes to any of the allocations uh, that the council uh, looked at. That is correct, um, Ms. Piata. Thank you very much. I appreciate that correction. I was just eating my spaghetti and I lost track. <laughs> so this is a technical amendment. Um, do I have a motion? We had a motion and a second, I believe, from Councillor Senna. Um, any questions, Councillors? And it was up on the screen just now for the public. It looks like very just very grammatical and some technical amendments and, and amounts so that we would have a balanced approach. Okay, no questions and counselors, we will move to Ms. Ortega for the vote. Councilor Bassan? Yes. Councilor Benton? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Councilor Gibson? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? Yes. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Yes. 90 on Amendment 1. Thank you, Councilors. That Amendment number 1 passes on a 9-0 vote. And that I remind us that this is for CSR 21-147. We will move on to our next amendment, Councilor Pena. And this is also your amendment. So this would be floor amendment number 2. Thank you, Madam President. And I'm going to go to Ms. Yara for this one as well. 
Yes, uh, Madam President and Councilors, this is another technical amendment from the Office of Budget uh, Management and Budget. This actually helps us get closer to um, allocating the additional 1% cost of living increase for employees that Councilor Pena proposed in her floor substitute bill, um, committee substitute bill, excuse me. And so the Budget Office just helped us allocate that remaining 1% and there is attached, uh, uh, an attachment that goes along with this. I, I send it to you guys in your email and it would just help us appropriate that money um, at, to the right departments and program strategy. Thank Councilor you. Kenya, did you move this item? Yes, I did. So I Do moved I um, amendment number two. Thank you for that second. Any questions, counselors? Okay, with not, no questions, then we will move to Ms. Ortega with a vote. Councilor Bassan? Yes. Councilor Benton? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Councilor Gibson? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? Yes. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Yes. Nine zero on amendment two. Thank you, counselors. That passes 9-0, and that's amendment to number two. We'll move on to floor amendment number three. Councilor Harris. Uh, thank you, Madam President. This is uh, at the request of the administration to fully fund the Friedman contract. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll move a due pass. Thank you, Councilor Harris. And you have, a, and I will offer a second. And I guess I'll go to the administration because um, to their request in terms of uh, what this is all about. I mean, I can read it, but I think a little better. Um, is the administration available? Yes, Madam President. Oh. Uh, this amendment um, actually increases or properly uh, appropriates the solid waste management division for the increase in the recycling contract with Friedman. So last year we incorporated half a year. Uh, this year, we are incorporating the other half year, so they'll have a full year for the increase in the contract. So this properly appropriates. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Any questions, counselors? If not, we will move to Ms. Ortega on floor amendment number three for the vote. Councilor Bassan? Yes. Councilor Benton? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Thank you. Councilor Gibson? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? No. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Yes. Motion passes eight to one for amendment three. Thank you, counselors. That motion passes on an eight to one vote. And we will move on to floor amendment number four. This is Councilor Gibson. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, committee amendment number four um, I'll just read the, it's pretty simple. This uh, um, corrects an error that was made uh, during the, the, the budget process and it shifts $48,000 from arts and cultural community events program from a particular uh, event, the Albuquerque Pride Fest, and appropriates it to the Department of Municipal Development Speech Program purpose of this amendment is to allocate funding for the San Pedro Corridor and the San Pedro Corridor is from Central to Central Avenue to Interstate 40 and the funds will be used to plan, design, construct roadway, pedestrian and streets. We're, we're removing $48,000 from the Pride Fest um, line item. Uh, it had been 10,000 in past years that they didn't have one last year because of the pandemic, not gonna have one this year. So uh, that's the reason for this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Is there a second? Councillor Davis, thank you for that second. Councillor Basson. So any questions? Apparently not. We will move on to the vote, Ms. Ortega. Councillor Basson. Yes. Councilor Benton? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Councilor Gibson? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? Yes. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Yes. 9-0 on floor amendment number four. 
Thank you, Cancers. Uh, we're just hopping along here. Uh, we are on floor amendment number five. This is Councillor Davis. Thank you, Madam President. I hope to keep the momentum going here. Floor amendment number five uh, would add $100,000 from available fund balance to the Family and Community Services to develop and support a federally qualified health center or a QAC lookalike center with pharmacy services at the New Gibson Medical Center. Madam President, uh, we're still developing plans as we all know for the Gibson Medical Center, but this is one thing on which the community, uh, the administration and my office can all agree to communities uh, understands the need for increased uh, community health services at our new health hub. And, uh, and so this would allow us to, uh, to cite that and begin developing that to meet some of what we believe will be a good neighbor agreement for that facility. So I move floor amendment number five. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Any questions of the council? Doesn't appear so, so we will move on to the vote. Ms. Ortega? Councillor Bassan? Yes. Councillor Benton? Yes. Councillor Davis? Yes. Councillor Gibson? Yes. Councillor Harris? Yes. Councillor Jones? Yes. Councillor Pena? Yes. Councillor Senna? Yes. Councillor Borrego? Yes. Nine zero on floor amendment number five. Thank you, councillors. We're almost done with this packet. Um, we will move on to floor amendment number six. Floor amendment number six belongs to Councillor Benton. Councillor Benton. Thank you, Madam President. Um, and thanks for staff for putting that up. Um, and I do have a question for staff, but I'll read this anyway and intro uh, or uh, move it. So I'll move uh, floor amendment number six. This reads on page three after line 17, add the following of this amount, 250,000 shall be allocated to Albuquerque Street Connect for supportive housing vouchers. Thank you, Councillor Benton. Do I have a second? Councillor Basson, thank you for the second. Any questions of the council? And Councillor Benton, do you have a comment? Seeing, seeing no questions, uh, happy to answer any. But, but uh, just for those maybe watching, I think the council already knows about Albuquerque Street Connect, and I appreciate the support of the council over the years of this program, built up from one to two to now three street out outreach teams. They're out there uh, making contact with the most uh, frequent users of city services, in other words, including APD, AFR, and other services who are out in the streets. And um, they're doing a great job. If you can ask any officer who's been involved with them, APD officer, they'll tell you how, how much they appreciate this program, how much of a load it's taken off of them. They're now in the position to uh, start doing, uh, sponsoring housing. And um, so I think we need to support that ASAP. Uh, um, they're already funneling people into other housing programs, but to have them have that own capacity internally, I don't think it'll cover the whole thing, but but it will be a it'll be a value added to to what we uh, invest in this program. So I urge your support, counselors. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Benton. We appreciate you bringing this forward. Um, we will move to the vote. Ms. Ortega. Okay. Councillor Bassan. Yes. Councillor Benton. Yes. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Jones. Yes. Councillor Pena. Yes. Councillor Senna. Yes. Councillor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero on floor amendment number six. Thank you, councillors. That uh, concludes our floor amendments for CSR 147. I will go back to Councillor Pena. Thank you, Madam President. Um, uh, that was pretty uh, pain, painless. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. You know, just really trying to compile this budget. I think it was just really important to, you know, um, work with everyone to try to get as many of the items that they wanted in this packet. And as you can see by the amendments, it looks like we did a, a pretty good job in doing that. I just want to say that, you know, um, this, 
keeps the APD funding. There is, um, you know, I'm glad the administration, I was going to ask them at this point to provide clarification, but it has only been a, like a 5% increase. And there's a lot of good things happening in APD. That's one thing that I do want to say. Obviously, we have a ways to go and, and everyone who's seen what's happened with the DOJ, we still have a ways to go. But I really think that um, our, our law enforcement officers are really working hard, working hard to work from the community with the community, as you've seen this past weekend, and really working hard to try to um, get to the level of, of meeting the, the requirements for the DOJ. And I think us as counselors have been advocating for a long time, that, and we know the community's frustration, and I know that we've been frustrated, but um, you know, we, we have to abide by, by what they're asking us to do, and we're doing our best to do that. And you know, all of us get our regular updates on um, what we're hearing from the DOJ. And we're glad that there's progress, but we, again, we have a ways to go. And then I just wanted to say that, you know, the mayor put in a 2% cost of living. There's an added 1% with the city council's budget. So um, thank you counselors for that. And then also to the transit department and the free fare program, you know, this is something that we'd have liked to institute permanently. I'd like to uh, thank Councilor Senna for this. This is what was at her encouragement and I'm very supportive of that and, and Sunvan. So um, there's an additional $3 million um, to extend it for another year. And then there's um, several positions um, for that 1%. And then the substitute also includes um, Two million for non-reoccurring counselor-sponsored counselor programs and projects, and as um, Councillor Gibson just made an amendment, what happened is that you know we're having so many requests from these community events; they're always so expensive to hold, and we're always getting asked for additional money. So I thought it would be good, a good idea to try to get everybody at the same amount across the board, and hopefully that would be that would be helpful. And then. Um, um, I think that's about it. I don't want to read the whole thing that I have, but you know, I just want to say thank you. I uh, move a due pass of the um, committee sub R uh, one forty seven as substituted as amended. Thank you, Councillor. We have a second from Councillor Senna. Any other comments from Councillors? Councillor Senna, did you also have a comment, or was that just a second? It was a, a comment, Madam President, just to thank our uh, committee as a whole chair um, for doing um, a, a great job um, on this year's budget um, and working with many of us um, and with staff and especially um, under these uncertain times um, as Councillor Benton did in previous years through the pandemic, uh, Councillor Pena was uh, great to work with this year as committee of the whole chair. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Senna. Any other comments by councillors? I also want to uh, thank Councillor Pena because I know she stayed up late nights and early mornings working on this. And I also want to thank the staff because they worked hard to answer questions, uh, at least my questions. And I had a lot of them. Um, and then finally, the administration for working with us and working through our amendments. Um, we certainly appreciate it. And um, with that, um, if there are no other Madam comments, President, if I could close. Uh, Councilor Pena. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so I just wanted to thank, um, you know, the administration, our city council staff, they're amazing. I know we stress the heck out of them because, you know, we're trying to meet these deadlines and you know, we have a lot less staff than the administration does. So they work really hard and I just really appreciate all of them. And uh, again, the administration and obviously to, to the entire council because um, you guys are the ones that, that made the budget what it is. So thank you. And if I may add, Councilor Pena, I especially would like to recognize Stephanie Yaro because behind the scenes, she is trying to make all these things happen for us. And I mean, if the public doesn't see it up front, uh, but there's a lot of uh, changes and a lot of editing, a lot of, you know, trying to make things balance. And um, we very much appreciate you, Stephanie. So we already said it, but good luck to you on your next video. President Barrigo, thank you so much. And I just, I can't do this by myself. I have to thank all of council staff, including Jesse Muniz, all of the policy analysts, 
Mr. Manicucci, Ms. Taylor, Ms. Schultz, Mr. Hertz, Mr. Moya, Mr. Sylvan, everybody who's involved, Ms. Montoya for compiling all the information for us. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we will move on to Ms. Ortega for the vote. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Thank you. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. Yes. 9-0 on R-147 as substituted and as amended. Thank you, counselors. That passes on a 9-0 vote as substituted and as amendment as amended. We will move on to item number F, which is R-148. There are two amendments. Uh, Councilor Pena. Thank you, Madam President. R-148 is establishing one-year objectives for the City of Albuquerque in fiscal year 2022 to meet the five-year goals. I move a due pass and there are a couple of amendments and I don't know if you're gonna take it over from here, Councilor Perico. Yes, you have a second from Councilor Senna. Uh, and we will start with, with that. Uh, that was a motion to move R-148. We will move on to our floor amendments. We have two. And we will start with Councillor Basson. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Floor Amendment 1 is on 4, line 29, after the term previous fiscal year, insert the following, while also making efforts to increase the officer retention rate through existing or new incentive programs. I think that it's very important that we not only focus on recruiting, but we also focus a lot on retention when it comes to our police department. I, I believe that we are losing some very qualified uh, seasoned and veteran officers, and we need to do what we can to try to keep them around. Thank you, Councillor. I'll second that. And we had a little conversation about that on Saturday. So thank you for that. Um, any questions of Councillors? I don't see any. So with that, we will move on to Ms. Ortega. Councillor Bassan. Yes. Councillor Benton. Yes. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Councilor yes. Gibson? Thank you. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? Yes. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? 9 0 on floor amendment number one. Thank you, Councilors. Floor amendment number one passes on a 9 0. We will go on to our next floor amendment, which we will call floor amendment number two. Councilor Senna? Thank you, Madam President. I move floor amendment number one. Um, this number two, is, Councilor, that's floor amendment number two. two. Floor amendment number two, um, on, uh, on page two, after line 12, add objective three as follows. Objective three is to expand the city's language interpretation resources and prioritize the translation uh, of all city notices to members of the public to be responsive to city residents who have limited English proficiency. Thank you, Councilor. I'll second your amendment. Are there any questions from councilors? It does not appear that there are any questions. So with that, we will move on to Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. 9-0 on floor amendment two. Thank you, councillors. So the two floor amendments that we had both passed and we will move back to the original bill of uh, R-148, councillor as amended, uh, Councilor Pena. Thank you, Madam, Madam President. I urge your support to close. So I move um, R-148 um, as amended. And I will second that vote, Councilor Pena. Councillors, do you have any questions regarding R-148 as amended? Does not appear so. So we will move to Ms. Ortega for the vote. Councillor Bassan? Yes. Councillor Benton? Yes. Councillor Davis? Yes. Councillor Gibson? Yes. Councillor Harris? Yes. Councillor Jones? Yes. Councillor Pena? Yes. Councillor Senna? 
Yes. Thank you. Councilor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero. Thank you, councilors. I hope our next bill goes quite as quickly and smoothly. Uh, we will move on to uh, item number G, which is R157. There are uh, items A through L, um, amendments A through L. Councilor Pena. Thank you, Madam President. So I move uh, a due pass of R157, approving the request and authorizing the use of direct funding available from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for the purposes of pandemic response, pandemic recovery investments and support for, for vulnerable populations. Again, I move a due pass and we have several amendments. Thank you, Councillor. And we have a second from Councillor Senna. And um, we will, unless there are any questions, we will move on to our amendments. And you should have a packet, counselors, in your iPad. We will start with floor amendment number one, Councillor Pena. Thank you, Madam President. So this is the one that we had in the committee and that I am um, held off till today. So I'm going to just move it for the purposes of a vote. Um, I know we had some discussion about where the money would come from. So I think there's some other amendments coming down the, the pipe if this one does not pass. So I would urge you to pass and it's on your screen and I can read the explanation one more time. This amendment appropriates an additional 1 million for one-time hazard papers and essential employees and an additional three million for city vehicles reduces the local economic development act funds by one million reduces the conventions and a roof replacement and energy efficient efficient upgrades by one million and finally reduces penal um, city yard renovations and energy energy efficient um, upgrades by two million and and the reason i put these together is because i know there was discussion about the roof and about penal yards and yes they're both um projects that are are needed um um desperately needed, but we do not have a plan to actually use those dollars right now. So, you know, as we were, as we would get additional ARPA money, hopefully, as I think one of the counselors stated that, you know, that if that assessment would be completed, then we could move forward with those projects at that time. And for me, um, the reason that I wanted to put the city vehicles in here is because it's something that obviously I led in the city council approved to take um, city vehicles out of the ARPA money. And then um, finally, uh, you know, again, uh, Councilor Senna, leading, led by Councilor Senna, who is very passionate about, you know, adding hazard pay. That's the additional million dollars. And I think um, the administration had three million already. So that, or I think it was a million, this would bring it to four million. So um, with that, I urge your support of floor amendment number one. Thank you. Any comments? I would just mention that uh, in November, I had asked for $2 million for hazard pay um, back under, well, actually in October for the cleanup, but I didn't get it. So this is great. Uh, Councilor Davis. Thank you, Madam President. And I appreciate uh, the sponsor bringing this back after we had a very uh, spirited discussion last week and we've all had a chance to dig a little more. Um, but I just want to reiterate, look, I, I'm not opposed to, to hazard pay for our employees. I actually think, uh, like you, Counselor, you remember last year that we, we, we tried all kinds of different ways to, to appropriate federal dollars at that time to do that. Uh, that said, this would sort of be retroactive, and, um, and I'm much more interested in building back our city better, uh, to borrow somebody else's better used and, and more popular phrase, uh, and focus that efforts on future investments in our employees and in our city. Uh, we've added another 1% to the uh, pay raise for city employees above and beyond the mayor's recommendation. And I think that would have been probably the equivalent thereof. Um, and so I think we are doing that, but everybody worked during COVID. And I don't, I think it's, uh, it's hard for us to say that some people were essential, some people were not, or that they did additional hazardous duty. Everybody chipped in where they had to. <coughs> sort of the infamous example of transit drivers delivering senior meals, everybody did something different. Um, and so I'd love to help our employees. And I think we've done that in the regular budget, uh, but doing it uh, at the expense of vehicles for our police department, uh, essential uh, repairs to the convention center, quite frankly, that are already underway. And so pausing those gives me concerns. And more importantly, 
uh, LIDA dollars. We've used LIDA dollars to recruit some big jobs that are long-term investments in our community. Uh, Netflix, Orion, and much smaller ones, including things like uh, local Bueno Foods and others. Uh, I worry about taking money out of that long-term investment uh, for a retroactive piece. I think we've done that appropriately. And so for that reason, I would vote no, uh, not because I oppose the premise, but because I think we ought to look more forward than backwards. And I think those investments in the original bill do that. So thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Benton. Councilor Madam President, Benton? just to Madam President, just to respond before you go on to yes, um, yes. Councilman Son, um, not pay raises is cost of living. I just want to make sure um, for the record. So thank you. Good. Thank you for the correction. Good, good point. Thank you, Councillor Pena, Councillor Basson, Councillor Jones, and then back to Councillor Senna, or to Councillor Senna rather. Thank you, Madam President. I entirely and completely 100% agree with everything Councilor Davis just said. Thank you, Councilor Bassan. Councilor Jones. That's really scary. Um, I agree with Councilor Davis and what he said. And I think there are so many things here that are important. Uh, and, and what do we cut and what do we maintain and what do we make a little a little larger because it's essential to keep things moving forward we don't want to stand stagnant we want to move forward so because of that and councillor davis's wonderful explanation uh, i can't support this legislation thank you councillor jones councillor senna and then councillor benton thank you madam president um well you know i uh, as councillor pena stated and um you know Part of that is um, because of, uh, of my posting there and uh, her support. Um, for hazard pay, or um, as the American Rescue Plan states it, premium pay, this is specifically what this fund is for. Um, for those uh, who are um, interested and who have read 151 pages of the Secretary of Treasury's uh, guidelines of how to spend ARPA, premium pay or hazard pay is specifically stated there as to why uh, municipal governments um, should be spending this money. Um, it's on page 80 of 151. Um, and it, it's specifically stating that yes, uh, we realize that through the pandemic, um, even early on when we had a mass shortage, um, our essential workers uh, first responders were um, still working, um, even those who had a, a reduction um, were still working at some capacity, um, even if they weren't um, at their full scheduled time. Um, I have, of course, another amendment later to talk more about premium pay, and that's just kind of how passionate I am, um, because I do see how so many of our city employees really stepped up to the plate um, from dispatch, whom I sat, uh, did a sit along next to realizing how close they were um, and uh, how close they are to one another continually. And they posed a huge risk, even though they were not um, being public, um, even though um, they wouldn't you know, they were at times who, whoever did get sick, um, those that had to take on their shifts were seeing 16 hour days. So uh, I see that it is a critical investment to say that um, even though it is not in your job description, you took on uh, responsibilities above and beyond what you were asked for, uh, which was risking your life, which is something that we stated on council uh, earlier that we thanked many of our staff members um, for posing that risk. And that's what hazard pay is for, is that you had a, an unduly burden of posing a risk of getting potentially uh, a life-threatening virus um, throughout the pandemic, and you still did your job and went above and beyond that. Our transit workers, right, were working vaccine drives. They were doing a, COVID testing, so we should compensate them for that. Um, I know that we have many of our um, uh, amendments that we're talking about services, and we wouldn't have those services if it weren't for employees. 
So um, I can't stress it enough. It was these employees, it was these unions that actually got us to pass the American Rescue Plan. This is what the money is for, and that's how it should be used. So um, with that, I'm urging your support um, uh, for especially of hazard pay. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Senna. Do we have any other counselors that would like to say anything? Um, actually, as I mentioned, um, in October, I called the administration and asked them to look for $2 million for hazard pay for uh, many of the frontline workers. And I was not able to f get any money at that point because it was already committed mm -hmm. and I didn't want to sort of upset the apple cart. Um, and I was also looking for funding for nurses, but you know, um, I was told that we could really only look at internal um, funding because I understood what these individuals were, um, you know, I mean, the responses in their particular jobs, um, you know, and we talked about the buses and how, um, you know, they had to um, clean them extra, I mean, extra cleaning, extra, I mean, so many things that individuals, employees had to do that were above and beyond, I mean, just above and beyond because of COVID. And so that's why I am supporting this amendment because I just, you know, we've been talking about this, I have anyway, um, with the administration for several months now. And I didn't know that this funding was going to be coming down, um, but I'm glad that it did. And I, I completely support this, um, this amendment because I think that, that those individuals that were front and center um, deserve, um, you know, some recognition for the work that they've done. So with that, I don't see any other counselors in the queue. Um, I will move on to Ms. Ortega on the- Can I close, can I close Madam President? Councilor Pena, yes, absolutely. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, I think um, Councilor Senna said it very articulately, articulately um, that, that, you know, hazard pay is part of the whole ARPA and, you know, and I know that there is money already in there from the administration, but there's so many people, so many calls that I'm sure all the counselors have received from people who actually contracted COVID while working um, here at the city on the front lines, you know, the um, bus drivers, the the people who were distributing meals. And so, you know, I just think that, you know, from, from the council's perspective, a uh, million dollars is is a small amount. And, you know, the, the administration's contributed three three million to it. Four million is just a, a, a little bit more in comparison to the, what is it, 56, $59 million ARPA bill. And, and I just think it is important. And that's why I included it as part of this packet. And as you all know, um, with the ARPA, I, I really didn't make a lot of amendments. The only thing I did was that our commitment and then really the only adjustment that I'm looking at is big was um, Councilor Senna's um, added input. So um, with that, I would urge your support. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Pena. With that, we will move on to Ms. Ortega on the vote for floor oh, amendment. Yeah. Councilor Bassan. No. Councilor Benton. No. Councilor Davis. No. Councilor Gibson? No. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Jones? No. Councilor Pena? Yes. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Yes. Motion fails on a four to five vote. Okay, the motion fails on a four to five vote. Thank you, counselors. So we will move on to floor amendment number two. And this is Councilor Bassan. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to move floor amendment number two on page three, line 15, we'll remove the word main. This is simply to say that although I believe there are likely many things that need to be renovated, upgraded, and changed at the main station, there are also different substations throughout all of our city that are becoming more and more dilapidated and need some help. So I would like to have some flexibility in 
how this $5 million is utilized in making sure that we can repair the existing buildings and properties we do have with APD. Is there a second? There's a second from Councillor Davis. Are there any questions? Well, I'm sorry, I guess put... that mine was actually for a question. I'm not sure it was for a second. Oh, yours was not a second, Councillor? I'll second it. Councillor Jones, I'll second it. offering a second. So, Councillor Davis, go ahead. Uh, thank you, and I'm likely to support it. I just wanted to ask the sponsor a brief question, Madam President. Uh, for the sponsor or for staff, just to clarify, if we remove the word main, it would allow, I agree, it would allow it to be for all APD facilities, but the administration will still have the flexibility to use it where they see fit. And if they chose to all put it into one facility, say the main, uh, they could still do that. Uh, are you satisfied that this is okay for that flexibility? So, Madam President, Councillor Davis, uh, in the description, it says funds will for APD stations will be used based on need. I am hoping. I know that's, I know that's the key phrase there. Um, I'm happy to add something in that says something more, but I am hoping that the administration will recognize that, um, you know, I know that my area commands need some work. I've talked to some other counselors who have area commands that need some work. And I think that when we have parts of the building falling apart, that maybe we can look into fixing that too, instead of just doing one building. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I intend to support the legislation, but uh, I just want to be sure that uh, there's a process to figure out what our priorities are and maybe not all in one. Thank you. Any other questions of counselors? I, not? I, Madam, Madam President, if I could, I'm sorry, I didn't get my trigger finger ready fat quick enough, but but I would ask the sponsor, I mean, could we, could we add some language with, of direction in this, or is that inappropriate in here? Does that have to be done in another way to ensure that there's some, that something is proposed and then reported back to the council? Could that be enrolled into this if, if the sponsor was amenable? Madam President, Councilor Benton, I would be completely happy doing so and creating some, some formal language saying APD stations uh, and funding for it would be used based on need if council staff agrees that that is doable. <laughs> Ma Madam President and counselors, um, the council is able to insert any kind of designation or direction language into this bill that it sees fit. So, yeah, that's Madam just a friendly offer uh, and I'll conclude, <laughs> sorry to bother you. So Madam President, Councillor Benton, uh, what about if we were to say, uh, remove the word main, um, and then somewhere in there, however, staff works their fluid magic on it, say making sure, um, you know, APD stations would receive renovations um, based on need, and perhaps saying there should be, you know, a communication drop down to the council or uh, something for communication with us so that we are aware of what is planned. To be Counselor, may I suggest that wouldn't that already be inherent in their yearly reporting? I mean, is it is it necessary that they would have to give us a special report? I mean, we, we get by by yearly reports, um, you know, during budget and during cleanup, we can ask any question we'd like. So is it really necessary to add that language? Madam President, I think that hey, the we want to be transparent. We are being transparent because they are offering yearly reports. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam President, I believe that probably the intention behind this is sometimes we, it seems, tend to hear about the intentions or the plans that are already happening after they're already happening. Whereas if we were to be included in the loop beforehand, perhaps we can have a little bit more oversight on the checks and balances between the funding that's going to be spent and how it's going to be spent as is our duty by being the legislative branch. So what was the language that you were suggesting, Councillor? Madam President, it would be to um, include and add in there that funds for APD stations would be used based on need and communicated to the council prior to the work being done. And maybe if Ms. Yara can make it sound even better, that would be great, but that's where I'm going with it. Ms. Yara? 
I see Councillor Benton and Councillor Jones. Do you have language to offer, Councillors? Um, yeah, Madam President and Councillors, I would maybe suggest that under, on page three, under that line 15, um, we would insert the language, um, of course, change it to remove the word main from the, the title. And after that line suggests, I suggest saying something like, um, the police department shall provide quarterly reports of the priority needs of APD stations and their plans for uh, the use of this funding for these upgrades. Something like that, a quarterly report, does that do? Uh, um, would that be based on um, council districts? Because because I, I think the intent is based on need, so I, 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 I defer to this. Okay. I don't think it would be wise to do it based off of district. I think that there are certain certain substations that have more need than others. And so I don't think that that would already be setting this up for success, but whatever we do, I don't know if quarterly reports is even uh, worthwhile so much as maybe the work to be done at any of these stations based off of need is subject to council approval. Ms. Yara, can you amend that language to just not, not quarterly reports, but based on need? Yeah, so I guess I would then read um, under line 15, we would insert the language um, improvements shall be done after um, the department receives approval from the city council for specific projects. And Madam President, Ms. Yara, I do think it's important to put in there that funds for APD, it's in the explanation, but if we can bump that up to the actual amendment, it would say funds for APD stations would be used based on need or okay. would prioritize right. based on need. Um, okay. okay, we have two counselors in the queue. Counselor Bassan, they might have some questions for you. Um, Counselor Benton and Counselor... Um, Kenya. And I thought, Councillor Jones, did you have your hand up too? No. Finished. Okay. It was answered. Thank you. Councillor Benton and Councillor yeah. Uh Thank you. Quickly, uh, Madam President. Um, so I feel like somehow that I'm out in front of my hood on this one or something. Um, they started with this request for, for, the, for the main headquarters. It was totally ill-defined. If nothing had been designed. I don't know how much has been designed or an analyzed with any of the other commands for that matter. I know they all have needs and I can be supportive of putting something in there to kind of get take care of the emergency needs of, of, of every one of the command offices. But uh, that's what I'm, I feel like is lacking. I mean, how does APD determine their capital needs. Do they work with DMD on it or are they just completely on their own? I have a question for that question for administration. Um, Madam President. Uh, Mr. Royale. Madam President and counselors, um, first and foremost, um, we have the, uh, the police department um, that would love to describe to you what conditions exist at APD Maine as we currently know them. And, um, and would love to give them an opportunity to share some of that with you. But to answer your question directly, Councillor Benton, the Department of Municipal Development did an analysis of that facility and, um, and gave us a report that talked about the need to upgrade uh, many of these uh, computer systems, the facility itself, the mechanical systems. Uh, it's an old facility that has a lot of wear and tear and um, and we have a report that I believe we shared a couple of pages with you here recently, but uh, we have a complete report that was done uh, for us on the entire facility. But if you would indulge the administration, I think the police uh, uh, chief or his staff would like to address the concerns that they have. And then I may add one more point, if you don't mind. Um, the flexibility of uh, taking the word main out is not as a challenging of an issue. However, just the discussion that you all are having is then it becomes a, where, which substation do we prioritize over the others? Um, look, we know we'll get an opportunity to get additional funds down the road to fix some of the substations. And we will always err on the side of making sure the substations are working appropriately 
with any major issues that come up, such as computer systems, roofs, et cetera. So there's just not enough money to do them all at one time. But if you wouldn't mind, if I would uh, at least let the police department uh, uh, maybe address some of the concerns that we have, that you all have expressed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank Madam you, Mr. Royale. Um, I would like to move on to uh, either the chief or one of the officers that can address this issue. Madam President, uh, members of council, uh, this is Chief Medina. Uh, you know, one of the things we need is, uh, we need to upgrade the main. The main is a building that's over 50 years old. Uh, there's a new site, there's an old site. Right now, we've outgrown the old site. Uh, if anybody's up for a tour, we could take you and give you a tour of the inside of the facility. And I think most people would be uh, shocked at the condition of some of the parts of the old main and the conditions that some of our detectives working there are subject to. Uh, there's a lot of renovations that need to be done to the old part. We're well aware of where we want to invest this money. And if you're asking the chief of police, the deputy chiefs, and everybody who works at APD what is needed by APD, APD is saying we need to fix the main. Uh, there's a vast majority of our people are housed out of there for a lot of reasons right now, especially with the consent decree and uh, the detectives that are working force investigations, it's a consistent uh, moving of resources and trying to figure out where we're going to put individuals, uh, trying to fix up offices. We literally went to, uh, at one point in time, and got leftover furniture from a bank uh, that gave it to us. So we have, uh, I, we should have uh, detective uh, Burton on the main line. Let me see if we could get him on and he could explain it a little bit more, but the leadership of the police department is steadfast that we have to upgrade the main and improve the facilities there as our number one priority. <clears throat> James, are you there? Uh, I'm there, sir. So again, I'm Detective James Burton. I'm the facility manager for APD. So to answer a couple of the questions, specifically the main, uh, again, uh, to put in to Councillor uh, Benton's remarks, we are currently working on doing some assessments for all of our facilities. However, as of right now, the one assessment that we have done has been for the main. Um, we had walkthroughs today with uh, uh, Stacy Herrera, as well as administration from the department, as well as some uh, architects to start looking through different problems that we have in the building to start doing some assessments. Uh, we have a 20, just to name a couple of the problems, uh, we have a 20 year old plus HVAC system that has been long overdue for an overhaul. Uh, we've recently done some lighting improvements, but we have an entire other side of the building that still has lighting issues, heating issues. Um, we have electrical issues. Part of our lighting project was to clean up some of that. Uh, the DTI system is out of date uh, as, long, as well as just physical things such as our ceiling grid is dated and antiquated, causing ceiling tiles to fall down out of the ceiling onto desks and people. Um, we also have issues with some of our tiling that's gonna have to be renovated and removed if we start doing some of these renovations. So I, I don't wanna bore the council with tons of problems, but the main has many, many issues over years and years of just trying to band-aid different problems. Um, but to address the counselor's issues about other substations, we are in the process of doing similar assessments to the entire department just to ensure that we are looking at all of the individual needs of every single area. Thank you, sir. Um, we have some more questions. Um, we have five counselors in the queue, Councillor Basson. So if, if you please, I'd like to move on to Councillor Pena, Councillor Jones, and Councillor Benton, Councillor Davis, and then we will go back to Councillor Basson Thank you, Madam President. I was just going to say that um, 
with the added language, I don't think I could support the amendment. I just want to say that, you know, some of the criticism from the original um, bill that I had put forward was that there was no um, uh, assessment for the roof and hence why I wanted to kind of put it off until the next ARPA so that the assessment can be done. It seems as though APD has done an assessment on this and 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 those improvements are needed at the main. So I can't support the added um, language, just the removal of the main. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pena. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> I'm listening to this and I'm realizing why maybe six years ago, we attempted to develop a maintenance department and facilities maintenance department for the city of Albuquerque, which never was brought to light. And the reason being, you police officers are wonderful, wonderful people, and you are great police officers. You are not building maintenance people or our buildings wouldn't be in the shape they're in. No offense intended, but that's the way it is. We do now have the startup, as I understand, if Mr. Ryle wants to respond to this, of a maintenance facilities, a facilities maintenance kind of department with some really super sharp people in it. This is not a problem that can be solved in a PD by doing the main alone. Uh, in the years that I've been in council, we have worked diligently to upgrade and make the command areas that service district eight livable. The conditions that these officers have to have had to serve under are deplorable. The bathrooms are awful. The roofs are falling in. There's water leaks everywhere. We do not, let's face it guys, we do not take care of our facilities. And Mr. Ryle, we understand that that doesn't mean just APD. But um, I believe that the issue here should be before we allocate however many million dollars, that we should have a true actual assessment of what's needed. Piecemeal is no way to fix properties in this condition. Should Maine be first? Maybe, but if we don't have the money to do it, it doesn't matter where it sits in line if we can't do it. This isn't something that we just do because we think we're going to have some extra money in the budget. I would support the intent of this I do not support how it's brought forward. I think we need to do a real plan on all APD facilities to see what we really need. And it's not just you guys. Fire, fire has been in buildings that are freaking falling down around them. We don't look at this. We always do the sexy, fun things that we can do a press conference on. That is not what we should be doing as stewards of the taxpayer's money. We need to take care of our physical facilities and we're not doing it. Let's look at City Hall for heaven's sakes. I mean, it's it's been antiquated for way too long. So I don't support this, but I would support a way and a plan to get it started so that we can start working on these. Do I support fixing the stuff that our health hazard, mold being number one? Yes but not to put this kind of money in something that we really don't have a professional's opinion. If we had an engineer look at it, if we had multiple engineers, if we had an architect, do we know the condition of the roof? Do we know the true condition of what's it gonna cost? How do we do it? What order do we do it in? Do we go through and fix something, but then something that would then not, we would be messing with when we did the whole thing. I don't think we can ever afford to do the whole thing all at once but we can step, do it by steps and do it correctly. I don't think we do that with any of our physical facilities. So I can't support this, not because I don't wanna get it fixed, but because I think just putting a couple million dollars in a pot does not mean it's going to be done in a timely manner, nor correctly. If we don't do it timely, correctly, timely, in that order, we'll be throwing away some money. Thank you, Madam President, for that opportunity. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Uh, Councillor Jones? Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Councillor Jones. You're going to have an opportunity. There's three other councillors waiting. Councillor well, and Okay, and I'm happy to wait, Madam President, but I think what I have to say might actually expedite this. So it's at the will of the council if you want me to wait. Um, go ahead, Councillor Bassan, if you'd like to respond. 
Thank you. So uh, I, I think given the discussions that we have, the concerns that we have, it sounds like we're all relatively on the same page with this. So what I would really hope that we could consider in the further discussions that we're about to have is strike the word main and add in to complete an assessment of all of the substations and the main station and figure out from an outside professional what is needed where as far as in particular building maintenance and not just um, cosmetic upgrades. Madam President, may I just comment on that very quickly? Councilor Bassan, was that an amendment or are you considering a, a different amendment or? Well, Madam President, we've been talking about how to change up my current amendment and that's what this whole discussion has been about. So rather than Continuing with kind of the all of the various suggestions, take time. I think if someone else wants to do another amendment, but I'm willing to have, like move my amendment saying strike the word main and make sure to include that an outside agency does a complete assessment on all of the police building, including the substation. And because I know there's been one at the main, to Councilor Jones's point, what was, where is all of the who, what, when, where, why, and how of these other stations, we don't know what is in the most dire need. Because as we heard from APD just now, what we need at the main station sounds pretty awful. And like, we better fix that building that we own. What if there's a station- Hassan, can we hear from the other three counselors? Because they still have their hands up. Madam President, can I please finish? It's just to say that if the main station is in such dire need, what if some of our substations are even in worse? Thank you. Um, would you like to maybe draft another uh, version of your of your amendment while we hear from the other counselors? No, ma'am. That was it. Thank you, Madam President. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Benton. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, uh, Councillor Bassan, for bringing this forward and at least having us think about this. I also am, am very sympathetic to the argument made by Councillor Jones. Um, uh, you know, I guess, I, I, I guess I'll go back to the mayor's conference room. Was there a, a, you know, a complete architect engineer analysis of Maine of what's needed there? Or are we just picking a number out of the hat? Madam President and Councillor David, uh, Councillor Benton, the uh, Municipal Development Department did a thorough review of the facility. They walked through it with our uh, with our, our folks in DMD that do the architectural work for all your projects. Also with uh, folks from uh, IT who do all the work connecting all these departments to, uh, on the same communication systems and reviewed uh, the entire facility and created a a pretty thick document that I that we can send to you all that talks about all the shortcomings of that facility. Um, I would rest I rest assured to all of you that we didn't just pick this number out of the air and decide just to put it all in one building had we not done some assessment of the issues that we have to uh, fix in that building. It is one of the oldest buildings and Mr. Montoya is here as well if you'd like to hear from him he can give you uh, more detailed uh, information on, on their work as they uh, prepared this report for uh, for our consideration and funding. Ma Madam President, if I could, Mr. Rael, uh, you know, I appreciate that, that DMD took a look at this. Um, you know, this is a this is a building. This is like an architectural and engineering, you know, mechanical engineering which to my knowledge, we have none in that department. Maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm asking you whether we got a professional opinion from design engineers and architects about this project. My, and so I appreciate that, that, that DMD looked at it. I'm, I, but I, I'm not necessarily, and of course I haven't seen the report. When we're putting 5 million for in front of the council, you know, I'm sorry that I never saw this or it never crossed my desk or whatever, maybe it's my fault, but we should not be asked to put 5 million into a department that is being funded to the hilt. 
and and with the cooperation and 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 agreement of our citizens we're doing it too and us ourselves too and i i don't at all deny that the people who work in that building as as do the people that work in other buildings think that their building needs work and um and i'm not even denying this but the, my problem is the figure that's being put to it and i think we ought to be more methodical along the lines of what what Councilor Jones is talking about, you know, whether it's that department or some methodology at least, as opposed to just, okay, we got 5 million and we'll add some language and then we'll see what happens. Uh, so I, I, I also must say, and maybe I should ask the department or somebody, why is a sworn officer the facility management of APD? I want that sworn officer working out here on the beat in front of my house. You know, I don't, I don't understand the rationale that a sworn officer is a facilities manager of APD. Thank no, you, no. Counselor. Uh, Madam, Madam President, Counselor, uh, Counselor Benton, um, I, uh, Mr. Montoya is here. He can answer some of your questions in terms of the professional assessment of the facility that was done and um, and the other issue associated with the officer is a personnel issue that we can talk, um, you can talk with the chief about if you wouldn't, um, as it relates to his role and his assignment. Uh, uh, Madam President, you can't start with that. I'd rather hear that than, than what Mr. Montoya, I mean, I, I don't deny that Mr. Montoya and his department tried their best, but they're not in the business of, of cost control, in my humble opinion. Those, that's the that's the responsibility of the design professionals. Thank you, Councillor Benton. We still have uh, Councillor Senna. Let's see, Councillor Davis, Councillor Senna, Councillor Harris, yeah. and then now back to Councillor Jones. So we'll, we'll and, and Madam President, I had a question too. Oh, okay. About, you... about the sworn officer being in charge of, and no no insult on him either. I no don't get me wrong, but why is the sworn officer? Of facilities we can go to the chief on that if you'd like madam president councillor brenton uh this officer is part of our ops review section and it's a section that we're currently working on uh to make some changes in the amount of people that we have in sworn positions that uh, are not uh that could be covered by civilians so it is a process that we're working on it's going to take us time to filter out. Uh, we're also working on the individuals who manage our fleet and making some changes there uh, because over the past probably six years, uh, that individual also was a sworn person. So uh, we're working on it. And uh, as soon as we're able to, we're doing everything we can to get uh, sworn people out uh, where they can be uh, working a sworn function. Thank you, Chief. That, that's all I really needed. Thanks. Thank you, Councilor Benton. So we will move on to Councilor Davis, Councilor Senna, and Councilor Jones. Thank you, Madam President. I appreciate it. I, I realize where we are, and I'll try to keep this very brief. Uh, and thank you, Chief, for that explanation. I, I appreciate it. It's been since I've been on the City Council now six years, I think. Um, in every budget cycle, we've asked for a list of uh, sworn positions that could be filled by civilians at APD, and you and I have had a chance to talk about that in person, and I appreciate that for the first time since I've been here, uh, we have a police chief that's committed to being sure that if we do all the investment and the time and the training and <clears throat> uh, the range and, and all those extra uh, things, that, that those the folks that are eligible to qualify to that very highest standard to be a police officer in our city are serving our citizens um, with their criminal justice needs and not with these other duties. And so I appreciate that and uh, look forward to hearing how that works. But let me just, I, I appreciate that. And Mr. Royal and maybe Mr. Montoya, you can help me. Mr. Montoya, when did your department complete a review of the APD Maine? Uh, I, I have gotten a black and white copy of it sent to me middle of this meeting today, uh, but it looks like a piece of a larger report and I'm not sure when this was done. Uh, Madam President and Councillor Davis, the report uh, that we are more than happy to share with you is roughly 34 pages. It was conducted in 2018, and 
Uh, it reflects a five-year forecast and a forecast through 2029. So the report reflects what it would actually would have cost to do all of the upgrades. And what I believe was provided to you was on page 10 that basically categorizes what sort of upgrades would need to be done immediately in order to bring that building up to standards. Uh, we then looked at the cost in 2018 when the report was completed, and then those costs in 2023, if in fact funding became, av became available and we were uh, needing to make those improvements. And the figure that uh, you have on page nine is the most accurate figure that we have. That includes inflation and projected uh, costs moving out to 2023. So the number is, is a number that was uh, arrived at by a company that did the assessment for us. Uh, I know Councillor Benton may be familiar with them, but Dude Solu Solutions, uh, Alpha Facility Solutions. So it was a company that had uh, both engineering and architectural uh, components to it. Thank you, Madam President and Mr. Mon Director Montoya. I appreciate that very much, but I think that's kind of make, I appreciate that because it helps to make my point. I want to be really clear. Um, when it, if this is a priority of the administration and of APD for 10% of the new federal dollars, but it wasn't significant enough to raise to a priority during the whole CIP process, and this is a need that's been known since 2018, the city council got a copy of this report at 443 this afternoon, in an hour and 43 minutes into this meeting to justify this expenditure after councilors started making this request. But I know that Councilor Senate, Councilor Benton and I were on a meeting with the administration in March about their proposed plan for how to spend the federal dollars. And we requested meetings about what your priorities would be to give us background and to give us more information. And these amendments have been available for weeks about why we wanted to do this. And suddenly this is APD's number one priority. Um, it frustrates me in our process because I want us to have the best facilities for our officers to do their job. But the administration doesn't act like this matters. They act like we're just gonna approve this because you asked for it and, and have known this as a priority for all these years. Um, and suddenly we wanna make a change and it's worth a 45 minute conversation and a lot of pushback from the administration when you weren't even willing to give us the data or information before the meeting started or a month ago. That That's what frustrates me about this process. And it makes me feel like it's not a priority, that it's just a way to spend money um, and that's what's frustrating. And I, so I, I, I'm willing to say that we should not spend this money on this project because it hasn't been a priority and it wasn't for four budget cycle, three budget cycles, plus this one. Um, and quite frankly, my other point here is I, I am very impressed with our new chief, uh, and his leadership team. Uh, many of them I've worked with for years and I'm impressed with. But quite frankly, I'm uninclined to reward APD with new, new toys and new facilities until they get their act together and can start uh, demonstrating significantly uh, forward progress on compliance. Because what I've also heard from this department is that we really need a state-of-the-art center for investigators and crime labs and everybody else to be in one location at one time under one roof and not have them scattered all over the city or in old facilities. Um, and that's a competing priority and request that we've heard for years. So I'm not sure what APD's long-term vision is about using the main, about using their other facilities. Uh, I would support a long-term plan, but I also think it depends on what our long-term staffing plan is because the number of persons we've had in all of these positions has changed over the years. Um, and so for that reason, um, I, I would support uh, at this point, uh, using that money for other more urgent priorities until we can develop a more uh, comprehensive and uh, cohesive strategy. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Davis. We will move on to Councillor Senna and then Councillor Jones. Thank you, Madam President. Um, you know, I think my question may, I'm hoping it will help this conversation because um, you know, the American Rescue Plan Act is $1.9 trillion. And of that, $10 billion was also set aside for capital projects. I know that, you know, we are limited in our pot of money for municipalities. Um, and so if they have the funding here, uh, whether it's, you know, discussion with the council to pass it or not, or use it for other ways, is there additional funds that we can access uh, to address some of these concerns, to address some of this infrastructure need, 
it can, we're seeing it across the nation. It's not limited to Albuquerque. Um, and I know that many of these um, building projects were set aside um, and it's just getting worse just because we're trying to really meet the need of community and prioritizing them. So I know that uh, this has come up um, along with some other improvements because of this additional funds. But I'm just curious um, whether, I don't know if the administration can answer this, um, but how you all look at the capital projects fund, the $10 billion or other pockets or pots of money that was included in the $1.9 trillion. Who would you like to have answer that, um, Councilor Council President um, Borrego and uh, Councilor Senna? We are looking at each one of those pots of money as the federal regulations come out that detail what it's for. Um, also, of course, um, as you sat on the um, intergovernmental committee or whatever that one is, uh, we we looked at this all all the federal priorities as well and looked at the and we're looking at the earmarks. So, I mean, I think the the long story short is we will always be evaluating all of those sources for any projects that aren't funded in our other cycles. Madam President, if I can follow up. Go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, because we have a few infrastructure um, improvements and, and building improvements here, you know, I just really hope that we can continue to search for those funds. Um, this is one thing that I agree. And, you know, even between committees, we were trying to evaluate that there is lots of pots of money that are discussed in ARPA. Um, so, you know, if, if it does not occur um, through discretion of the council, I hope that we can continue to look for it uh, because, you know, hearing the needs, uh, whether it's the substations or the main um, that will continue to, to work for our community and also think of other needs to be that need to be addressed as well. So I just want to say thank you. I know that we're not getting this exact report um, and just having this discussion. Um, but again, our our buildings, um, it's it's something that the nation is seeing across the board, not just in buildings, but in our road systems as well. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Senna. We will move to Councillor Jones and then Councillor Pena. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I think we've probably beaten it almost to death, but I, I still believe there's a way to fix this. And, and there is nothing wrong with doing this in stages as long as we know what those stages are and what the costs are. Uh, but I think probably we've We've gone after this because there's a big pot of money and we want it, but perhaps that isn't the best use of it. Uh, let's take a look at all of our stations because even if we appropriate this money, if we don't already have plans and assessments and gone in for permits, because yes, the city does have to permit and all of those things, there's no big rush on this. I don't see a rush. I think we need to do it correctly and we do it, need to do it correctly across the city. So thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor Jones. Councilor Pena? Thank you, Madam President. Um, again, um, as Councilor Jones stated, I think we're, we're beating this one down, but I, I just want to say that I appreciate Councilor Bassan and her attempt, attempt to try to accommodate some other Councilor's comments as, you, as, as she's um, providing her amendment. So her amendment stated that this is actually just a um, removing the word main, which gave some flexibility to be able to address those needs. Uh, in her attempt to try to accommodate um, other counselors in their comments, I think it's muddy the water a little bit. So, you know, I would just, uh, you know, hope that um, Councilor Bassan would just move forward with her um, original amendment, which I intend to support. And when we're talking about projects and lots of projects, I mean, we, we had the art project. They didn't have a lot of planning associated with it. We had, um, you know, we're talking about the roof. We're going to put a lot of money into the roof um, at the convention center and there hasn't been an assessment done. You know, this money is an opportunity for the city to um, identify those projects that we've put off and put off and put off to try to help with economic vitality in our community. And I think that as we do this, I, I know it becomes difficult. And part of the reason that I didn't um, add projects from um, just singular, singular 
council districts is because I really believe that this package really had um, almost everything aside from the police vehicles, but it really had a lot of things that were going to help to promote our, our city because next year when we, or the year after when we don't have this money, then these projects that we're talking about are going to continue to be on the back burner. So um, I'll just end there and thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor Pena and Councilor Bassan, since you haven't been able to weigh in on this. Um, I truly believe that all of our areas probably have significant needs. Um, and I'm just going to give you an example. In the North, the Northwest Area Command, which was built probably, um, well, it was before I retired, which was about 2008, is one of the back walls is actually cracking pretty severely. So there are definitely needs throughout the city. Um, and I, I, I'm glad that you brought this to light because we had this discussion and it was a discussion that needed to be had. Um, downtown is a very, very old building and has had few renovations um, for years. I mean, and it's the main location of our police department. So. There are definitely, um, you know, I mean, looking at, and I'm, I'm not a building maintenance person or anything, but um, I mean, just knowing um, old city hall, which is part of the police station underground, um, probably has never been, I don't know when the last time it was ever renovated. And I know that it wasn't renovated when I was working at Plaza del Sol and I worked there for many, many years, for at least 10 years uh, or longer, uh, probably more like 15 years. Um, and, you know, it just never, there was never any. So I, I, I wonder, you know, when I think about what Councillor Jones was talking about prioritization, I mean, it absolutely is something that um, needs to happen. So uh, thank you. I'm gonna defer back to Councillor Bassan and let her close. Oh, thank you, Madam President. I'm really hoping that we can we can get to the close. First, let me just say, this was never my intention. I would have bet you a thousand dollars at the beginning of this meeting, we wouldn't have spent this much time talking on this amendment. But I do, I've been working with council staff and since we've been talking for a little while about it, I would like them to please share my same amendment with the one addition that I would like to have us vote on, um, if possible. We are going to put that on a screen share for you, Councillor. Thank just you. Hang on a second. I was just intending to hopefully have a little more flexibility um, with the understanding that maybe it would or would not have all gotten used at the main station, but I liked the idea of flexibility. So that was what started this whole uh, amendment, but I still wanna strike the word main. And then on page three, after line 16, insert a new paragraph prior to the expenditure of this appropriation, the city shall conduct an outside needs assessment of all APD stations. This assessment must include an evaluation of existing facility needs as distinct from cosmetic upgrades. And I would hope that I can urge your support and use that as my close. Okay, Councillor. So what Councillor Bassan has done is she has amended floor amendment number two. And so we will um, vote on floor amendment number two as amended. Councillor Bassan, I propose that you're moving this in place. Yes. What? Adding the extra, it's the same amendment that I was originally moving, but now through our discussions and council staff has clarified that this is following all the rules and is acceptable since we hadn't moved and voted, we hadn't voted on my original amendment. This is that same amendment plus a section two. Okay, so Councillor Jones, do you still propose a second for this? Yes, I second this. Thank you. Yes, so we have a motion and a second on floor amendment number two as um, amended Madam by Council President. Madam President. Uh, yeah, Mr. Ryan. 
if you don't mind part of the interruption. As the amendment is written, um, we have a question for clarification. In order to do the assessment, um, we'd like to use some a portion of the funding to help us um, uh, in the assessment. If you read the amendment, literally, um, it does not permit us to use these funds to do that work. And so wanted to see if there is a way to uh, potentially give us some uh, flexibility so that we can uh, assess the, all of the facilities you all would like us to assess as we move forward in this project. Um, Mr. Royale, we are going to try to amend to add some additional language for, to include um, the use of funding. Madam President, yeah, if you could just give staff just a couple minutes, we'll get that language added. Point of order to Madam President, I would be willing to go ahead and do that as well as the sponsor of this amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Councilor Bassan. <laughs> I just naturally figured you would want it to be funded. <laughs> So, counselors, if you can just give our staff just a minute. We're almost there, Madam President. Thank you. <coughs> they're miracle staff, but they're, <laughs> but they're not miracle workers, so. Got it? I think we have it, counselors. So, Councilor Bassan, would you take a look at it and see if that's what you intended? Okay, so I guess to, in order to get it in the record, I'll say that on page three after line 16, insert a new paragraph other than to complete the needs assessment required by this section. Prior to the expenditure of this appropriation, the city shall conduct an outside needs assessment of all APD stations. This assessment must include an evaluation of existing facility needs as distinct from cosmetic upgrades and also striking the word main. Yes, I'm okay with that. Okay, Councilor Jones, since you offered the second, I need your... I do have my second second. Your second second, thank you. Okay, we read it into the record, so we know what we're voting on. Councilors, if there be no further discussion, we will go on to the vote. Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes, thank Councilor you. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Hallelujah, thank you. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Council Borrego. Yes. 9-0 on floor amendment two. Thank you, counselors. Our floor amendment number two as amended and amended has passed on a 9-0 vote. Congratulations, Councilor Bassan. I'm sure that one word changed. You figured it wouldn't take that long. Um, so we will move on to floor amendment number three. And this is sponsored by Councilor Benton. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'll move floor amendment number three. Um, in summary, this amendment reduces the Candelaria Community Center gym youth boxing expansion line item and appropriates one million towards the development design and construction of a noise mitigation wall in the San Jose neighborhood. Um, the uh, the gymnasium project is something, uh, just full disclosure, I've had a history with this building as its architect over the years, starting from probably when I was not a registered architect, but uh, working on the building. But um, including understanding the history of the great history of boxing at that center. And I remember Coach uh, Turrieta, uh, I believe, was, uh, who was um, the coach back then and uh, a great guy. And uh, we built a one ring uh, gymnasium for enough, big enough for one boxing ring, subsequently added another one. And now there's a proposal to add a third. I'm not against this, but I think there are much more serious needs in, in the uh, San Jose neighborhood than this. And I've spoken to, to residents, no one had heard of this. 
it wasn't a resident driven proposal. It was a boxing driven proposal. And I've got nothing against that either. Um, this would leave funding for a design of the project, which is not designed. And we we're just talking about not having design for other things, but in this case, there's truly no, no design for this. Um, and, and so we can't necessarily rely on what's being proposed until we have that. And in the meantime, um, the Abajo rail yards are immediately adjacent to San Jose. And the residents there put up with a lot of noise, vibration um, all night long. Uh, that's a switching yard for the railroad, for the Santa Fe, uh, Burlington Northern. Um, and this, we've investigated the, the feasibility of this wall. It's been concluded that it can be built. We're having discussions with the Rio Metro Transit District about possibly possibly taking on the project and taking it off of our, our workload here in the city. But, um, but this is something that truly would help the neighborhood. It's not just the noise. This would also alleviate some of the dust that comes across from the cement factories across the tracks directly into the neighborhood. So um, uh, this, this keeps both projects moving forward. We got half a million from the uh, state this time around. So we're close to the finish line and completely funding this project. And uh, so uh, I do have a letter if I could quickly read from uh, Esther Abeta from the, the San Jose neighborhood. I am, uh, dear Councilor Benton and esteemed members of the council, I am writing to you today about the importance of the sound barrier project for San Jose neighborhood. For over six decades, the community has been dealing with the issues of major sound issues caused by the railroad activity. There are 13 rail spurs and two major cement facilities behind our homes. There are loud bangs from connecting of rail cars that produce sound waves that shake our homes, extremely loud railroad horns and signal warning sounds. All of these sounds happen day and night. There's no predicting the time when the activity starts or ends. We as a community have made attempts to alleviate by contacting BNSF and the major governing boards. We found out the railroad and intermodal facilities are necessary for the economy of Albuquerque. We know we cannot stop the noise from the sources because of their rights to operate. So we asked our elected representatives to seek state funding. Funds were approved by the session and signed by the governor. We are hoping council will provide the necessary funds to complete our sound barrier. We have fought hard for many decades to help us mitigate uh, this type of run that has placed, plagued the San Jose neighborhood. The sound barrier will be a major step in righting the wrongs of the past. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Benton. Um, I believe I, Councillor Davis, is that a second that you a have? Second, a two second comment, Madam President. Go ahead with your comment, Councillor. Uh, thank you, it is a second. I just wanna say, I do appreciate this. I think that I appreciate Councillor Benton's uh, diplomacy here in, in trying to fulfill the request of the newest request from the neighborhood and the administration on the, the boxing facility but also honoring the process of neighborhood input, which we've all for, fought very hard for all this time and mitigating some of the environmental injustice impacts of like overdevelopment around transportation and others that have really harmed neighborhoods like this. Uh, and, you know, have asked us for years and years through the legislature and the governor and the mayor and the city council uh, for something as simple as a sound wall to help them sleep easier at night. I think this is a good first step. I appreciate the counselor looking to mitigate some of those issues and partner with the state to solve it. And it also leaves some money aside to, to deal with some of those youth programs. So thank you, counselor. Congratulations on finding middle ground and I intend to support thank this. Thank you. Davis. Councilor Pena. Um, thank you, Madam President. You know, I just, I'm, I'm just having a really difficult time with this. I know that, um, you know, I heard that somebody thought that this was my project. This is, this is not my project. This was brought forth, not funny, um, but this was brought forth by the administration. And I, um, you know, I have some real concerns. I, I really want to support what you're doing. Councilor Benton, we tried to do, um, add this at the, at the last budget meeting. If there's another, um, um, way in order to achieve what you're trying to do i'm definitely supportive but you know when we have you know your other amendment is is supporting an arts program and an arts program for maybe people who 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 don't look or 
or um, like folks who need services like um, like the boxing um, like the boxing gym. My knowledge of this is that I've met with um, the people from PAL who have been running that organization for quite some time, and they are they too are in a dilapidated building that's basically um, falling apart. And, you know, I've been um, talking to them and my involvement with them is actually, I think they've reached out to each and every single counselor. I know that there's other counselors who have met with them and knowing that, you know, um, the building that they're in is really not safe for children to, to be um, boxing or practicing in. And so um, I know that the administration had met with them as well. And they're talking to them about finding a building so that they can really bring this um, vital program uh, back in the community and a much needed program as you know um, usually um, kids who participate in boxing um, you know struggle and this is a way and a means for them to find um, things to do um, in their community so I just really I mean without going you know all into this I just think I, I cannot support this and I just think it's going to set a pre bad precedence with the next amendment that I do support that you have bringing forward next. Thank you Councillor Pena any other comments by councillors? Councillor Gibson? Thank you um, uh, Madam President. I will be supporting this. This is a neighborhood that's been marginalized over the years. Um, environmentally, um, we'll just talk, just thinking about environmentally and how they've been shortchanged. This is going to change um, the quality of life over there for the better. Um, and, and this is a population that, that they have, uh, I know a few families over there, uh, actually people I used to work with out at Sandia, who have really deep roots over there. So, um, uh, you know, I think psychologically this will help them, not only, not only just a, um, um, f from a perspective of, of um, uh, making their uh, days and their evenings quieter and, uh, easier to, uh, you know, to live there in, in peace and quiet. But I think it will give them uh, maybe, maybe hopefully even a psychological boost that uh, they're not at the bottom of the, of a totem pole anymore. So yes, I, I supported this the first time I saw it when it was, when it was defeated and, and uh, I will con continue to support it this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Are there any other comments? Um, Councillor Benton, I will be supporting this amendment. I my first job as a neighborhood planner was in in South Broadway, and I worked in San Jose. And I actually worked on the Superfund site. And I know the um, and then Councillor Gibson mentioned it, but the psychological effects of even just that Superfund site, and that was a major effort. Um, the area was um, marginalized by the city in terms of zoning for many, many, many years. And we tried to turn some of that around and create areas that were, um, you know, where there were pockets of residential, try to create and reestablish neighborhoods that had been impacted by industrial uh, zoning and uh, some of the big, um, uh, you know, mm -hmm facilities that were in that area that uh, brought traffic and other issues. And I know that this area has really struggled. Um, so for that reason, I definitely will be supporting this. Um, so with that, I'm going to go to Ms. Ortega and we'll take the vote on this. Councilor Bassan. No. Councilor Benton? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Councilor Gibson? Yes. Councilor Harris? No. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? No. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Yes. Motion passes on a 6-3 vote. 
Thank you, counselors. Uh, that is floor amendment number three, and that passes on a 6-3 vote. We will move on to um, floor amendment number four, and this is sponsored by Councillor Senna. Thank you, Madam President. I move floor amendment four. Um, as you can see on the screen, uh, this is adding, again, hazard pay um, of a boost. Um, I think that if you don't <laughs> succeed and try again, uh, but for me, I'm a big supporter and fighter for hazard pay. Um, as I stated back in June, uh, when we tried to implement that um, and we'll continue to do so. Um, I think, you know, I have stated it already uh, previously on um, the previous amendment, uh, thankful for Councilor Pena's um, support on me. Um, but to also add um, that on, if for those interested, um, on page seven of the 151 um, guideline, it says that through the fiscal recovery fund, Congress provided state um, local and tribal governments with significant resources to respond to the COVID-19 public health emergency and its economic impact through four categories of eligible uses. Section 602 and section 603 contain mm -hmm. the same eligible uses. The primary difference between the two sections is that 602 establishes a fund for state territories and tribal governments and 603 establishes a fund for metropolitan cities non-entitlement units and local governments and counties. Of those two sections, it may be used for A, to respond to public health emergencies or its negative economic impacts, including assistance to households, small business and nonprofits, or aid its impacted industries such as tourism, travel and hospitality. And B, to respond to workers uh, performing essential work during the COVID-19 public health emergency by providing premium pay to eligible workers. This is what the money is supposed to be used for. We would not even be talking about any of this money had it not been the work of these essential workers that lobbied it in Congress. So I want to stress that, that this is what the money is supposed to be spent the county did it. The county did it very well in which they did it in a tiered system, just as I'm proposing. So when the county can do it for their officers, for their firefighters, for their corrections, for their dispatch, and but we cannot do it at the same level that the county is doing. So I know uh, it has already failed once, but again, I'm going to stress that um, if it weren't for these essential workers, we would not be uh, working right now. They kept our city functioning. We should thank them for the risk that they undertook. Um, and it's not just our, our police officers that continue to work. It's not just our firefighters. It's transit, solid waste. Um, every single person within the city stepped up and we should continue to provide, provide that savings. Um, not just through inflation costs, but as an actual hazard pay. So um, I believe I do need a second, but- I will, I will second that, Councilor Senna, thank you. Thank you. Well, um, with that, you know, if there are any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer. Councilor Brisson. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> well, I do understand the intent. I still thoroughly and completely and entirely agree with Councilor Davis. Thank you, Councilor Basson. Councilor Pena? Yeah. Councilor Pena, you're muted. Thank you, Madam President. Councilor Senna, thank you. Thank you for this. I, I tried to put it in the, the First Amendment, and as you know, I, I just can't support the, the taking out the shot spotter. So thank you. Madam President, can I close? This will be my yeah. last one. Thank you. Um, I know that it's some of the funding sources that I'm looking at um, may not 
um, sway others. Um, but this is a direct investment to our officers. It's a direct investment into our firefighters. Um, it's stated as part of the American Rescue Plan Act, um, how this was critical um, and to um, continue that thing for those that are continuing to work because as much as we are moving out of the pandemic, we still pose that risk. So with that, um, I urge your support. Thank you, Councillor Senna. Any other comments? I don't see any other comments. Ms. Ortega, would you hit, take the roll? On. No. Councillor Benton. Councillor Benton. No. Councillor Davis. No. Is that a no, Councillor? Uh, that is correct, ma'am. My vote okay. is no. Thank, thank you. Councillor Gibson. No. Councillor Harris. No. Councillor Jones. No. Councillor Pena. A reluctant no. Councillor Senna. Yes. Councillor Borrego. Yes. Motion fails on a two to seven vote. Thank you, Councillors. So uh, that we are about not quite halfway through. Um, we're about a quarter of the way through with our amendments. So we will move on to floor amendment number five. And this is sponsored by Councillor Benton and Councillor Davis. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I think Councillor Benton might want to introduce this because he might have a small tweak that will make our debate shorter. Uh, if that's true, I might let Councillor Benton leave here. Thank you. Thank you, Madam uh, President and Councillor Davis. Um, yeah, uh, in light of the previous discussion and, and Councillor Bassan's uh, amendment, which I think is putting us on the right track, um, I would like to propose, uh, I guess this would be a sponsor's amendment. I don't know procedurally, are we supposed to vote if we, if, if we amend our own bill? But if, if, if it's amenable to uh, Councillor Davis, I would like to, to amend this amendment to reduce the amount going to supportive housing to 3 million. That leaves 2 million for a complete design on Maine and an analysis on the other buildings and probably even doing some smaller projects depending on, uh, on the consultant costs. But, um, but yeah, this, this would put uh, still, the uh, the intent of the bill, and I'll just I'll just go ahead and excuse me the amendment. I'll move the amendment, which would be number. Help me out here, Madam President. Number five, Councillor. Thank you, Madam President. Number five, um, it would read uh, as pages line two after add the following supportive housing that would go to three million, and on page three, uh, there would be some language adjustment that the staff would have to take care of in light of. Councillor Passan's amendment, but to uh, decrease that amount by uh, by the same by three million. So, Councillor Benton, just so I understand what you're doing here, you're changing on a number one. You're changing the supportive housing to three million. On on number two, you're changing the amount, decrease the amount by three million. And then uh, in the explanation, you're changing the 4 million to 3 million. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. Yeah, I didn't address the explanation, but it would be the same explanation, but with the 3 million substituted for the four. As I said, that would leave- uh, Staff to make sure I'm- Madam President, we did get that and that, that is accurate. Thank you. Okay, Councillor, so um, Councillor Davis, did you have a comment? A second and a comment, Madam President, it is the second, but I just wanna point out, I think this is an important conversation that we started to have it earlier. I don't wanna beat that dead horse a second time, um, but I do think it's important. We've talked about priority for housing. We know there's a need for it. We're, we are investing more money in it, but ensuring that we're continuing to do that um, for our most urgent needs right now. Um, and I think this is an important way to structure our, what we think will be long-term uh, requirements under the CIP budget for APD and invest those into more urgent recovery and reinvestment 
um, for folks that need housing and particularly supportive housing, which is sort of covered under the big bucket in the other bills, but not directly addressed with on-site surrounding. So this would, uh, for those who are, are using the language of the day, this would, uh, this would take money technically from APD's budget, put it into social services in the short term and give us time to develop a longer term plan for APD uh, requirements. Thank you, Councillor Davis. So, um, Councillor Busson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, in light of all the conversations that we had earlier regarding buildings and infrastructure and making sure that we maintain what we have, the roofs on museums and the convention center and everything that we've discussed in the committee meeting, I really do not support this. Be being that we have established, we have many, many buildings falling apart and I do believe that there still is a way to get supportive housing vouchers out. Thank you, Councillor Bassan. Any other comments by councillors? Um, just uh, for the sake of uh, clarification, councillors, this is for amendment number five as amended. And the if you look at your amendment, uh, the first line on page two after line 31, add the following. Um, and it, it reads the same as what is written but it changes the amount to 3 million on page three, line 15, through 16, entitled APD main station renovations, decreases the amount by 3 million. And in the explanation, it changes to 3 million. So those are the only changes to this bill. Councilor Benton. Yeah, just, just thank you for, for clarifying that, Madam President. I think in light of, uh, uh, Councillor Bassan's amendment, it would this would just strike the word main, and I think it'd still be consistent with, if I'm not mistaken, I'll ask staff and 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 Councillor Bassan, I'm getting to see the the thumbs up. So, uh, yeah. in addition to the change of the figures, we would strike the word main. We would add that amendment, uh, and so on on number two on page three, line fifteen. Through 16 entitled APD station renovations. Correct. Strike the word me. Thank you for catching that, Councillor. Okay, mm -hmm. Councillors, any other discussion? If not, we will move to our vote. Ms. Ortega. Councillor Bassan. No. Councillor Benton. Yes. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Councillor Harris. No. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? No. Councilor Senna? Councilor Senna? Muted. No. Councilor Borrego? No. Motion fails on a four to five vote. Thank you, Councilors. Um, we will call the next amendment then, floor amendment number five. Number six? Number six, I'm sorry, counselors. Um, and this is Councillor Benton as well. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'll move floor amendment number five. Uh, this changes as follows on page two line. After line 31, add the following of this amount, 250,000 shall be allocated to Albuquerque Street Connect for supporting housing vouchers. Um, and uh, um, so this would be uh, allocating within an existing line item uh, for this program that has really, really showed its uh, muster over the last few years, We've gone from one to three outreach teams. They're a big, big benefit to uh, APD and described it before. The difference between this and the previous amendment, that would be for the immediate year under the uh, operating budget. This would be for the out year of 23 under the uh, the Recovery Act. And I did wanna ask uh, the staff, I didn't have the word administration in there, but if that's necessary. I'd... Um, Councilor Benton, I believe the staff has a, a an amendment um, or a change. Ms. Yara? Um, Madam President, I just wanted to point out a change that was a technical error on our part. It should read on page two after line 30 instead of 31. And then uh, to your question, Counselor, it's not necessary to have the word administration there. Um, 
but that's up to you. Uh, Madam President and Ms. Yara, yeah, just my thinking was, you know, this would be like other contracts that we issue uh, to service providers, but the administra administration sort of sounds like all they're doing is administering contracts where there would actually be, uh, uh, you know, issuing the contracts and doing, you know, identifying the recipients. So yeah, if, if that's all right, uh, I'll just, uh, would like to strike the word administration. We Thank can you. do that. Sure. So we will put a period after the word vouchers and strike the word administration. And we will be changing on page two after line 30, add the following. Uh, Councilor Benton, uh, do you have a second? Let me see, I didn't see a second. Councilor Davis. Thank you for that second. Any questions of the council? Doesn't appear so, Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Councilor Benton. Sorry, yes. Thank you. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Borrego. Yes. Nine zero on floor amendment number six. Thank you, Councilors. Uh, that's floor amendment number six as amended. And that passes on a 9-0 vote. And I think I forgot to say that this was as amended. Councilor Benton and Councilor Davis. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilors, we're halfway through our amendments. <laughs> um, we are on floor amendment number seven. And this is Councilor Benton and Councilor Jones. I'll allow Councillor Jones to do this if she'd like. Go ahead, Councillor Benton. All right. Thank you, uh, Madam President, and uh, thank you, Councillor Jones, for co-sponsoring this. This is another just designation of an existing line item. Uh, the uh, the present build has uh, arts and entertainment grants, and this would designate. Uh, uh, half a million dollars of those grants towards the Sawmill Center for the Arts. And this is, uh, for those who don't know, this is 516 Arts, which is a longstanding arts organization in the city, as is the Outpost Performance Space, which is a really top-notch big league uh, jazz venue in the city. Thank you, Councillor Benton, and I'll second that. I was actually supposed to be a sponsor of this. Oh, event. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> Welcome to be on. <laughs> My name is not, is not on there, but that's okay. I'll, I'll add it. Um, so uh, we have a motion and a second. Councillor Bassan. Thank you, Madam President. I'm wondering what where the 500,000 number came from, please. Uh, this is... This is their request. They, they're doing a really good job of fundraising. It's a multi-million dollar project, but um, the county is putting in a half a million, or a million and um, they're also getting some state support. So this would be a contribution to the city. This is what they requested from the city as our uh, contribution. Thank you, Councillor. I appreciate that. Any other questions of the council? If not, we will move on to the vote. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Councilor Harris. Councilor Harris. Thank you. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Senna. Yes. Council Borrego. Yes. Nine zero on floor amendment number seven. Thank you, councilors. We that was floor amendment number seven. And I'm gonna say as amended to add my name. Thank you. Um floor amendment number eight. Councillor Jones. Madam President, I don't believe we need to do this one because we didn't take the money out of the convention center. Councillor Jones. 
Madam President, I don't believe that we need this piece, so I will withdraw since we already still have the million dollars. Thank you, Councillor Jones. You're very welcome. Thank you. Well, we are on floor amendment number nine. Oh, now we're changing it. Oh, okay. So I, I'm corrected. Councillors, this is floor amendment number eight because Councillor Jones would do that. So we will call this floor amendment number eight. Uh, Councillor Bassan and Councillor Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I would like to move floor amendment number eight with Councillor Pena. Um, and this will take, this, my apologies in advance, it probably will take a little bit of discussion to make sure that you all understand where um, the thoughts are coming from. But on page three, line 14, entitled APD vehicles, increase the amount in parentheses by $3 million. So this amendment increases the line item for APD vehicles by $3 million for a total of $4 million. This would provide funds to replace aging vehicles. The appropriation exceeds the $56,560,000 noted in the legislation. The excess amount would be appropriated from the second distribution of ARPA funds to be received around May 2022 within the same fiscal year that we are currently discussing. Um, and then I, I would be happy to keep talking and I have a couple of clarifying questions for administration if the council would like to hear more. I would second this motion. Thank you, Councillor Jones. We have a motion and a second. Councillor Bassan, did you want to keep? Uh, I'm willing to take questions from the council first for the sake of time. Uh, if everybody gets it and you're good, but um, and then I can do a close. Councillors, any questions? Doesn't appear so, Councillor Bassan. So with that, we will move on to the vote. We have a motion and a second, Ms. Ortega. Wait, Matt, Come. Matt, I'm sorry. I would like to offer Councillor Pena the opportunity as a co-sponsor to be able to, to say something or to close on this as well, because I know she worked hard to promise that $3 million gets reallocated. And Councilor I want- Councillor Pena. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Bassan. You know, I appreciate um, the amendment. Um, I know it's basically from you. I asked to put my name on it. You know, I had, had the discussion about, um, you know, uh, as a council as a whole, our commitment to add the $3 million for vehicles. And then um, uh, obviously we're, we weren't able to do it via that amendment. So I really support this. I just, you know, I do feel a little bit like we're kicking the can down the road. And, I, you know, I, I think it was a commitment from us as council to to really get that $3 million in this ARPA cycle. But um, but with that, you know, I appreciate Councillor Basson and her, her attempt to try to get the money in the next go round. So thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Madam President, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, Councillor Pena, this is not getting it in for the next round. This is adding it into this ARPA bill. And the justification with all of that is that we will not have encumbered, I've, and I'm happy to have administration and Mr. Botka go ahead and uh, elaborate a little bit based off of further discussions that we had this morning and, and last week even, but these funds, we're not going to have encumbered all of the funds that we are continuing to talk about tonight so if we start working on city vehicles and many of the other projects listed on this bill, we will be able to make sure that there is, um, there will be funds because then by the time the next ARPA rolls around and we get that disbursement, we will be able to cover all of the things that we are talking about. It's just that we will be not using $3 million from the second disbursement as we are promising them tonight if this passes. Councilor Pena, did you wanna to respond to that? No, I, I got it. Thank you, Councilor Bassan, again. Thank you. Any questions of the council? Doesn't appear so. We will move to Ms. Ortega on the vote. Oh, okay. Councilor. I, I, I'm sorry, Madam President. I do need a little help with this. So um, this is funded from where again? <laughs> Madam President, uh, Councillor Benton, this is this is why I was I, I'm willing to go into it uh, because I understand that there needs to be some clarifications. Uh, I'm going to let Mr. Baca start with the explanations as as we kind of have been 
processing through them and in regards to the encumberment of the, these funds so that it will allow for it. But Mr. Botka, if you don't mind. Sure, Madam President and uh, Councillor Bassan, uh, this is above and beyond the first tranche of money that we uh, received. However, uh, the administration is comfortable uh, appropriating this money because the money is considered uh, measurable and available uh, in accounting term. I had discussion with uh, Ms. Yara about this and she agrees with me. Uh, and on top of that, uh, the $57 million that we have appropriated, uh, you know, by the time the second portion of the money would come around, uh, we will not have spent 57 uh, million entirely. So there wouldn't be any cash flow, cash flow issue. Uh, and also uh, because the second part of the money would be still received within fiscal year 2022, uh, uh, we are amenable to this appropriation. I hope that answers your question. I, Councillor Bassan, would, does that? Well, it would be Councillor Benton if he still has further questions regarding Council this. Benton. Well, my understanding, Councillor Benton, is that it's the residual of this year that we will be using um, and not next year's allocation. So it's whatever residual we have from this year. Uh, Madam President and uh, Councillor Bassan, yes, I think uh, most likely we will be uh, using the money from the $57 million because not all $57 million will be spent before we receive the second part of this money. And again, the second part of the money would be coming within the same fiscal year. Madam President, Mr. Bakke, if I may follow up with Bassan that. And then Councillor Gibson. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Madam President and Councilor Benton. The way I look at it too is purchasing these vehicles from my understanding between ordering them and actually getting them ready and fitted and all of the things are likely going to take approximately a year anyway. So we're not going to necessarily write the check after we pass this. Same thing with all of these assessments and the different roofs that we've been discussing. Many of these different grants, like there's gonna be so many things that we're not going to have spent all of it by May of next year so that we can start getting a, getting a beginning process on getting these vehicles so that we can not have to wait another year after May, 2022 to work on the vehicles that we are, we are beginning to need citywide. Okay, um, if I could just follow up quickly with Councillor Bassan. So, um, yeah, so effectively, um, these would, I mean, uh, well, as you say, it's sort of like everything else, it's, it's, it's putting a, a first step down. Um, we already have how much, if I could ask either uh, Councilor Bassan or staff in vehicles, including APD vehicles presently before this amendment? Um, Madam President and Councilor Benton, I'll let staff give the numbers, but this is also making sure that it's not only for APD vehicles, this is for city vehicles. Citywide vehicles. Because okay. earlier we made an amendment to change APD vehicles to, to city vehicles. Okay, thank you. So this is for Parks and Rec, this is for DMD, this is for Animal Welfare, all of them um, citywide. So, um, Councilor Benton, do you want staff to respond? Um, I'm, and Madam President, I'm sorry, Councillor Bassan. Also, I was not um, engaged right there. I didn't hear your question. Uh, Councillor Benton had the question. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, Councillor Benton. Yeah, I guess it was how many. We're we're adding this this much to it uh, if this passes, and I just wanted to know what it is. Um, yes. Yeah, so the money that's being uh, proposed to be added here would be for all city vehicles. Um, the committee substitute bill for the operating budget removed all the vehicle money so that we could uh, actually fund the fund the free fare program. Um, so uh, yeah, that's the explanation. Thank you. Okay, so this is uh, backfilling from what we took out to do the free fares. Yes, sir. And uh, in order to get the vehicles allocation back up to 4 million total. 
for this upcoming year. Okay. And uh, just a note that was uh, included as a priority in the 2021 CIP bill. Right. Okay. Councillor Benton, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you, yes. Okay, uh, Councillor Gibson, you had your hand up. Uh, no, that's okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of councillors? If not, we will move on to the vote. Madam President, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have to correct myself here. I'm, I, I apologize. Um, the way it stands now with all the amendments that have passed, this line would only be for APD vehicles because we did not remove that with any of our previous um, amendments. Amendment one didn't pass and that was proposed there. So if this were to be for all city vehicles, uh, I would need somebody to make that motion. Uh, Councilor Pena, would you be, um, Emma, okay, so we can add that in there. <laughs> Because that was something that I was, it was very important to me is to turn this into city vehicles as well, uh, so that it can be used not only for APD, but the other departments. So if we can add that in. Yes, uh, so Councillor Basson, that would be on page three, line 14, entitled APD vehicles, strike the term APD, comma, increase the amount by $3 million. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. If Councillor Pena is in agreement. Yes. Um, Ms. Yara, would that be on page three, line 14, entitled vehicles, correct? Right. We just need to uh, actually direct the clerk and her staff to strike the term APD from the bill. This so that's, a, that's what I, yes. Thank you. That's what I added there. Not vehicles. Thank you. And, and um, the explanation, does that need to be amended as well? No. And we would just remove APD from the references there as well. Thank you. Councilor Basson, Councilor Pena, are you okay with both of those? Is yes, uh, yes. That yeah. was the intention from what, what we had discussed. So I'm, I hope, I urge, I urge your support. Thank you, Councilor Basson. We have a motion and a second. And this is as amended. This is floor amendment number eight as amended, Councilors. And we amended the language, uh, number one, and the explanation. So any other comments? All right, Ms. Ortega, will you take the vote, please? Councilor Bassan? Yes. Councilor Benton? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Thank you, Councilor Gibson? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? Yes. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Yes. 9 0 on floor amendment number eight. Thank you, Councilors. Floor amendment number eight passes as amended on a 9 0 vote. And now we're about three quarters of the way. So we're on a roll. Um, this is uh, floor amendment number nine. And this is Councilor Senna. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I move floor amendment number nine. I think I have that right. Um, on page two, line two, entitled one time hazard pay for essential employee, we replace the word hazard with premium. Uh, this just goes along the lines of ARPA um, and to kind of help with um, some of the language that's also, um, that would limit us from actually providing some of that premium pay to, to all employees. Okay, I'll offer a second. And Ms. Yara, you had a comment? Madam President and Councilor Senna, I would just have to make a quick correction on, on uh, item one. It should read on page three, line two. Thank you. Councilor Senna, you accept that amendment? Yes, thank you. And I will second that. Questions, Councilors? I don't see any. <laughs> okay, so with that, we will go on to Ms. Ortega for the vote. Councilor Bassan. Yes. 
Councilor Benton? Yes. Councilor Davis? Yes. Councilor Gibson? Yes. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? Yes. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Yes. Nine zero and four amendment number nine. Thank you, Councillors. Floor Amendment Number Nine passes on a nine-zero vote as amended. We are moving on to Floor Amendment Amendment Number Ten, and this is Councillor Senna. Thank you, Madam President. Um, floor Amendment Number Ten on page three, line nineteen, reduce the appropriations for business training, recruitment, retention by one point two million dollars on page two, line thirty. Uh, and 31 at 1.2 million and amend the appropriations as follows. For housing vouchers, security deposit assistance is added, eviction prevention and domestic violence programs is increased to $2.54 million. $1 million is designated for security deposit assistance. 200,000 of that uh, additional funds is designated for rental application fee assistance. This amendment uh, would move that 1.2 from business training retention being designated for security deposit assistance. Um, the amount can be used for families experiencing homelessness or housing instability to overcome financial obstacles and other security deposit and security. Thank you, Councillor Senna. I would just make one little minor change as homelessness is spelled incorrectly under the explanation. And I have a second, I think, from Councillor Davis. Any questions? <clears throat> Councillor Basson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I think that with everything that we've been talking about with equity and inclusion training and with recruitment and retention, I really am not able to support this, being that we need to make sure to leave that line item as is, in my opinion, but I also still think there is hope for uh, supportive housing vouchers and um, also making sure to include, potentially include the specific allocations. Thank you, Councilor Bassan. Any other questions? Councilor Davis? Um, I did have a question, Councillor Senna. Could you explain the business training, recruitment, and retention? What does that entail, please? Um, this is, I believe, this is coming from the administration, and from my understanding of it, in through its response and discussion with staff, is that it is advertising um, to other localities for residents to move to Albuquerque. And for me, one of my justifications of uh, for the security deposit assistance is that before we recruit others to move here, let's really think about our um, own affordable housing crisis. And so I am proposing this as a solution after hearing from many of our providers in that oftentimes they have a housing voucher but don't have enough for a security deposit. So they're living in their car with a housing voucher in hand, but not enough money for security deposits. Um, I had some clarification questions also for those that are under the uh, emergency rental assistance program that those funds also be allocated um, and can be allocated for security deposits. Um, one thing too is that you have to even uh, pay up front for an application fee uh, to be housed. So it could be $35, it could be $50, but if you have a housing voucher, you most likely won't have those funds up front. Um, and to apply to multiple places that will also accept the housing voucher requires money. So um, that's where this funding is coming from. Um, and really trying to state that before we recruit um, others to come live here, let's kind of think about some of the uh, stability that we need. Thank you, Councillor Sen. I appreciate that. Uh, any other questions? Councillor Bassam? Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to hear the administration too, if they can kind of, uh, is that what their understanding is and what the intention is, uh, or is there more with it in regards to what business training, recruitment, and retention is? Because I 
clearly took it a different way as far as making sure that we retain the employees we have. Let's train them to be more equitable and inclusive and all of the things listed before. Uh, Council, Council President Barrego and Councillor Bassan, um, as to the $1.2 million, it, uh, while it is um, broad enough to cover the Home for Life program, which is what uh, Councillor Senna was referring to and might have discussed with staff, um, it, it was also intentionally broad enough to cover some of the other initiatives that are focused on business recruitment and especially retention, like keeping the businesses um, that we have here. So, um, you know, we've had the very innovative job training Albuquerque program been highly successful, um, helps folks to um, stay here, retain their employees and add an employee by giving them additional training. That's a partnership with CNM. Uh, we also have um, over the course of the pandemic worked with the state to um, administer some grants that have helped folks stay. Uh, and you've, you've passed some of those grants through um, the council, uh, even though we were just the fiscal sponsor, it, it really alerted us to a need of some businesses um, just to be able to stay here and not move to other cities that have um, some great incentives. Uh, we needed to, to give them some support, um, especially in light of what's happened in the past year. So that language was intentionally broad enough to support those three um, initiatives, all of which are currently in existence and that you've seen before. So the Home for Life program the um, job training Albuquerque, and then the, the types of grants and assistance that have passed through for companies like um, Build with Robots and so on um, that came through the state. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Ms. Nair. Councilor Bassan. Thank you, Madam President. That, that was good. Thank you. Any other questions of councilors? Doesn't appear so. Oh, Councilor Senna. Um, yes, thank you, Madam President. I do see additional errors in the language, so um, I'd like staff to make those changes. Um, I see that there's a zero missing in the million, um, and if you can make that change in addition to Councillor Borrego's um, correction of how homelessness is found. Madam President and Councillors, we did uh, note those changes, and the clerk will make those corrections. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so I'll just use this time to close. Um, there's still additional funds um, to do that, um, to, to do some of this recruitment. Um, for me, um, again, as we've been discussing this all night, we're trying to find funds um, in certain places. And for me, that this is a, a very substantial barrier um, that people are facing currently. Um, so I do not wish to have additional people living in their cars with a housing voucher in hand um, and having a security deposit be that barrier, um, as well as even $35 um, for an application fee, because that funding pretty much um, can go towards them eating for the day. Um, so this is what this funding is for. Um, I know that uh, I've actually been in discussion of security deposits for quite some time with not just our advocacy groups, but even um, property management. Um, and I know that many written comments were submitted to counselors to, to urge your support because this is such a big need and barrier um, that property management um, are even looking into how they can increase or be more flexible when it comes to security deposits. Um, in programs such as Renter's Choice. Um, so I just hope that you can support this. I urge your support. Um, I know that we've been talking quite a bit about supportive housing. Mm -hmm. um, and without this, this is still going to leave some of those unhoused. So I urge your support. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Senna. With that, we will move to the vote. Ms. Ortega. Councillor Passant. No. Councillor Benton. Yes. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Gibson. No. Councillor Harris. No. Councillor Jones. No. Councillor Pena. Councillor Pena. Councillor Pena. Councillor Senna. Yes. Councillor Borrego. 
No. Councilor Pena. Councilor Pena. Hello. Councilor Pena. Can you hear me? Yes, we're on floor amendment ten. Yes or no? I uh, yes. Thank you. That motion fails on a four to five vote. Thank you, councilors. So that motion fails. That's floor amendment number 10 as amended. Madam President. Yes, council. Um, I would like to move to consider um, a vote. Councilor Go ahead. I would like to make a motion to uh, reconsider the vote on Amendment 5. Against. On Amendment 5. Um, hold on a second. I'm going to be in our packet, Madam President, if that's helpful. Number 5. Yes. Councillor um, Senna, we will go back to item number five for reconsideration. Councillor Jackson and Councillor Davis were the sponsors. We need a second. This particular motion was amended to read the and it failed on the third of five vote. So, would you like to read? First, we need to vote on reconsideration, and then we need to vote on number five. I don't know if it's my inter internet or what, but I'm hearing echoing and noises. Councillor, let's all turn off our microphones if we're not speaking. Councillor Senna, go ahead. I move the, okay. the motion to reconsider the vote on Amendment 5. As amended. As amended. No. Okay, I'm sorry, Councillor. Uh, we will reconsider it as the original um, motion because it's passed. So I have a second. Councillor Benton and Councillor Harris. Could you put that up on the screen, please? No, I, I, I want to find out who voted in a majority. What was this amendment? Um, yeah. can, Madam President, I can answer that question while they're getting that up there. Um, hang on a second, folks. Okay, so we are putting it back on the screen. We have a motion. Why have a second? going to change to three. Councilor Benton, is that a second? Madam, Madam President, yes, I, and, and I am seconding the motion to reconsider, but. Um, okay. So I, uh, that's all I needed for now, Councilor Benton, because okay. Councilor Harris had the floor. So thank you. Councilor Harris. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to know um, who voted in a majority. We want to make sure the procedures are right. Madam President, I can answer that question. According to the vote we took on item, uh, floor amendment five previously, the yes votes were Councillor Benton, Councillor Davis, Councillor Gibson, and Councillor Jones. Everyone else voted no. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Councillor Benton? Yeah, uh, Madam Chair, I guess the question, didn't we amend it before the we, we voted on it? So isn't it 3 million? Well, I had I asked uh, Mr. Melendres and he said that we would have to go back to the original because it failed. The amendment failed. Uh, yeah, but, but the amendment to the amendment was for three million. That was wasn't that the final vote was on three million. Melendres, would you like to weigh in? Yeah, Madam President, Councilor Benton, uh, you did vote to amend it to three million. However, the ultimate amendment failed, and so upon 
reconsideration, you're considering the amendment anew. And as it's written in the packet as amendment number E, it still reads 4 million. So if it's still the intent to reduce that to 3 million, unfortunately, we'll have to go through the exercise of changing it to three once more. All right, is that an appropriate motion for me prior to voting on this? Madam President, Councilor Benton, so far we have uh, had a motion and a second to reconsider. That okay. vote needs okay. to occur first. That's and fine. then if you would like to move Amendment E with the numeric changes to 3 million from four, you'll be able to Thank just take a vote on that motion on, for Amendment E. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you, uh, Mr. Melendres. So we have a motion to reconsider floor amendment number five in the amount of $4 million. And we have a second. So do I have any discussion regarding that? It doesn't appear so, so I can take a vote on that. Thank you. Councilor Bassan. No. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. No. Councilor Jones. Councilor Jones. You're muted. No. Councilor Pena. This is to the 3 million, correct? This is just the motion for reconsideration. It requires a majority vote of the council. And then we will go to the amendment. No. Councilor Senna. Yes. Councilor Senna. Thank you. Councilor Borrego. No. That motion fails on a four to five vote for reconsideration. So the original vote stands has failed no. on amendment five. Councilor Senna, the reconsideration of number five, floor amendment number five, fails. Thank you. We will move on to item. Floor amendment number 11. And this is sponsored by Councilor Bassan. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I believe council staff is working on a change to this as well, based off of what just happened. Um, Ms. Yara or council staff, are we waiting to finish that? Yeah, they're, they're working on some. Because they're magic. OK. Um, I'm not sure if I can proceed with this or, and I can explain it while we wait. Um, Madam President and Councillor Bosson, I'm sorry, but I don't have that ready just yet. Did you want to add that portion we were discussing? Yes, ma'am, but I will start with this because it's still the same. Um, and then I can kind of read through based off of Councillor Senna's um, amendment before to go with it that way as well. So. I move floor amendment, I'm sorry, what number, 11? 11. Thank you, I move floor amendment 11 on page two after line 31, add the following, supportive housing for $4 million. This, appoint, this amount shall be appropriated through supportive housing programs with on-site social services. On page three, remove line two titled one-time hazard pay for essential employees. Um, and on page three, remove line 17 titled tourism placemaking and beautification. I also want, and this is what they're working on adding in for your review counselors, um, to designate $1 million for security deposit assistance and $200,000 designated for rental application fee assistance. I'm pretty sure we're very clear on, I, I imagine we're very clear on the explanation. Counselor, how much, you said 1 million for security so this is, yes, Madam President, this is, um, Councillor Senna had been just now on the previous amendment trying to allocate $1 million designated for the security deposit assistance, as she explained when proposing her amendment. 
and $200,000 for the rental application fee assistance, as she also explained. Um, so out of the $4 million, 1.2 would be specifically designated for that, and the rest would be for the um, supportive housing vouchers. Thank you, Councillor, for that clarification. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Councillor Jones and Councillor Davis. Actually, I, I'm sorry, Councillor Jones. Councillor Davis had his hand up first. That's fine. And Councillor Davis, did you also have a question? Uh, I, I did, Madam President. I was hoping to, to see that final text when we get it, and I know they're working on it. Uh, I just want to make a point here. I, you know, I, Councillor Ben and I had a different strategy to try to figure out how to get to this point, but I think it reiterates, and, uh, and so I'll be supportive because I think it, uh, it gets to the point of us putting housing, in particular supportive housing priorities and projects first. Um, we've done a lot in this budget with the administration in the last over using federal dollars, et cetera, to do short term housing options, housing vouchers and all those kind of things. But really our need long term is long term housing. That's supportive housing with on site case management for people with critical needs. Uh, like I said, I had a different plan. It didn't pass. We tried it twice. It didn't pass. Uh, so I'm willing to go in on somebody else's and I appreciate Councilor Bassan working to do that. I think it's also a very generous uh, idea and a pretty smart one to try to incorporate some of those other pieces that also uh, needed to be included. Uh, and I appreciate her trying to incorporate all of those uh, bits and pieces of amendments with our staff. And I'm really just trying to kill time until staff gets that final language up. So uh, thank you and I intend to support this. Thank you, Councillor Davis, Councillor Senna, and then Councillor Pena. I cannot support this. Um, although I, of course, support my concept of adding support for um, security deposits, but the hazard pay is like taking from our most vulnerable to keep our most vulnerable housed. Um, it was one of the reasons why I was willing to reconsider my vote um, in terms of keeping supportive housing. Um, I get that we are trying to say that our uh, essential workers were working this whole time. Uh, but again, it, some of these workers were working at uh, a very, you know, minimal amount. Um, they're working on a minimum wage, which is not a livable wage. This extra funding, even to increase it, um, or even just leave it as is um, at its three million um, is so essential. Um, and I can't support this because it is again, um, not going towards who we need to support the most. Um, even though we're talking about this going towards supportive housing, I wanna take a pause because 24 million is being allocated to the city for emergency rental assistance. I get it. I know the need is profound when it comes to housing, which is why I was willing to reconsider my previous vote uh, when it came to Amendment 5, for Amendment 5, because I would rather it come from uh, that program rather than this off of the backs of essential workers, of our city employees that, again, pose this profound risk of a potentially deadly virus. And when the argument's made to say that, well, these are people who were working, again, I have to stress, they were working under very um, vulnerable conditions. And I'll say that. Um, so I, you know, cannot support this. Um, I, I can't stress that enough. And for our housing vulnerable, especially when it comes to security deposit assistance, that may actually come from uh, those that would be using their premium pay for a security deposit um, for um, their application fees. Let's not forget that it wasn't all just our police 
who is not making a police officer's wage or making a firefighter's wage. Um, these are some of our uh, solid waste workers. These are some of our transit workers. These are, again, um, our parks and rec workers. They're not making a livable wage. And for us to take part of their hazard pay to give to um, that's already serving a population of our, our vulnerable. I just think it's, it's an error to do so. Um, and um, again, this is why I'm willing to reconsider my previous vote to continue to support those that are um, unsheltered and to think through our security deposit system. And until we get um, housing income discrimination uh, re-evaluated at the legislature, this is going to continue to happen. So I won't be supporting this. Thank you, Councillor Senna. So we will move to Councillor Pena and then Councillor Gibson. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yeah, I, it's a tough situation, right? But I think, well, let me ask a question to um, Ms. Yara or Mr. Melendrez on, um, tell me a little bit about the cost of living where we've been in the past couple of years. What, you know, because I'm hearing that we, you know, kind of gave an increase to employees, which um, I think I, I, um, you know, clarified earlier that it was a cost of living. And, you know, so if you could tell me a little bit where we are in the past couple of years, and then when we're talking about hazard pay, you know, I know Councilor Senna had initially even wanted 2 million in the original bill, and I had put, I had put in a, a million, but um, have city employees, people who have been on the front lines, people who have worked the buses, people who have distributed meals during the time that we were all home, have they received any um, premium pay? Um, Madam President and counselors, I actually um, would have to defer to the administration on that question. Okay. Uh, Council President Borrego and Councilor Pena, no. No. So through the entire amount and allocation we have received, we have not given one penny of premium pay. And it states in the ARPA that, you know, we, this is precisely what the money's to be used for. Uh, Council President Borrego and Councilor Pena, um, that is correct. You know, when we went through the CARES money, a lot of that was used to ensure that we didn't have to lay off or furlough any of our employees. And it was to shore up, uh, you know, those uh, times of economic uncertainty over 2020. Um, however, uh, you know, we have not um, been in a position to offer hazard pay, premium pay, any type of bonus um, for folks who uh, were required to work um, on the front line or for folks who were just required to continue working. Um, which I will point out all but maybe 500 or fewer employees continued working through the pandemic. Um, many of them worked remotely, many of them, um, many more of them worked in person, um, picking up our, our garbage, driving our buses, um, taking, providing free childcare for essential workers throughout the city. Um, and, the, and many of them provided services in person um, by doing different types of tasks, our events team, um, was instrumental in standing up the, the hotel program for um, our most vulnerable populations who were displaced by COVID. Um, and so, uh, you know, tons of employees did their, their tour in the uh, emergency operations center. They were out there testing, they were out there providing vaccinations. And uh, no, they have not received hazard or premium pay at this point. Madam President, and for the administration, Sarita, um, so how many people would you say out of all the employees we have are, you know, still the working poor, right? That live at, at or below the poverty line. Council President Borrego and Councilor Pena, that's difficult to know because we don't have access to the bigger financial picture of our, of our workforce. Uh, I do believe in the question and answer we provided how many people had to give out the True Connect loans, which might be some kind of indicator of that, but we, we really don't have that kind of data on our workforce because we don't know what the rest of their economic picture is. Madam President and, and Mrs. Nair, how much would we have to, how much would 
if we gave to each employee, which I think that's not your intention, but if we gave to each employee um, of the $3 million, how much would that be per employee? Standing by, um, sorry, we're, we're doing some quick math here. Sorry. Um, Councillor Pena and um, uh, Councillor Borrego and Councillor Pena, um, just giving a rough estimate, if we say we have 5,000 employees, um, then we would say that that would lead I think to $600 per employee, but I could be um, missing a zero in there somewhere, but that's what it would amount to. Um, normally the city runs right around between 5,500 and 6,000, but with vacancy savings, we could estimate that at 5,000. And with the current supportive, um, supportive housing programs and onsite um, social services, can you tell me um, how much we have existing that we provide these services? Uh, Councilor, uh, Council President Borrego and Councilor Pena, we would have to do some back of the um, napkin math. So let me let me do that and uh, you guys continue um, discussing and we'll get back to you on that. Okay, thank you. Madam President, if we can come back to their answer. Thank you. I'll reserve the rest of my questions until then. Sorry, counselors, I was muted. Councilor Gibson. Thank you, Madam President. So I, I'm just trying to determine something here. If this amendment does pass, will it eliminate all of the hazard pay? It does. Okay. I got you. Thank you. Ms. Nair, have you got reached an estimate um just give us one more second here counselor i'm sorry we were not expecting okay. this um, um counselor madam president if i can ask um from our council staff about the cost of living i i don't think i had that question answered Councillor, uh, Madam President and Councillor Pena, are you asking uh what uh raises the city employees have got in the last few years is that what your question is no, I'm asking about cost of living. So How much the cost of living has increased in the last few years? Is yes, in comparison okay. to the amount of uh, the amount of appropriation of cost of living that we've allocated. I see. Um, I don't know how the, the exact figures for in front of me for the last five years, but inflation usually runs about 3.1%. And so over the years, the city has been able to give small Cola increases of one to two percent um, in the last five years. I know in FY twenty, of course, we didn't, we weren't able to get anything. So it would be safe to say that if the cost of inflation has increased by three percent every year, with us giving one to two percent cost of living, that we're probably behind the eight ball in terms of cost of living. Uh, that's just a guesstimate on my part. We would probably need an economist to weigh in to that answer, but that's my general sense. I would ask okay. possibly Mr. Um, Sanjay Bhakta if he'd like to weigh <laughs> in. I know he's sitting there hiding behind the table. <laughs> Madam President, can you please repeat your question? Um, Councillor Pena is asking two questions basically. One is about the cost of living and whether or not the city is actually behind um over the last couple of years okay. if you don't mind madam president if i can clarify the question so what i'm asking is that what i'm told by city staff is the cost of living um that we've been able to give as a council um every um for the past five years is probably in the range of one to two percent we didn't give a cost of living in 2020 so i asked if it was safe to say that we are behind the eight ball in terms of um cost of living to our city employees. That's true. Councilor, uh, uh, Madam President and Councilor Pena, you are right. I would agree that we are a little behind uh, uh, keeping up with the cost of living. 
Thank you. And Thank you, Sanjay. And um, I don't know. Oh, sorry. I was I was uh, gonna while we had the mic here. Go ahead and give you that answer, um, Council President Bonego. Uh, Miss Nair, go ahead. Okay, so I'm looking at um, the presentation that was provided to this council in uh, mid February, and it shows that um, in the current fiscal year we were at about nine point eight million dollars in supportive housing funding, and I think this year we go up to about ten, including the additional money in uh, the current version of the ARPA bill um, prior to this amendment. Madam President, so is that um, a total of 10.8 or is that 19 or 20 point something? I, I'm, I'm sorry, so my apologies, um, Council President Borrego and Council, uh, Councilor Pena. So in the fiscal year uh, 21, which is the one that we're wrapping up right now, there was, uh, just pull this back up, $9.8 million. Um, and uh, then in the current fiscal year, the budget that the operating budget that you just passed and some other sources, we were right around $10 million for the coming year. And that was included some, some good switches to recurring money, about 4 million plus of that is recurring, which is good. Um, so Madam President, Ms. Nair, so we're at about 20 million in the past two years and we are asking for 3 million of the ARPA money for um, premium pay at a, the rate of about $600 per employee when in many of our city employees probably live at or below um, the poverty rate. Is that correct? Uh, Madam President and uh, Councilor Pena, I, I can confirm a first part. I don't know about the um, poverty rate question, though. Okay. And Madam Madam President, um, Mr. Bakta, and then probably we have not really kept up with the cost of inflation. So compounding those two things and the fact that we have many employees who actually worked in the front lines um, were... Um, we're not, um, this amendment would take away um, premium pay completely, correct? So I'm doing those uh, Council, uh, Council, so President Borrego and Councilor Pena, yes, uh, as I understand this amendment, it would eliminate the funding for hazard pay. Okay, thank you very much. I, I, I can't support this amendment, so. Thank you, Councilor Pena. Uh, Councilor Senna. Yeah, I think, I was trying to get some more answers as Councillor Pena was alluding to as well. And it sounds like it's going to take some time to, to draw up the numbers. I know when we um, originally pulled up hazard pay, um, I want to say in October, um, when we were trying to do essential workers um, support programs, that we were also evaluating those that, uh, that were making um, under $15 and it was adjusted I believe, to $12 or vice versa. Um, and this is something that um, the American Rescue Plan was looking to um, adjust as well, that they were looking to give $13 per hour in premium pay to those essential workers. Um, and many other uh, municipalities and counties have already implemented this um, and even that uh, Bernalillo County, again, has done premium pay um, at a much bigger rate. And for us to completely strip um, hazard pay um, in a time of need and in a time where we should be thanking um, our essential workers um, is just so critical. I know I've already stated it, but again, I want to stress that we should think about those that are making under $15 an hour, um, which when I recall, I'm trying to pull up the Excel sheets, I can't quite find them, but it was a substantial amount. Um, and so again, even at $500 in premium pay, um, that makes a huge difference, whether it's for our officers to buy more K-95s or whichever. Um, it's just so important. And so again, I can't support this. Thank you, Councillor Senna. Um, Councillor Bassan, you had moved this uh, amendment 
And I did not receive a second. Was there a second? I'll second that. Councilor Jones, thank you. Okay, um, so is there any other discussion? If not, we'll go back to the sponsor if she'd like to close. Oh, I think we just lost our sponsor. We may get her again. Um, why don't, in the meantime, let's show that up on the screen again. Maybe she's trying to reconnect. Counselor, so this is floor amendment number 11. And no. Madam would, President, I can, I yeah. can explain it if you want. Go ahead and explain it. Yeah, actually it's as drafted uh, that was included in your packets. The only difference is we've added this designation language under item one that mirrors the language of Councillor Senna's amendment previously that did not pass. And otherwise it's taking um, the one-time hazard pay and tourism placemaking and beautification money and allocating that to supporting housing, housing in the amount of $4 million with those designations. Can you make that a little bigger, Ms. Tenney? Making it a little bigger so you can see it a little. Thank you, Ms. Yar, if you wanna continue, I'm trying to get Councilor Bassan on the phone if possible. Council President, I'm here now. I got kicked off and had to do a different internet. My apologies. Of all the times. Thank you, Council Bassan. We were just going to explain the bill, the amendment. Okay. If I, so, am I am I at a close, Madam President? Uh, yes, you are. I did. I added that. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you. So, I just want to. Um, uh, so it's on the screen, but I want to make sure to say that I, I definitely don't agree that um, we're losing her again. Employees and all that they have done. Um, there's a certain amount of privilege that is coming with with what we're talking about. Uh, I, I recognize that a security security deposit if people I, I don't agree with that either. Are you there? Am I good? Can you hear me? Councilor, yes, we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Nobody you, Council, we can hear you. Okay. So um I just that even though we had a problem last year with a cola increase, we still have agreed to raise it three percent this year. So we're trying to make up for that. But I mean last year is is something that on some occasions when it fits we say it doesn't count and on other occasions when it fits we say it does and so we are doing what we can but i don't agree that most or the majority or near that are the city employees are probably living below the poverty level i could be wrong and i would be happy if the administration could provide that at another time but i i think that we have been talking about i mean i hear from constituents all the time about crime, homelessness, mental illness, and drug addiction. And we need to do everything we can in order to support that. And I think that this is going to be a way to, to help do so um, in that regard. So I, I do urge your support. Thank you, Councilor Bassan, for that close. And I, the peers, um, Councilor Senna, we'd already closed the floor. Um, I'd like to move the motion. I'd like to move. A motion, Madam President. You can't. Pardon me, Councillor Senna. I are. wanted to move a, a motion. I believe I got it under the wire. Um, we'd already closed on the floor, Councillor Senna. Did you want to make an amendment to the? Yes. No, floor yeah. amendment? Um, Councillor Bassan, would you consider a friendly amendment? Is it a friendly amendment? I think it may not be. I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> okay, Councillor Senna, go ahead and make your motion and we'll see if you receive a second on it. Well, I would like to make a motion or to amend the amendment to strike hazard pay from the funding source 
and put uh, the um, APD Bain Station renovation as its funding source. So, Basan, would you accept that am amendment? No, ma'am. Um, Councilor Senna, we need a second on your um, on your friendly amendment. It doesn't sound like we have a second, Councilor Senna. Thank you for that. So, we will go back to uh, Councilor Basan's amendment, which is floor amendment number eleven. And if there are being no further discussion, we will take a vote. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. No. Councilor Harris. Yes. Uh, no. No. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. No. Councilor Senna. No. Councilor Borrego? No. Motion, fa motion fails on a four to five vote. So the motion fails on a four to five vote. Thank you, councilors. That concludes our amendments for this evening. So on this, on R21157, Councilor Pena, we will go back to you um, sponsoring the original bill of R157. Thank you, Madam President, after I think we're all delirious this evening, but <laughs> anyway, so I move a due pass of R-157 as amended several times this evening. Councilor, I'll second that. Are there any other questions or comments from councilors? It does not appear so. So we would go back to the original bill, R-157 as amended. Ms. Ortega, would you please take the vote? Councilor Bassan. Councilor Bassan. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Councilor Davis. No. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones? Yes. Councilor Pena? Yes. Councilor Senna? Yes. Councilor Borrego? Yes. And I believe Councilor Bassan is back on, so she, I think she wants to vote. Councilor Bassan? I'm my sincerest apologies. At, we're voting on the overall ARPA as amended, correct? Correct. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes on an eight to one vote. Thank you, counselors. That motion passes on an eight to one vote. Congratulations. Um, Councilor Harris, did you have a comment? Yes. I'm wondering um, if what we have left could be uh, deferred. Um, if this were a regular meeting, it would be midnight. And in my experience, when counselors have been at this for how many hours has it been now? Seven. Um, that uh, sometimes we pass or don't pass things just as we're tired. So I'm not sure what we have left. Um, and if maybe we can just. Councillor Harris, we have two items left R132 and O50. Um, so I guess it would be up to the sponsors. Councillor Senna has R132 and Councillor Davis and Benton O50. What is the pleasure of the council? And Madam right. President, on the script, my bill is already being deferred. Oh, okay. Councillor, uh, would you like to just make that motion then? That we defer? Yes, to move things along rapidly. Um, matter of R-132, a nuisance substandard dwelling or structure in need of abatement at 5912 Sweetwater Drive Northwest within the city limits of our curfew is so ruined, damaged, and dilapidated as to be a menace to the public comfort, health, peace, or safety that it's so, that it is to be required to be removed. Um, I move a due pass uh, with the intent of deferral. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harris, for that second. Um, Thank you, um, Councillors. Um, I just want to note that the owners of 5912 Sweetwater Drive, please do get in contact. And in the meantime, we're going to check with the bank to see um, 
to clarify some questions. So I'm going to move this deferral until June 7th. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Councillor. You have a motion and a second. Um, Ms. Ortega? Councillor Bassan? Yes. Councillor Benton? Yes. Councillor Davis? Yes. Councillor Gibson? Yes. Councillor Harris? Yes. Councillor Jones? Yes. Councillor Pena? Yes. Yes. Councillor Santa? Yes. Councillor Borrego? Yes. Nine zero on the deferral. Thank you, Councillor Senna. That is deferred until uh, June the 7th. We will move on to uh, Councillor Davis and Councillor, Councillor Benton, 050. Thank you, Madam President. As long as my co-sponsor doesn't uh, object, and I don't believe he does, uh, I'll make a motion to defer for 30 days or until the meeting nearest the middle of June. Second. Thank you. We've had positive discussions with the administration, and we want to continue those. Thank you, counselors. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, we will move on to Ms. Ortega for the vote. And this is a motion to defer. Um, can you give a date, counselor? June 21st. Okay. Ms. Ortega. Councilor Bassan. Yes. Thank you. Councilor Benton. Yes. Councilor Davis. Yes. Councilor Gibson. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor Pena. Yes. Councilor Slena. Yes. Councilor Polito. Nine zero on the deferral to June 21st. Thank you, counselors. There being no further business before this council, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.